Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to what is simply the best show dog uh, competition in the world. So, we have got a great program for you this weekend. We've got agility, we've got the police, we've got flyball, we've got so many things for you. So make sure that you come down to the main arena on a regular basis, see everything that's going on in here, but also that you visit all the stands. I hope you've got your credit cards with you for Christmas. Um, and all the stands and the Kennel Club stand, and also we've got lots of different breeds as well at Discover Dogs. But first of all, ladies and gentlemen, we've got agility and we've got the Novice Cup here for you today. So as you can see, this is a jumping round, so that means that we don't have any agility equipment, which is the dog walk, the A-frame, and the seesaw. And that competition is later on. We're going to put the two scores together and we're going to come up with an overall winner. So we're ready to go with our first dog, but of course we need a judge. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Rob Davis. So you are going to see Rob will be indicating his arms in the air and those will be faults. Hopefully we won't see much of that today. But we're going to be ready to go with our first starter here today. It's going to be Shannon Springford with banter. This is a border collie. Zanis, go give it some banter. She says she's only a baby. He's only a baby, sorry. Um, and really proud of him to have got to Crufts at only two years old. So let's see what she does with the course. So here we go into those weave poles. Very nicely around there. Oh, that's a pole. So you see the hand go up. That's five faults. All still to play for, though. And we're into that final straight. It's a fast finish. Whoa, well done, Shannon. For just five faults and 27.097 on the clock. Well done. Okay, so next on the line, this is Jane Powell with Noddy, another Border Collie. Uh, Darley Falls Noddy Spots. He actually began his career doing trials. Uh, started competing in agility in 2021, absolutely loved it. And uh, so here he is, already on the start line. He's going to uh, tell us all how excited he is to be here in the main arena. It's around into the tunnel. That's that left turn. And then the right turn. Here we go. It's another fast finish. Come on, Noddy. One to go. Oh, cracking. What a lovely run. 27.9 on the clock goes into first place, well done. So Lynette, uh, you're, we're ready for you. Uh, this is Monkey, a Border Collie, Powers Keepsy Libertas. Dog in a million, he's a joy to own and work. Absolutely loves his agility. You move, jump. Last jump, 32.939 on the clock. I think he thought he'd finished early. It looks like a straight line. It is a straight line, but it's so fast that they can uh, just pull off that last jump there. So next to go, Hayley Tyndall with Max. This is Tyndall's Usle by Prince. Agility Warren Silver. 
seven-year-old working sheepdog. Now, this competition, we're going to see lots of different heights here today. We've got all the four heights that compete in agility. So we have literally got a brilliant program of agility here for you today. We've also got the champ later on, which will also be very exciting. So make sure you come and join us for that. That was a lovely turn there. As we come down this start, keep straight. Well done. Well done. It's a clear round. 28-249 goes into second place. Another great round. Okay, so next go. This is Nicola Wildman with Panache. Run by Do It With Passion. First time at Crufts. This will be the first time at Crufts for uh, quite a few of these dogs, I suspect, as it's uh, the novice, which means that it's one of the lower ranks almost, I suppose, in agility. It's the three to fives, and there's seven ranks in total, seven grades. So here we go, right turn. Here we go into this lovely fast finish. One to go, keeping straight, well done. 27.9, oh sorry, no, 28.352 goes into third. Well done, Nicola. That was a good clear round, well done. Puts her in a good position for the agility later on today. So next to go, this is Joe Gleed with Steely. Devon Gem ready to steal. First time at Crufts. So she's very kind, very sweet, very gentle. Another one that just loves her agility, loves tunnels. So she gets to do a few of those today. She'll be happy. So into that far tunnel. Left turn, back into the tunnel. You can see Joe changing sides there because we've got a right turn. Here we go, down the line. Let's give them a big cheer. It's another cracking run. Well done, 28. Well done, Five, Joe. seven, seven on the clock goes into fourth place. Well done. So you'll see our ring party are springing into action. And that's because the jumps are going down to intermediate. So as I said earlier, there's four heights in agility. Small, medium, intermediate, and large. And the heights of the obstacles get adjusted accordingly. Okay, so looks like we're ready to go. This is Mike Organ with uh, Mika, or Mika. And Pretty Paws, perfect package. So here we go, this is the intermediate. We have uh, a separate competition for each height. There we go, finding those weaves. Just jumped a bit long there, but uh, just wasted a little bit of time, but that's okay. Hanging on as we go into the tunnel. Left, back round the loop. Swapping sides there. There's that right turn. Here we go, it's another fast run. Go on, let's run as fast as we can. Yes, well done. Well done, Mike. That goes into first place, obviously. 27.331 on the clock, well done. Okay, so next on the line, Lindsay Spring with Bam. Pretty paws done and dusted. She says she likes the sound of her own voice, as you can hear. <laughs> Very excited to be here. It's just too exciting, isn't it? Here we go, into the tunnel. Left turn. Trying to keep those turns as tight as possible. Oh, in doing so, just took the pole. So we're on five, five faults as we come over the finishing line. 27, 177 on the clock. Goes into second place with five faults.
Okay, next on the line, Amanda Ellerton with Pepe, Border Collie, Cherry Hog Discovery. First time at Crufts. She says she loves to compete, gets very excited. So, Amanda keeping that turn tight before the weaves. Through the new roof jump and the irons jump into the tunnel. You don't want to see those crossed arms that Rob is doing there in the centre of the arena. That means an elimination, unfortunately. Just picked up the weaves. But well done, Amanda. Unfortunately, just picking up that elimination there. Okay, next to go. Sarah Kitching with seven. Indie Storm Lucky Seven. First time at Crofts. Here we go, into the weaves. Nicely done through there. Over the long jump, over the spread. Swapping sides because we've got a left turn into the tunnel. So I suspect Sarah will swap sides again. It's come out of the tunnel, there we go. Right turn into this final straight. One to go. Just picking up five falls, but managed to recover. So five falls, 29, nine, two, two. Just coming out of that last jump. Okay, so next go, Marita Ogilvie with Cicada. Darley Falls Cryptic Enigma. This is her first time at Crufts again. She's only two years old and she's here for a couple of events over the weekend. Encouraging her around, left turn. Right turn, here we go, into that final straight. Encouraging her, keeping her straight, well done. 28.95 goes in. Second place, well done. So, on the line now we have Ray Lambert with Pippa, two and a half years old. Darley Falls made of silk. Says the handler's, sorry, the dog is very young, but the handler's not quite so young. <laughs> First time at Crufts. Slightly on the wild side, he says. She loves her agility. Oh, she misread that, unfortunately. There's those crossed arms. She thought he meant to do a left turn into the weaves. Uh, but as you can tell, she has no idea that she's been eliminated. As we come down this line, well done, Ray. Well done. Unfortunately, just picking up that elimination there. Okay, so we're on to the mediums. So we change the height again. Okay, so our judge is having a quick scan of the uh, arena, just checking that all the jumps are at the right height. Which, uh, he's going to let us know he's happy. He's happy. So we're ready to go. This is uh, Jenny Watson with Scout, a very noisy Cocker Spaniel. I believe I can fly. I think Scout's ready to go. She never knows what she's going to get, but that's half the fun. Oh, well done. 
Covered nicely there to get into the weaves. Crossing sides, perform at a blind turn when the handler crosses in front of the dog. Round the loop. There we go, there's the other blind turn. And we're into the final straight. Come on, Scout, you've got two to go. Keep going straight. Oh, keep going. Oh, no. Oh, it was going so well. Oh, unfortunately, just picking up an elimination right at the end. Oh, what a shame. The, the dogs, it looks like a straight line, but with the handler on the left, with all the kit on the left, the dog's just drawing out to the left on that last jump. Okay, so next to go, Edith Ratkine with um, Naughty Nora. Let's hope Nora's not going to be naughty today. She actually won uh, Best Puppy in the Breed here at Crofts in 2019. But um, she said her ears went up. So that was the end of her show career and she's uh, become an agility dog. Looks like she's doing it really well. So, unfortunately, it's a five forts. Just the pole going down there. Long run right to the end. Lovely finish. Well done. 28 5 2 1 on the clock. That goes into first place in the mediums. Just picking up five forts there for a dropped pole. Okay, next to go is Robin Sinclair with Jasper Carrot. This is a working Cocker Spaniel, Breezy Brook Daredevil. First time at Crufts for both Robin and Jasper. She uh, did compete at the uh, XL at the International Horse Show, London International Horse Show, where the Kennel Club hold a really prestigious event there for Agility dogs, go. and did really well. So here we go, come on Robin, one to go. Oh, lovely finish, well done. 28, four, one, zero, goes into first place on the mediums, well done, that was a lovely run. Very nicely positioned now for the agility later on today. Okay, so. Next on the line, this is Sally Butler with Nancy. Batsal's last chance, Nats. Sally says she got into agility later in life and absolutely loves it. You can hear her telling her those directional commands, right, right, left, left. Right turn, here we go, into the final straight. We've got to run as fast as we can. She's going to cross, she's going to cross, she's going to cross. Ah. Oh, goodness me, well done, well done. Good recovery. 30.067 goes into second place, well done. Okay, next on the line is Emma Ross with Sprite, the working Cocker Spaniel, Kindred. King Tradwell unsprung. She says he's a crazy noisy boy who lives for his agility. Oh, there we go, there you go. Right on cue. Five forwards for the drop pole. Just picking up those five faults for that pole. Lovely finish. So, next to go, Stephanie Best with Skedaddle. This is a Shetland Sheepdog, three years old. The last in our medium. Z Atomic Spice Corife, I think you say that. I'm not sure quite how to pronounce that. We'll go with that. Left, left, 
directions and obstacles so the dog knows where it's going, what obstacle to find. It's good so far. Come on, Steph, keep straight, keep straight, keep straight. Yeah, well done. 27266 on the clock goes into first place. That was a cracking run. Well done, Steph. So the jumps are going down to small. Okay, so we're ready to go. And this is uh, Graham Murphy. With Millie, the cockapoo, four years old. between a Cocker Spaniel and a Poodle. First agility dog for Graham. So she loves agility, her toys and cheese. So here we go, into that final straight. Yeah, lovely, well done. 27, 7, 9, 2 on the clock goes into first place. Well done. Okay, so next goes Amy Garces with Sheba, working Cocker Spaniel, Devon Gem Miss Independent. Another little dog that absolutely loves her agility. Sounds like she's going to tell us all the way around. Crossing sides there, right turn. goes into second place. Okay, next to go. This is Matthew Burdett with Brew. Lico Soteria Final Frontier. Shetland Sheepdog. Tiny little Shetland Sheepdog. into second place. Well done. Okay, next on the line. Is Laura Farrow with Dubs. This is a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Got a great display of uh, Staffies later on here in the arena. If this is your breed. Um, first time at Crufts. She's born in the Netherlands and uh, lives with six other dogs and two cats. There we go, crossing side, got that right turn. Oh, that was a good one. Here we go, into this lovely long run. She just missed the jump there, unfortunately. She missed the jump out, didn't like the look of it. Got five and then got eliminated, unfortunately, just for missing the jump out. She preferred her own course, I think. Okay, next to go, Neil Harding with Widgeon. Sitterford Skylark. This is a six-year-old working Cocker Spaniel. Sat down that one. 
line. Left turn. Let's go side turn, right turn. Here we go, come on, Neil. Let's have a fast finish. Come on, one to go, keep straight. Just like, where are you? Oh, no. Try to, try to keep her straight. And she was like, where are you? What are you doing over there? Oh, what a shame, because that was a cracking run. Okay, so last to go. Lily Woodford is with Spider. This is Finnansom Abbey of Shilton Lily. It's a very posh name. Spider is a dog in a million. and that is the conclusion. So let's give um, Rob a big round of applause. Thank you very much, Rob, for doing a stellar job. First one of the day, all done and dusted. <laughs> all done and dusted. So don't go away, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to um, change the course. We're going to be going on to the champ. We changed judges. We're going to go on to the championship. I believe it's the large and intermediate championships today. And uh, we're also going to be doing the presentations. So we've got loads and loads going on here in the main arena. We've got demonstrations. We've got competitions. Uh, we've got the fly ball. Yes, we know everybody loves the fly ball. And um, so like I say, loads going on. He'll work to music. They literally have got a jam-packed jam program. So we are nearly ready to do the presentation. And uh, we're just getting our sponsors and everybody in the arena. Our lovely ladies that uh, do our presentation. And uh, I'm just going to check if we are ready to go. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, it's presentation time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is presentation time. Please give a huge round of applause for the winner of the Agility Crufts Novice Cup jumping final in the small category. Handler Graham Murphy with Mysterious Millie.
And a huge thank you to our judge, Rob Davies, for doing the presentation. Okay, next up, the winner of the medium, the Crufts Novice Cup jumping final, handler Stephanie Best with Zenatomic Spice Coffee. Oh, boy. <laughs> Well done, yeah, thanks for having you. Okay, next up, our intermediate Crofts Novice Cup final in the jumping this morning. The winner, well handler Mike Organ with Pity Paws Perfect Package. <laughs> and the large Crofts Novice Jump Cup final jumping winner, handler Jane Powell with Darley Falls Naughty Spot. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's lap of honour time. Because Albert has so much joy, that really helps me with managing my chronic pain. He has completely changed my life. My chronic pain began to develop when I was a teenager and then when I turned 16 I became very unwell and didn't get better. I wasn't able to attend school regularly, I wasn't going out with my friends or going to parties or even just going to the shops. Chronic pain is something that's difficult to understand if you don't live with it and that can make it quite isolating for the person that it impacts. We didn't really know much about exactly what was wrong with her at first. It took a number of years to be able to understand her illness and that's been quite hard, that was quite a hard journey. And then Albert appeared and Albert joined our family. <laughs> and he's just changed it again. Albert is three years old. He is from the amazing charity Dogs for Good. Uh, they trained him and matched him with me a year ago. Albert's very intelligent. He's very smart and good at figuring things out. He loves his job. He's happiest when he's doing task work, whether that's loading the washing machine, fetching the post or picking things up for me. It's easy to feel quite down and to find it really difficult to do normal day-to-day -day activities because of the pain. But 
The last year with Alberts has been amazing. I've started a legal apprenticeship, so Albert is um, helping me with my studies and my ambition to become a solicitor. I wouldn't have been able to do that without him by my side. I feel much more confident to go out to places independently and that's really helped me to build my own friendships and my own life and feel like a young adult. He's enabled her to go out on her own without having to constantly check in with me or without having to be with somebody else. He, he watches out for her and you can see the way he looks at her, the way he watches her and he watches what she's doing. They are a life-changing charity and they've produced Albert, who is a life-changing dog. I can do things that I didn't think I was going to be able to. Having him has opened doors again, it's opened up opportunities. I feel really positive about the future with Albert by my side. To me, Asher is a real hero dog. Not only has he overcome what I'm sure was really quite a traumatic past, but he's used his incredible sense of smell to save human lives. And he's done it with a waggy tail and enjoyed every moment of it. When Asher came to us, he came to us because he clearly had a number of homes that had been unsuccessful and he had a lot of behaviour problems. He used to run away and when you tried to catch him, he used to become quite defensive. I suspect something quite horrible had happened to him because he actually became really quite scared and would scream in fear. So it took quite some time to get him to see his real personality. So now he just, <laughs> if anything, he'll trip you up. Um, he just wants to play with you, be around you, play with the other dogs. He just has a great life now. So Asher is a biodetection dog for the charity, which means that he uses his nose to smell human disease. The use of the dog's nose to detect disease means it can be done rapidly and non-invasively. So it can be done in a way that has very little impact on the patient. Asher is always keen to work, always loved his work, always wagging his tail when we go into the training room and teaching us incredible things. Because we've used Asher for a lot of our research and, and development work, so he was the first step. He was the dog that would tell me whether a disease had a particular odour that a dogs and other dogs could be trained to find in the future. Now, for some diseases, it isn't about the dogs always being the diagnostic. It's about learning how these incredible noses find the disease through the volatile signature and translating that perhaps into an electronic device in the future. So I suppose one of the most exciting jobs that, that Asher did was he told us that COVID-19 had a unique odour, or rather that people that had the virus had a unique odour. I mean, it really is a win-win. Asher, with his difficult background, his many, many homes, can now enjoy life and enjoy saving our lives. I mean, it's just amazing. We're so proud to have had Asher as part of the team. The work Asher has done is saving and will continue to save thousands or even millions of lives in the future. I would certainly call Booty a hero for myself and the whole family. Booty is a Labrador now, going on two years of age. Booty seems to be the bond that has held us all together through a very difficult time uh, of the family. Lily was diagnosed with leukaemia about two months after, after uh, Booty came into her for, forever home. Chemotherapy is difficult for anyone to go through, a bit more difficult for a younger child, and, and she's still going through it at the moment. However, as soon as Booty walked in the room, it was all smiles. Uh, the dog actually get, kept the family together. Booty is my best friend and she's always been by my side for everything. I can't imagine a life without Booty and she's made the biggest change to my life and I don't even know how I coped without having her because she's been amazing to me.
Well, when I, when I was losing hair, she was also losing hair as well because she molts. So it was basically like we were both lo losing hair together. Like when I used to brush it, there was big clumps of hair just like me. Where do I start with Beauty? She's been amazing. She as if she was meant to come, to be honest with you. Um, she came along at the right time. But she's been amazing, absolutely. <laughs> Beauty has really helped me with my epilepsy on numerous occasions. I had a seizure in the nature reserve that's close to us. I fell into what was quite a deep puddle. Uh, Beauty actually burrowed underneath me and lifted me out of that puddle, which meant that I didn't take it in the water. I'm very happy to have Beauty because knowing that she's with my dad when he's out for walks and he might have an epilepsy attack keeps me um, happier knowing that he has her to keep him safe. Beauty has given me a lot of support throughout when I was ill and she means the world to me because if I didn't have her I wouldn't be as happy as I was right now. In my eyes, Stella's a hero because she's shown that Staffordshire Bull Terriers are amazing dogs. They are an incredible breed. She's been a fantastic little dog that's spread love and showed how positive and amazing they are. My name is PC Claire Todd. I've been a police officer for 24 years and a dog handler for 18 years. In 2014, I took on Stella as my police drugs dog. Stella's nine years old. She's been working as a drugs dog for the last eight and a half years and she's just recently retired. Stella's a rescue dog from the RSPCA. She was the first Staffordshire Bull Terrier in the country to become a police dog. When I first went down there and I watched her search and her search drive was immense, I thought, well, I'd be stupid not to give her a chance, although she wasn't the typical Spaniel or, or Labrador that, that we normally use. It's normally a six week course to train the dogs and uh, Stella completed a course in four weeks. Her number on the side 2025 is her uh, issued uh, police number. And this is uh, Stella's actual warrant card with her picture on. They were issued in 2019, so it's when they became uh, recognised as police officers as well as ourselves. So she's trained on a set of blocks and in one of those blocks we'll put the drugs or the cash or, or the gun and we run her along those and as she goes along she recognises that one's different and she gets a reward and then you build it up by repetition and then eventually she learns to stop on that smell. All our drugs dogs are trained on real drugs to make sure that they're indicating properly. She can search a house a lot quicker than what we can as officers because Stella's using her nose. So when she finds the substance, she's trained to freeze. Obviously with drugs with powder, we don't want her interfering or ingesting anything you know, to keep her safe and also to keep the evidence safe. Her first search, she searched a house and uh, indicated behind a dog bed and there was £25,000 in cash hidden. So she's found thousands of pounds in cash. She's found numerous drugs. She's found three guns, so very, very proud of her. For us, it's so rewarding to see her in such a positive light, especially as a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Stella's living proof that in the right hands with the right training, they're incredible dogs. This is my 654th night in the tent, and it's always better when Bertie's with me. Day 6, 11, 142, 335. My name is Ashley Owens and I'm 13 years old. I've been raising the money for Porsche Rescue so they can build a shelter for the dogs so they can keep them all warm. Bertie has been helping me um, by sleeping out with me for over 150 nights. I think that's pretty impressive for a dog. When I feel very lonely in the tent, <laughs> he's a very nice companion and he keeps me warm. I'm Emma Owens and I'm Ashley's mother. We have three dogs. The eldest is Holly, who's 19, and then we have Bertie, who's 10, and um, we have a puppy, um, Lucia, who is a rescue dog. As a family, we've been fostering dogs for around seven years. Ashley saw the dogs arriving and would see the state they're in, and he's been to see the shelters. When he first saw them, he burst into tears, and that stayed with him. 
I started sleeping outside um, just by myself for over a year and um, I felt fairly lonely. There was one night I just thought, how about Bertie does this? And I've got obviously Bertie again, which is so cute. So there's sometimes it's really tough and he just doesn't feel like continuing. It's frost, literally inside of the tent. Every time he says that, he thinks of the dogs. It's not just my fractured ankle, he helps me out with them. Um, he's just been a very good buddy and uh, he's helped me through those stages where I've been like, oh, it's such a cold night, I don't really want to sleep out tonight. But yeah, he's helped me a lot. We are amazed by what Bertie and Ashley have been doing and we really hope this inspires other dogs and children to have that bond and to do something special with them and maybe go out and raise money together. I don't think it's just me raising the money, it's we're both raising the money. Spreading the awareness and the importance of um, adopting an abandoned dog, that's really my goal. I think Bertie's a hero dog because he inspires me to keep on going and sleeping outside. Night Bertie. Wonderful. Next up is Kamik. Easy. Easy. <laughs> well, he's <laughs> eager. Let's see how they perform. Round. First up, the weave. weave. Nice quick turns. It's a perfect start. Round the so spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. And yeah, faultless so Come far, on. but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kamik, yes. our compact SUV. Ooh. Our best in show. Skoda.
wonderful. Next up is Kalik. Huh. Well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. First up, the weave. Nice quick turn. It's perfect start. So spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident run up to the seesaw. Yeah, faultless so far, but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kalik, a compact SUV. Best in show. Skoda. I love food. I'm a good boy.
Good morning. Welcome to the uh, main arena at Crofts. Crofts 2023 getting underway this Thursday morning. It's Jim Rosenthal here. Graham Partridge is alongside me. Our first event is the Intermediate and Larger Championship. Two rounds and a final. The jumping this morning, the agility this afternoon. And uh, to qualify for this, the handler and the dog must have won a championship event over the last 12 months. If you get eliminated, you are out of the final. And we're about to see all top grade dogs. That is grade seven. Graham, good morning. Great to be sitting alongside you as ever here at Crofts. Mr. Agility, I'll get that one in very early. And uh, what can we expect from our first competition of 2023? Morning, Jim. Uh, morning, everybody. Uh, really excited to be here. There's nothing like the buzz of the main arena here at Crofts. It really is great atmosphere here. The first competition, as Jim says, is going to be the intermediate uh, jumping part of the championship. Top quality competition this. We have got some fantastic competitors. If you win a championship class uh, any time during the last 12 months uh, in this country, you have done very, very well. We've got people okay, running here who've got three and four wins we call them tickets yes. but they're actually called challenge certificates you have to win to make your dog up to an agility champion you have to win three in a year under different judges except crops counts as two tickets i'm going to refer to it as uh, so anybody who wins here who's not already an agility champion will become one at the end of the day i get you we're starting off with a very high quality competition as we expect to here at crops gary murphy is the uh, uh, agility judge and, from Biggles uh, Wade in Bedfordshire. He's been judging course, for 13 years. Seventeen dogs will go. We're going to uh, have Lee Gibson going first, the first of the 17 order. intermediate dogs. That is Lee Gibson and, and Star and from Shrewsbury, seven-year-old Border Collie. Gibson. We With competed star. for 26 you know, years in agility and Star. Agility he says, always a roller coaster. You never know exactly what is going to happen but Lee, a really respected judge and competitor. Star first to go. Good quick start as well. That's excellent over the first uh, four obstacles. Tight turn there through the tunnel at the top of the course as we sit. Got to enter those weaves from the right-hand side. Mike just have lost a little bit of time there over the U move. And the Ions jumps through that tunnel and get a tight turn right in front of us, back through the tunnel. This is a really good start, setting the standard uh, for these intermediate dogs. And it'll be another tight, twisting turn at the end. Get Graham to tell you about the course at the moment. Finally, over the long jump, and that is really, really good. 34.3 and clear, Graham. Yes, one thing uh, you're always certain of with Lee is that you get 100%. Uh, lovely dog, this. Great start, 34.373. Uh, and that will uh, put the cat among the pigeons because now the next couple will have to go for it. That next couple, looking at Pepe, four-year-old Border Collie, Amanda Ellerton from Stafford. Pepe's first time competing at Crofts, the brand new green carpet that we always get with every edition of Crofts. Very intelligent dog and very, very fast. Pepe, 34.3 and clear has already set a very high standard. And Pepe letting us know at Crufts that she is very much around on the first day. Elegant and quick through those weaves. That's a tight turn right in front of us. Terrific relationship between these two. Almost went the wrong way over that jump, but didn't. And it's a good time. It's right up there. Top of the course. That's quite tricky and technical. I'll get to Graham's view on the course in just a moment. Once again, winding back through the tunnel and over the long jump to finish. 34.9 and clear. Excellent. It is really nice run there. The first two dogs have made this look uh, course look really easy. It's not, let me assure you, but uh, that's the quality of the competition we've got. OK, Graham, you take us around the course. Runners up last year, and Natasha Wise and Pebbles, you take us around the course and tell, her, tell us exactly what's going on out there. Okay, this is Natasha and Pebbles. The first jump is the tyre, or the first obstacle is the tyre. The time doesn't start till the dog completes the first one. Now they go into a little slalom here, and they turn right nice sharp turn there into the wall into the tunnel now into the weaves they must enter the weaves with its left shoulders to the first pole come there little pull in here 
pull out now. She's got to send the dog up there. You don't want to go any further than you've got to, because now we've got a push around the back on 12. Back into the tunnel again, and now another push round. Oh, she just took her eyes off the dog there. Completed the uh, obstacle from the wrong direction, and uh, the judge then eliminates the dog, uh, and they won't be able to go through to tonight's final, unfortunately. But uh, a great effort there by Natasha. Uh, very well respected uh, competitor. That's a real shock then. Uh, Natasha Wise and Pebbles, runners up last year, eliminated early this time round. This is him, nine year old Border Collie, Ian Pats, the handler from Warsash, Southampton, first timer at Crufts for him. Won his first championship ticket last year. Yeah, that's a good set of weaves and round right in front of our commentary position. Yeah, guided the right way over the U move. Unfortunately, just uh, touched that. That'll be four faults picked up by Int and, uh, uh, and Ian Pats. Five penalties, I should say. And over they go 35.5, and the five faults picked up. And there we go. Oh, just a little bit of confusion there. Um, wasn't marked for it because it wasn't classed as a refusal and he didn't deliberately touch the dog, so he got away with it. Cosmo, four-year-old border collie, Kaylee Hewitt, won two championship tickets this year. Goofy happy boy is Cosmo, named after Cosmo Kramer. Those of you who watch Seinfeld, the TV show, will know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, you wouldn't have a clue. But let us see what Goofy Cosmo, the four-year-old border collie, can do. And there's a bit of confusion there. And, uh, and that, the cross dance means elimination, sadly. The goofy happy boy eliminated early on uh, Cosmo. But of course, they will complete the course as ever and um, to get the full Crufts experience, no matter what happens during the round, the dog always wants to complete the course. And Cosmo, learning curve for these two. And the long jump to finish, Graham. So just picking up a couple of faults here into the weaves, and you see, misses a pole, so that's, that's five faults there in the weaves. And then before she can go back and do it, she completes another obstacle, uh, which resulted in the elimination. Australian working Kelpie. Kruger ran Bethany Todd, the handler, four years of age. Fairly long. Look at the intensity there. Really keen to go. I really enjoy seeing these over Kelpies compete here at Crofts. Beautiful, elegant, upright dog. I yeah, just need a little bit more speed, the Kelpie. Remember the best time, 34.3 and clear to beat. Clear at the moment, might need to just pick up a bit of time in the second half of the round. Doing just that, that's good through the tunnel. Another tight right-hander there. And coming towards the end of, end of the round over that long jump to finish. 38.0, but clear. That's respectable, Graham. It was, and that's the main thing in these competitions. You've got to stay clear, otherwise you can't go through. Uh, and sometimes dogs can lack a little bit of confidence so, here in this year, massive arena. Again, Nicola Wildman Zest, seven-year-old Border Collie, winners last year. Three tickets so far this year. Excellent combination, a whirlwind of energy is Zest. And starting off very quickly, excellent jumping style as well from Zest and Nicola. That's rapid through the weeds, over the U move. Back over the IAMs, through the tunnel, in and out in a flash, really. Excellent work from Nicola, guiding Zest the right way over that obstacle. 27 and clear, this is going to be good. Again, just a slight bit of hesitation, but it's, it's a good time, it won't be the best. It's tidy and it's clear, 35.5 for Nicola and Zest into third place. Very nice. Whoa, how we got over that one. Oh. That really early takeoff. Uh, but still, great round there. Kept it clean and stands there a chance of qualifying. Scottish handlers, I've got to commentate on. I love these guys. And, the, and all the team up there as well. 
Beryl, 11 year old border collie, her first and last crufts. Alan Short from Kakuli. Always get lots of Scottish fans here. Lots of snow around, quite difficult getting to the NEC today, but they'll be here in force over the next few days, you can be sure of that. And Alan Short and Beryl, debut for Beryl, and pretty good in the first 20 seconds so far. Yep, that's right. <laughs> Tail wagging. Beryl en enjoying this bit of hesitation. Even more, and that'll be, that'll be five. Five faults there for that hesitation. That's a shame. And the, the clock ticking away, ticking away. And that's 39.4. And the five faults for Beryl. Very nice round there, still 11 years of age, uh, still very competitive, bearing in mind you can't start competing till 18 months of age in Kennel Club. Fate, six years of age, Border Collie, Stephanie, Stephanie Best from Ringwood in Hampshire, the handler. Stephanie uh, teaches dog agility professionally. Fate came third last year in the championship final, also won the British Open last year, so a combination to be watched here, Stephanie Best and Fate. This is good so far. Not wasting any time clearing those jumps. This is really right up with it. Exceptional. In front of us, tight left-hander back through that tunnel. Again, another tight turn, looking for the next one. This is going to be a very, very good time from Stephanie and from Fate. Oh dear, what a shame. What a shame. Right at the end there, 34.3 and the five penalties then, and that's down in fifth place. It is, and uh, these and poles do go round very, very easily. Just mistimed the jump there, but they're designed to come off easily for safety reasons, Jim. Phoebe, four-year-old border collie, handler Tony Smith. Phoebe, third-generation homebred collie. Sweet, small, intelligent, and just loves agility. <laughs> Ready to go. Off goes Phoebe. It's a flying start. Low to the ground and very, very quick is Phoebe. Good through the weaves. Fine 15 seconds underway. Plenty more obstacles ahead, though. But this is good from Tony and from Phoebe. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That's our five penalties there. Back through the tunnel and the round compromised. Get Graham's view on that as ever at the end of it. Uh, Flying start, things got a little bit complicated. That's 36.8 then uh, for Tony and for Phoebe. Uh, look at the style through the weaves, absolutely fantastic. Comes out, she sends the dog, doesn't go far enough, and it uh, picks up five faults of refusal there, and that's signalled by the judge uh, with a clenched fist. Cicada, two years of age, border collie, Marita Ogilvy, from Bourne in Lincolnshire. First time at Crufts for Cicada. Yep, she's bound to attack this course, Marita. As you say, it's a lovely course, just right, actually, for the first round, because they want to settle people's nerves. Uh, doesn't want to put in a stinker of a course to start with. Oh, and she's let the dog go around the wrong side of the jump. The crossed arms there of the judge signals an elimination, so that means that they won't be able to progress to this evening's final, but they will be competing this afternoon. Marita, a fantastic uh, handler. She's represented uh, GB on a number of occasions here, but you can see it's all about communication here. She's got her left arm up, telling her to go on. Really great effort, such a shame there for Marita. Yes, it's an unforgiving contest, this one. It is a shame, and you can see the look on Marita's face when I have, oh no, oh no. Gamble, five years of age, border collie, Stephen Richardson, the handler from Wigton in Cumbria, winners of two tickets this year. Very bit of hesitation there, that'll cost them time. Remember the time to beat 34.3. Good so far. 20 seconds, might just need to pick up a bit of time, though. 
and clear. This is very respectable from Stephen and from Gamble. No time lost there. It's good, long jump cleared at the end, 34.6 and clear, and that is up into second place for Stephen Richardson and Gamble. Yep, a little bit of uh, confusion there, but it didn't refuse the jump, so it wasn't marked. Um, but again, very, very tight. It's not about winning this, it's about qualify, being able to qualify for this evening's final. Savannah, five-year-old border collie, Philippa Bradley, the handler from Northwich in Cheshire. First time competing at Crufts for Savannah. Loves to run fast and takes agility very, very seriously. And that's a serious start as well. Very swift. Five clear rounds thus far. And, uh, Philippa and Savannah looking to become the sixth combination to go clear here on the opening morning of Crufts. The intermediate dogs we're watching here in the Agility Championship. This is going to be there or thereabouts as well, but sadly, oh dear, just as I was saying that, up go those crossed arms from our just Gary Murphy. How do you explain that one, Brad? It's, it's such a shame. I mean, the faster the dog, the more difficult it is to keep uh, control of it. You have to be thinking so quickly. Things happen in a flash. It's also her first competition here, and there's nothing beats experience here at Crufts. Lulu Labrador representing the ABC anything but a colleague's great to see a lab here Joe Nash the handler from Bath perfect working Labrador this one beautiful dog and of course this is opening Thursday as always at Crofts gum dog day <laughs> So she's here at the right day and the right time. And it might not be the quickest we've seen, but it is clear, and that is very, very important for Joe Nash and for Lulu. Well done, the lab. Well done, Joe. 35.8 and clear. And going to fifth place. Very nice. In the top five, Graham. Very nice here. Just what great jumping style. It is nice to see uh, anything but Collie's uh, competing here, and it did compete very well. Dashy, five-year-old border Collie, the handler, uh, Lila Zakvatovic. Very special little dog, this one. They've got a great bond together, these two, Lila and Dashy, the border Collie. Just gonna have to go back and have another go at those weaves. Probably went in from the wrong side. That's five faults. Yeah, obeying the commands of out, out, out from Leela. Far end of the course as we sit. Uh, it's very, very tidy as it completes the longer 37.6, just the five volts, Graham. Yep, just picking up to see it didn't go in between the first and second pole, so that's a fault, and they must go back and complete them correctly before they continue, otherwise, they pick up an elimination. But still, a very nice round. This is the penultimate intermediate dog, beautiful looking dog, too. Q, seven years of age, border collie, Laura Pye from Bristol. Again, first timers at Crufts. And Lulu, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the dog Q loves showing off. And this is the ideal stage for any dog uh, to strut their stuff. Clear and decent over the first 15 seconds. Yep, keeping it together there. It's all about communication. The dog doesn't know where it's supposed to go. Totally reliant on Laura. Oh, look at that. 34, 5, 5, 7. That's really good. That's up in the second place then. And they're ecstatic about that as they should be. Q, the seven year old Border Collie, debutant at Crump. And Laura Pye up into the top two. Excellent. Zing, seven years of age, border collie, Alan Wildman, Nicola's dad. From Blackpool, 
Singh uh, competed uh, for the England and GB teams last year. Alan really proud of her and has won a couple of tickets as well. The last of the intermediates looking to go clear and looking to keep it up there in the 33 or 34 seconds. That is, that is the target for Alan Wildman and for Zing. And it's looking pretty good so far. Oh, dear. That's the five fourths. Just clip the uh, you move jump there. And Alan completes the round a very, very good time, by the way. 34.8 and a five fourths. Very nice round there from Alan. He knows exactly what he needs to do. He just needs to try and, as I say, incur right, the so least number of bolts. But look how tight that was and just almost takes its downs with its tail. So, so difficult. OK, so just checking how things uh, look at the moment, then uh, those clear rounds um, at, at the top there with uh, Eurostar, uh, Lee Gibson, and completing the results of what we have just seen. So they've uh, now what's happening is they've just changed the height of the jumps. The course remains exactly the same. The course time is going to be the same as well, so it's going to be 43 seconds. Um, the only thing that's altered now is the height of the tyre, the jumps, and the long jump. First of 18 large dogs, and they're off and running. Dave Munnings and Legacy, Border Collie, three years of age, winner of a couple of tickets. Again, first time here at Krupp's Legacy. Known to her friends as uh, Susan. First time here for, for this dog, but actually David's uh, an extremely uh, experienced competitor, back probably one of the most consistent, successful competitors we've got in the country competing at the moment. This is his young dog, only three years of age, but as you can see, he's coping really, really well. Expect nothing left yeah. here from Dave. And again, 33, 621, uh, really great time, a great start there for David and Legacy. Yeah, terrific work from Dave Munnings and Legacy, setting the standard for the other 17 dogs uh, to follow. Really quick. Faultless as well. Falcons Excellent. Dave Munnings, we all know he's got pedigree as a handler. OK, get ready for this one. The lack of hair on Falk is due to alopecia, but he is... There we are looking at, at Falk, and four-year-old working sheepdog. The lack of hair on there is, is, is actually um, for a touch of, of alopecia, but uh, the dog is in absolutely great fettle. We might just get Graham to talk about that for a moment. Go on, Graham. Yeah, this is uh, Mike Bendel and Falcon. Uh, they've had an absolutely fantastic year. Uh, they can't believe how well they've done. As you say, the, the dog actually has got alopecia. It doesn't suffer at all. Literally, it's just like human alopecia. Uh, and you can see it is having a ball and making so much noise. And it's having a great round as well. Clear at the moment and sprinting over that long jump right at the end. 34.6 and clear for Mike Bendel and for Falcon up into the top two. Look at the speed and look at how tight it is around there. That's where these competitions are won and lost, the tightness of the turns. Uh, vibes known as Captain Happy due to his enthusiasm for life. He likes to cheerlead around the course as loud as possible. Five Border Collie, this seven years of age, the handler Becky Hodson from Peterborough, known as Captain Happy, this one. And he's going to let us know that he is around. First time at Crofts for the vibe. Nice, nice quite a big long striding dog this yes. one Jim uh, copes very well low uh, so sometimes more of a challenge for the bigger dogs on the carpet but you see there we have a fault so it's picking up five faults there so as we come now there's a little pull in here push out now she's got to collect the dog on the right hand side sends away into the tunnel now she's got to be there the closer you are to your dog, the, the easier it is to communicate with it. Oh, a little bit of confusion there, though. Coming round onto the last circle. Yeah, picked up five more faults over that uh, U move as well. So things unravelling just a, a little bit then for Becky and for Vibe. 38.8 and the 10 faults. 
just had a bit of problem going through through the weaves came is, is that enough now i've got to go back and start them again and there's the error over the years agent border collie seven years of age regular here at crufts the hand the sean illingworth from crawley down there in sussex what can sean and agent do on the opening morning of Crufts 2023. And Graham always makes the point, and I'll endorse it. You can hear the dogs and hear the, the pure joy they get out of competing in agility. And any of you watching who has a, a dog at home said, I'd fancy my dog doing that, give it a go, because the dogs absolutely love it. Just have a look at the wagging tails and listen to the barks as well. 27 and clear. This is good from Sean and from Agent. Again, a little tight right-hander through the tunnel, and then over the long jump to complete it. Another very, very good run. 34.9 and clear. Third place then for Sean Illingworth and for Agent. Very nice. This is a lovely dog here. Hopefully you could have heard Sean all the way round talking to the dog, making sure the dog understands exactly what she wants, and it did. Shape, another border collie. Martin Reed, the handler, sweet girl. Her dad apparently competed in this event many times. See what Martin Reed and Shape can do. Really good competition so far. Three clear rounds. And we're looking around about the 33, 34 second mark for these large dogs in the Agility Championship. Opening competition on the opening day of Crufts 2023. Good work from Martin. This is looking another very good. This is going to be some competition. This is a 33.8 for Martin Reed and for Shape. Second place for them at the moment. Yeah, I would expect nothing else here from Martin Reed with this dog. Uh, very successful competitor. Lovely dog. And look at how tight that is. Absolutely brilliant. Born in Poland. Uh, she's only one, two, Set up for your old border collie. Uh, home is Warsaw in Poland. Ola Kordas is the handler. Oh. Oh. Took her eyes off the dog. Oh dear. Took that, her eyes off the dog. This is, um, it's just, <laughs> it is worth underlining what intensity there is out there how much every how much tension there is graham and things like that we've just got to be sympathetic when they happen they desperate to do well it, dogs are dogs and, and as they say the speed these dogs are going everything happens so quickly it's like things have speeded up almost you've, you've got like a fraction of a second to react before the dogs traveled two or three two or three extra yards and by the time she realised that he wasn't coming with her. It was too late, yeah, as they say. Listen, Graham, no matter what job you're doing here at Crubs, there's always a bit of tension on the opening day. For Ola down there and for Setter, the bright lights and the green carpet, it's intense. However, she got here and there's a lot that didn't. Dalton, Dalton Meredith with Clippy, bought a collie four years of age. And Dalton, I have been training and competing with Clippy since she was a young dog. Clippy, Clippy, sorry, I made it right. Clippy made on the small side, but everything she does is big. She always... Clippy. Border Collie, four years of age. Dalton Meredith, the handler from Bristol. Runners up last year, these two. This could be special, and two tickets already this year. Dalton Meredith and Clippy. What can they do? As we told you right at the start, this is a high quality competition. The best of the best large dogs are here. And there's a lot of it still to come as well. This. Yeah, hear the great sound effects as they go into the tunnel there, the tail cracking against the inside of the tunnel. And good time this is as well, right up there, Dalton and, and Clippy. Final moments of the course, through the tunnel, over the longer, really, really good, 33.3. And that first place for Dalton and Clippy, pure, pure class there, Graham. I mean, how good was that? It didn't look hurried at all. I mean, this pairing have had an absolutely fantastic year. And although this is a high quality field, I certainly expect to see them right in at the mix at the end. Ticket, four years of age, border collie, Alan Bray. Crikey, he's been around a, a long time, hasn't he? Alan Bray. <laughs> I call him the Peter Pan, actually, of agility. He's, <laughs> I'm he's, sure he'll love that. He is forever young, but he's consistently at the top of his, of his game. Um, and you'll see that he's very unhurried, 
but he's very certain. Look, pointing there towards the weaves, picks up the weaves absolutely beautifully. Now he's going to call the dog in again, running backwards, not easy at his age, I tell you. Um, and then he's going to go around the back of that U move jump back into the tunnel again. So he tries to get in front of the dog. Oh, just rescued it. The dog was going on over the wrong jump then. Just struggling just a little bit on this course, but still. He just wants to keep it cleared well yeah, down, Alan. Yeah, run, 35.2. 35.2 no and clear. Place. That is it. The six into six place. Six we go. clear Everyone's rounds we have Scotland. had we so you far. And uh, well done, Alan Bray. I have to say, to my eyes, he looks better running backwards than you do, Graham. But there we go. That's just an observation. Total legend, this guy, I've got to be honest, as far as I'm concerned. Crazy, seven years of age. Ewan Patterson, the winner last year. Four tickets, really highly rated, these two. Completed in the Worlds and came, came fourth out of 128 entries at the end of last year. Ewan Patterson from Stonehaven and Crazy. We're expecting so great things, and in the first 15 seconds, they have delivered. Great speed, great, great economy around those turns, not wasting any time, any space on the green carpet here at Crubs. On to the next one, that's the tunnel, in and out in a flash. Back into that tunnel, and over the longer, that is excellent, 33.9. Fourth place, we told you the winners last year, they're very much in the mix, you and Patterson and Crazy. And, and that is not flat out, let me tell you. He he has something left in the tank there. He just wants to get this dog round clear. It's a lovely dog and a great partnership. I expect him to do really well at the World and European Championships this year, Jim. Kiss, another Border Collie, seven years of age. Sean Illingworth, her second dog. Such a consistent handler, Sean. Already seen agent, Kiss's agent's uh, sister. First time at Crofts. Well, anything could happen, as we've already seen, but this is very, very acceptable so far for Kiss and for Sean. Over the iron, for that tight left-hander, you'll get to know the course as well as we do now. Into the tunnel, just to clipping the U move. That'll be five faults there uh, for Kiss, but it's still a very good round. And again, through the tunnel, no, over the longer. This is going to be a very, very acceptable time. 35 point. Three and five penalties for Sean, and into the top eight they go. That's tidy, Graham. It, yes, it's better than tidy, as you say. The dogs can see the handlers going in the opposite direction, so they, they're trying to wrap that jump as hard as they can and just not putting in and getting the height. Jukebox, seven years of age today. Happy birthday, Jukebox. Gemma Haycock from Northampton. The handler, a giant clown at home. This is no place for clowning around, though. The opening day, the championship at Crufts. This is serious business. And both Gemma and Jukebox taking it very seriously and doing pretty well, too, over the first uh, 20 seconds. Might not be the quickest we've seen, but um, going as fast as I can, I'm sure Jukebox would say. And well done, Gemma, as well. Again, very nice round, but she's not pushing him. She's just letting him do the work. Um, and very nice. And she's very pleased about that as well. Look at the speed of that dog, two-footing through the waves. Absolutely brilliant. And again, looking for the tight turn. Look at him, and he's trying to bark as well. Eighth clear round we've seen. Golden Retriever working, eight years of age. Emily, Golden Retriever, a working Golden Retriever. Heather Grant, the handler from Bangor in Northern Ireland. Kind and loving dog. She's also a qualified therapy dog, this one, visiting care homes and hospitals. An incredible instinct to know who needs her. Well, well, at the moment, Heather needs Emily badly and needs Emily to perform at her very best. And my early indications are it's wonderful to see this one. Um, might not be the quickest dog we've seen today, though. Well, you say that, but it's it's had to have won a ticket somewhere in the country yeah, in the last 12 months. So it's enough. beaten a lot of good dogs. But and it also just a good illustration, Jim, that you don't need a Border Collie to compete in agility. You sure. can have any sort of dog again. And this just illustrates that uh, whatever you've got, try, try. Oh, it's uh, fantastic. I, don't get me wrong. I'm not having a go at Emily or the Gold Retriever. I'm just saying that uh, that horrible clock is ticking away. Uh, 40 
five seconds. Well, that's a 10 or 11 seconds away from, from the top one. But it is a clean, clear round, and you cannot ask for anything more than that. No, he's got, he got his head up there. Great big smile on the hand of his face as well. Uh, they know they've had a good time. Both of them, look at them. Excellent. Well done. Fee for the collie, Jimmy Walchester, the hander from Stoke-on-Trent, nine years of age, easy dog to live with and train. Let's see what uh, what Fee can do here. Great competition we have had already, super quality. Can't wait for the competition to build for the final this evening. Yeah, very nice here, as you can see, sending the dog, she sends the dog and then goes in the opposite direction to try and get a, a head start. As you say, the closer you can be to the dog, when it does an obstacle, it just makes cuts out any sort of confusion at all, and that's what you want, clarity. But he's doing really well here, just two more to go, expecting it's lovely clear round. Yeah, well done then, Gemma. Yeah. Uh, Gemma and, and Fee, well, we've had so many clear rounds, that's up into ninth place, but um, it's clear that's the most important thing. Six years of age, Duke has competed in the three times, and competed for Team GB six times, wow. Duca, Border Collie, and um, hoping to produce here very impressive uh, CV for this one. Competed across three times, competed for Team GB six times, four tickets and six reserves. A combination in four, Marita Ogilvy from Bourne and Duca. Very good partnership there. They're due a really big win, so uh, fingers crossed for her this year. Uh, but as you can see, she does really well. Sends the dog around there, picks it up, changes sides so that uh, she gets the dog on the outside of the circle. Very nice here. Calls the dog off a long jump now. Just a couple more to go into the tunnel. She'll lead the dog away, trying to get a bit more speed. Yeah, and she does very nice. What a run that was. There we go. 37 and clear then for Marita and Duca. The clear rounds keeping piling up, really and up into the top ninth place. Ninth so, place for these two, eight clear rounds ahead of them that have gone quicker. Fernie Nigella, Border Collie, Shannon Springford uh, from Swanley. The handler, a wild child. I'm not sure that's the description we want here at Cross, but let's have a look. <laughs> My goodness, that's about the quickest start we've seen from the wild child. You're going you're to get it whether you want it or not, Jim, I think. So. <laughs> a wild child determined to impress, and that's a flying first 15 seconds, too from Fernie Nigella. Don't forget this from in a hurry. Losing no time, really swift over the ground. This is going to be up, up at the sharp end if they keep it going for the, the last couple. Very good round indeed from Shannon and from Fernie. 34.4 for these two. And fifth place. That is really, really good. The wild child delivers. <laughs> So it is a great round, and it is, the, the faster they go, the more difficult it is to keep that control that, that's so essential here in getting a clear, good round. Five border collies, six years of age, the handler Donna Jarvie from uh, Peebles in the Scottish borders. First time competing at Crufts, so proud of Vibe is Donna. We told you it was going to be outstanding, we told you we were going to have the top dogs here this morning. We have already proved that in bucket loads really terrific competition and it's only going to get better wherever you're watching you're very very welcome jim rosenthal and graham partridge here describing the action for you on the opening morning Crufts 2023 clear so far vibe and, and donna right in front of us easily over there you move jump there and, oh, 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 oh. I'll tell you what, that's one of the best corrections. That's a bit of time see. lost. You'll have a look at that and tell me the intricacies at the end of the round. When you, that's a shame they lost that time there. But it was very, very good. 36.9 and still a clear round. What a shame about that little stumble, if you like, um, in the middle of the round, Graham. <laughs> 
Yeah, it, uh, it, it, was, it, it, was, a, it was a great round, but as you say, it's just one of these things that there's just that little bit of, oh, change of leg there. Which, which way do you want me to go, Mum? Got there in the end, and she's very happy. The penultimate large dog, then Nara Cuddy, third here last year, and Lemon, the border collie, definitely a combination to watch. Lemon, uh, Nara describes as little Miss Perfect. And looking for perfection and looking for speed as well. One of those when we went through the entrance this morning, we singled out as a definite high quality combination. Nara Cuddy and Lemon. It's a really good round so far. Been in really great form uh, over the last 12 months, this pairing. So, again, although you know it is a fantastically high quality field. They will be yeah. there, and that's just, just demonstrates it. Fantastic, well done. Yep, 34.2 and clear for Nara. Up into the top five they go. We will see more of them, and there might just be a little bit more in the tank as well. Border Collie, four years of age. Cop was born in Poland and now lives in and competes for Wales. He got his ticket for Croft by the Welsh Championship show. Last dog then. Cop. Border Collie, four years of age. Chris Curtin, the handler, a fitness coach for the Kennel Club Team GB. The last of the large dogs. Competes for Wales, born in Poland. Got his ticket for Crafts via the Welsh Championship show. That is Cobb, young Border Collie, just four years of age. Knowing really that what has gone before him has been of supreme quality and they have to be quick and fast and faultless and certainly done that in the first 30 seconds or so. And it won't be the quickest, but it's going to be very tidy over the long jump to finish. 35.8 for Chris Curtin uh, and for Cop. Into the top 10 they go. Yeah, very nice round uh, from Chris. Uh, he'll be he'll be really pleased with that. Uh, not sure he's been at Crofts uh, that many times, but they so pairing that's improved dramatically over the last 12 months, uh, and and he'll be really pleased with that. Look, there he goes, looking for the dog's toy. That's the reward, all done with praise and reward, mate. Absolutely right, and uh, just uh, ticking you through them, Dalton, Meredith, and and Clippy. Uh, the fastest and the clearest, but there were a lot of clear rounds. 33.3 um, was the, the quickest dog there. And uh, Dalton, uh, Dave Mannings and Legacy in second place. But well, as we scroll through the results, just have a look at all of the ones with zero faults. It just underlined the quality of the competition that we have had on the opening day here at Crofton. We'll see these dogs again later in the day. And I personally cannot wait. Let's just complete the everything for you and again the clear round just racking up there in the in the uh, large jumping section and it's been really good quality Graham hasn't it it, it was uh, it was a lovely course gave them the chance to um, feel their way into Crofts it, it's a, it's amazing because we don't always compete in atmosphere like this with the lights and the carpets all most of our shows are done outside so this for the dogs is actually quite a big ask but it's a very experienced field both um, in terms of dogs and handlers they know what they need to do uh, to get through the main thing is that they didn't want to be eliminated i've said it before um, and as i say they've, they've they've done really well Great start here then, and uh, let's just leave you with a few images of uh, our opening competition on the first day of Crofts 2023. We'll see you later.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's presentation time! And, and here we go with the presentations. We're starting off with the uh, intermediate jumping results. And we're just doing two. The presentation has been made by Mr. Paul Harding, who's the board member uh, of the Kennel Club. And uh, some very, very happy people there. Some agility. They've strived all year to get here. And the icing on the cake is to win it. And the winner is Lee Gibson with Eurostar. Seven-year-old border collie. Uh, he will be more than happy with that. Just to get a clear round here at Crofts is great. And the second is going to be Dalton Meredith. Is the, is the winner of the large. So I've got that wrong, really. Probably. So Lee Gibson was the winner of the intermediate, and Dalton Meredith with Clippy was the winner of the large. So well done to those two. They're doing their usual lap of honour. Uh, and obviously, they're going to be two to watch in the next round, which will be an agility round, Jim. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Graham. So plenty more still to come as, uh, as these two, Lee and Dalton, Kippy and, and uh, Star take their lap of honour. Is Kalik. <laughs> well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. Round. First up, the weave. Nice quick turn. It's perfect start. So spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. Yeah, faultless so far, but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kalik, a compact SUV. Best in show. Skoda. I love food. I'm a good boy. Because Albert has so much joy, that really helps me with managing my chronic pain. He has completely changed my life. My chronic pain began to develop when I was a teenager and then when I turned 16 I became very unwell and didn't get better. Albert is three years old. He is from the amazing charity Dogs for Good. It's easy to feel quite down and to find it really difficult to do normal day-to-day -day activities because of the pain. But 
I've started a legal apprenticeship. So Albert is um, helping me with my studies and my ambition to become a solicitor. I wouldn't have been able to do that without him by my side. I feel really positive about the future with Albert by my side. To me, Asher is a real hero dog. Not only has he overcome what I'm sure was really quite a traumatic past, but he's used his incredible sense of smell to save human lives. When Asher came to us, he came to us because he'd clearly had a number of homes that had been unsuccessful. And I suspect something quite horrible had happened to him because he actually became really quite scared and would scream in fear. So it took quite some time to get him to see his real personality. Asher is a biodetection dog for the charity, which means that he uses his nose to smell human disease. He was the first step. He was the dog that would tell me whether a disease had a particular odour that a dogs and other dogs could be trained to find in the future. The work Asher has done is saving and will continue to save thousands or even millions of lives in the future. I would certainly uh, call Booty a hero for myself and the whole, whole family. Booty uh, is a Labrador now, going on two years of age. Booty seems to be the bond that has held us all together through a very difficult time. Lily was diagnosed with leukaemia about two months after, after uh, Booty came into her for, forever home. Chemotherapy is difficult for anyone to go through, a bit more difficult for a younger child. Booty is my best friend and she's always been by my side for everything. I can't imagine a life without Booty and she's made the biggest change to my life and I don't even know how I coped without having her because she's been amazing to me. She means the world to me because if I didn't have her I wouldn't be as happy as I was right now. In my eyes, Stella's a hero because she's shown that Staffordshire Bull Terriers are amazing dogs. Stella's nine years old. She's been working as a drugs dog for the last eight and a half years and she's just recently retired. Stella's a rescue dog from the RSPCA. She was the first Staffordshire Bull Terrier in the country to become a police dog. Her search drive was immense. So I thought, well, I'd be stupid not to give her a chance. Although she wasn't the typical Spaniel or, or Labrador that, that we normally use. It's normally a six week course to train the dogs and uh, Stella completed a course in four weeks. So when she finds the substance, she's trained to freeze. Obviously with drugs with powder, we don't want her interfering or ingesting anything only to keep her safe and also to keep the evidence safe. Her first search, she searched a house and uh, indicated behind a dog bed and there was 25,000 pounds in cash hidden. She's found numerous drugs. She's found three guns, so very, very proud of her. I think Bertie's a hero dog because he inspires me to keep on going and sleeping outside. My name is Ashley Owens and I'm 13 years old. I've been raising the money for Porsche Rescue so they can build a shelter for the dogs so they can keep them all warm. Bertie has been helping me um, by sleeping out with me for over 150 nights. I think that's pretty impressive for a dog. We are amazed by what Bertie and Ashley have been doing and we really hope this inspires other dogs and children to have that bond and to do something special with them and maybe go out and raise money together. I don't think it's just me raising the money, it's we're both raising the money. Spreading the awareness and the importance of um, adopting an abandoned dog, that's really my goal.
I'm okay. Tonight could go either way. Hearts balanced on the razor blade. We are designed to love and break and to rinse and repeat all again. I get stuck when the world's too loud. Things don't look up when you go.
Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the main arena. Day one of Cross 2023. It is, of course, Gundog Day today, and we're now going to welcome into the arena the fabulous East Anglian Staffordshire Bull Terrier display team. This year, 2023, they are celebrating an incredible 50 years, their 50th anniversary. Uh, they go all around the country uh, promoting and giving advice on health and happy dogs. They do agility, they do obedience, and they just love the fabulous breed of the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. So please give them a huge round of applause. The East Anglian Staffordshire Bull Terrier display team, and I'm gonna hand you over to their commentator, Leslie McFadgen. Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the display from the East Anglian Staffordshire Bull Terrier Club. Uh, I'm sure you're gonna enjoy this because it shows you a different aspect of all the dogs. Um, and you're going to have a wonderful display. I'm going to hand over to Leslie now, who's going to tell you all the clever stuff, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. So we've given you a very quick handover of all of our team so that you know who you're going to be watching. First off here we have Marnie and Kipper. They're going to exit stage right. And next up we have Avril and Isabella with Hattie. Um, oh, well, with Jersey today, but you're going to see Hattie later on with Isabella. And we have Tracy and Bird giving you a bow. I don't think I need to introduce the next one. You should all know we have Claire and Stella. You'll all know Stella as the wonderful retired police dog. You'll be seeing her work later on too. So across to my left here, we have Joe and Queenie. They're going to be wowing you with their speed shortly. We have Leah and Walter. We also have Tina and Dixie. We have Sarah and Molly. Oh, Molly's played dead already. That's not very promising, is it? We might be in trouble. We have Kelly and Cam. Thank you very much, ladies. Can you take your dogs from the ring and let Joe get on with the business? So we're going to start with some hoopers. And you've probably seen Hoopers before, it's Fast and Furious. And to set us off, we have Joe with Queenie, who, if you remember the um, video that went a little bit viral after the other year, she was our pocket rocket. Now, she's 10 years old, believe it or not. I wouldn't say she's slowed down at all since that time. She arrived during the Queen's Golden Jubilee, which is why she's called Queenie. And she's done a huge amount of film and TV work over her years living with Joe and the rest of her dogs and animals at home. Big round of applause for Queenie. You will see her again later. She'll be showing off her agility skills too. So next up, we have the baby in our team. Now this one is little Cam Kamaya. Ilori Kamaya is her posh name. She's called Cam's for short. And she's now only 20 months old. This is the first big thing she's done with us. So we're hoping it's all going to go to plan. Um, she first appeared with us last year at Discover Dogs, and she enjoyed that very much. She has her silver and bronze good citizen awards. She's a UK Hoopers grade two dog, and she's KC Rally level one. And she's also going to be in with the Stafford Stars Obedience team later today. So please give her a round of applause because she needs to get used to this going on because she's going to be a superstar for us in the future. Thank you very much, Kelly and Cam. Now, Sarah and Molly are representing the rescue side of things. We know that there are an awful lot of Staffords and Bull breeds that get into rescue situations. Fortunately for Molly, she came along at the right time. Sarah was looking for another dog. She was with Three Counties Rescue in Bourne and um, Molly was really lucky to find a home with Sarah. She's now aged eight. She's been with us since she was six months old. She's also likes to do agility. She's grade five agility. Her favorite trick as you saw in the opening is being shot. And Sarah says she just loves to people, um, loves to cuddle anyone at all. Jo's done a very quick swap of dogs and she's back in with Tiger. Now Tiger was bred by Jo. She's Queenie's daughter and also daughter of Mouse, who you've probably seen with us before. Mouse is now retired from displays, but is still living happily at home with his family. 
She competes also in agility and hoopers. And she's recently tried, and I apparently thoroughly excelled at barn hunt, something else coming into this country. So I think a big round of applause for Joan Tiger. Now we'll just have a, a couple of minutes to get the equipment out of the ring so that we can carry on. And the next outfit that we're going to do is some basic obedience with the dogs. So the majority of all of the dogs on our team have all done good citizen training. Um, most, all of them to bronze level, quite a few of them to silver, some to gold. It's just very basic good manners and it's useful to do with your dog anyway. Today they're going to show you just some loose lead walking to heel and a bit of a recall. But three out of the four guys that are here today are also appearing afterwards in the Stafford, in the um, obedience competition across in Hall 5. So we have a Stafford team called Stafford Stars that are appearing. That's quite good to know. So let's welcome into the ring then our, uh, our good citizens for today. So we're going to have Tracy and Bird, Kelly and Az, Leah and Walter, and Tina and Dixie. So while they're showing you Stafford's walking very nicely on a loose lead and doing all the things that you're going to ask them to do, I'm going to tell you a wee bit about the individual dogs and handlers. So first of all, Tracy. Tracy's the founder of the um, Stafford Stars team, really. She's put them together and put all the hard work in. Tracy has Bird with her here today. She's the little red dog. Um, she's three years old. She was bred by Tracy, who also owns her mum and her granddaughter, who have all been part of our displays in the past. Bird's dad is on the Discover Dog stand today, if any of you are across there having a look at that. And Bird is literally a lifesaver. Tracy's a type 1 diabetic. Bird knows if things aren't right. That isn't a taught behaviour at all, it's just something that she's always done. Absolutely marvellous. Kelly has Az there. His posh name is Ulori Azizi. He's eight years old and he's been with the display team since 2018. Has his gold Good Citizen Award. He's a UK Hoopers Grade 4, and as I said before, he's one of the obedience team to be doing so. I think the dogs are going to now go into a wait and then do a nice little recall for us. So I'll tell you a bit about Leah and Walter. Walter's a very funny, intelligent dog that thinks he knows best and is always trying to guess what Leah's thinking. He's been trained in obedience and scent work. He's been in a TV ad and loves posing for the camera. He also especially likes clapping for the audience, so you know what that's going to mean in a minute. And there's Tina and Dixie. Dixie's nine years old, loves people. One glance at her, her bum wiggles and her tail spins like a propeller. She loves her lure chasing and she's a big ambassador for the breed. She's spent many, many hours on our breed stand giving out kisses to anyone, whether they want them or not. She's a gold, uh, a bronze and silver good citizen. She also does agility and hoopers, but tricks are the things that she absolutely likes the most. So I think you'll agree, these little Stafford stars have shown you just how well they can perform and behave today. And we wish them lots of luck in that big ring over there in Hall 5. If you're over there, go over and give them a cheer. Big round of applause for them, please. So again, another little quick clear out of equipment. And we're going to move on to our agility section, which is going to focus with Joe and Queenie. So as you would expect, she will be quite fast and furious around here. And while she's whizzing around the course, rather than describe what she's, going to do, what she's doing, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our breed, because that's important too. So our breed standard asks for our breed to be active and agile, muscular, well-balanced, of great strength through size, around 14 to 16 inches in height. And although nature and genetics can have a say, ethical breeders should be breeding to meet that breed standard. I think when you're looking at Queenie, you can feel that you can tick most of those boxes. Active and agile, absolutely got that one nailed. And as I said before, 10 years old. So very nice to see an older dog still performing at this level. Up we go for the finish. Go, go, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she wants to make her own head of course. Yeah. Yeah. 
She said, I'm not leaving the ring. Well done, Queenie. A big round of applause for Queenie. So next up, Sarah and Molly for the rescue dogs. And we're going to talk a little bit about the problems that there are for our breed and similar in rescue at the moment. So there are really loads of bull breeds and various crosses in the rescue situation. Sadly, COVID has seen an influx. And the moral there is, if you're able to rescue, there are plenty of dogs needing another chance in life. I mean, after all, just look at Molly here. And of course, we've got Stella's story later on today. But if you're buying a puppy, then please always source one through your breed club and find a reputable breeder who cares about the breed's health and future. Isn't it funny how a lot of the rescue dogs have a lot to say for themselves as well? It's almost like they're so pleased that they've finally got where they want to be. So again, at eight years old, Molly is definitely doing it for the rescue dogs. Big round of applause for them. Thank you so much. Jo is going to be exhausted after this, but she's back in again with Tiger. And they're away. And our breed standard also asks for our dogs to be bold and fearless and totally reliable. Now we've got quite a lot of colours in our breed standard. We ask for them to be red or fawn or white or black or blue or any shade of brindle. You can see obviously tiger is a glorious tiger brindle or any shade of brindle with white. Black and tan or liver are highly undesirable colours. A merle isn't a colour associated with the Staffordshire Bull Terrier at all, and the Kennel Club will not register Merle Stafford. So if you do happen to see any advertisers that, I can assure you they are not purebred Staffordshire Bull Terriers. But yay for the colours. So let's, let's live on with our assortment of colours. Thank you very much, Jo. So now we have something else of interest. Staffords quite like to use their noses, and we're finding that more and more of them are really excelling in scent work. So you'll remember Marnie here. She's been here in previous years with Bodkin, her obedience dog, who does some absolutely marvelous things. But today she's brought along Kipper. So while the, the um, scent trail's being laid out, she's actually just doing a little bit of work with Kipper to get her in the, in the right frame of mind. So you can see all the different covers being put out, and in the little jar, there is the tiniest piece of something that's going to go on, right? And what's in there is a tiny drop of gun oil on a small piece of felt. Now, you've all seen where it's gone. It's hidden under one of the cones. Kipper will go and have a look and see if she can find it. She's competed successfully in obedience and rally for quite a long while now, but she's found that she really, really enjoys scent work and she's now working at higher levels in scent work trials. And when she's found it, look at that indication. It's very, very steady. So some very basic scent work there, but I think you can see the, the reasoning for it. Excellent work, good to see. But of course, that was our amateur scent work, but then we have a guest here who's a bit of a professional. So somewhere or the other, I understand, there was something going on. What's happening here? Oh, here she comes. Rita the Robbers appeared on the scene. She's got her swag with her. She's got a stash of ill-gotten gains. Oh, shh, don't let them know where she's going to hide them, for God's sake. Who knows what she's got today? Where she's been? Have you all locked up before you've left home? You need to know that. What Rita the Robber doesn't know is that today with us, we have the wonderful Stella. She's nine years old. She has now retired from active duties, but she's come along today to watch her Stafford family show off their skills to you. So as we welcome into the ring, PC Claire Todd, who's been a police officer for 24 years, dog handler for 18 years, we'll see what Stella can do. Now, in 2014, Claire went to see Stella at the RSPCA West Hatch Centre. She recognised her potential, and Stella became the first Staffordshire Bull Terrier to become a police dog. 
She completed her course in four weeks instead of the usual six. She's trained to find drugs, cash and firearms and to freeze to indicate she's found something. On her first search she ever did, she found £25,000. She won an award for that one. She's since found thousands of pounds of cash, large amounts of drugs and also guns. So it looks very much like she's found a cash stash in that bag. Well done, Stella. Is there more to find? Let's keep searching the joint. <laughs> I think Stella's also quite enjoying retirement. She's got quite a fan base. Oh, she obviously needs to have a sneeze. Looks like we may have found something else. We have another swag bag. Let's check and make sure. And I did ask something of Claire today, which occurred to me in the middle of the night last night. When paper money changed to polymer money, did that cause an issue? But apparently the ink is the same on both, so it didn't cause any issue for Stella at all. Now, as well as finding swag bags and money and cash, she's really good at arresting robbers. So come on, Rita the robber. You don't look so clever now, do you? Big round of applause as they walk out. We are delighted to have welcomed Claire and Stella today. They're one of this year's Hero Dog finalists. Good luck for Sunday, Stella and Claire. And of course, we wouldn't be our display without having some Staffords and children and tricks. So we're welcoming in Isabella and Jersey. And they're going to do a little aerobics routine for us together. We're really proud that within our breed standard, we're only one of only two breed standards where it mentions the dog's suitability with children specifically. We all know not to leave children and dogs unsupervised, of course, but Staffords have got a really great affinity with the young ones. Great aerobics here. A lot of bowing. And some lunges. Oh, where have we got? Oh, we've seen mum. Back we go. That's it. We were on with the lunges. Marvellous. How clever is that? And she can spin and twist. Now we've got some step ups to do. One up, one down. One up, one down. Very clever step ups. No wonder these dogs are so fit and muscular and active and agile. So a big round of applause for Isabella and Jersey. While Isabella goes and gets Hattie ready to finish off for us, Avril's going to run Jersey around the course. We'll tell you a little bit about Jersey. Um, she's eight years old. She was also bred by Joe. She's Queenie's daughter and Tiger's sister, who you saw earlier. She's also mother to Hattie, who's going to come in next. Nice family affair. She loves her agility. She does everything at 100 miles an hour. And as you'll see at the end when she's finished, she'll do absolutely anything for a tennis ball. for the finish, off goes Jersey. Right, so while Avril goes off and gets things ready, we're going to have a little bit of humour. We're bringing in Wilf and Tina. Now, Wilf is our clown. He's six years old and he was born on Halloween. Tina says she should have seen that as a sign. He's called Elori Backchat for a reason. It's definitely stuck with him. We, we prefer to call him Gobby. He does breed showing, he does hoopers and agility. Tina sometimes forgets the course, she's not very good at it. 
and he's got a natural ability for scent work. He likes seeking out Kong, Napier gun oil and catnip. But what he also likes to do is read. So he's going to read here for you. So he can't spell, so you should be able to see it, hopefully. But it says B-A-C-K. And what have we got now? We have R-O-L-L. -L. We'll have to teach him to spell and then he'll be able to cheat. Hey. And we've got some back chat too. And next up we have M-I-D-D-L-E. Well, we get, we're going to get a whole roll of everything going on now. You forgot to read, Wilf. Got there in the end. Well done, Wilf, with the reading. And let's see if he can do this one. P-A-W for a finish. Oh, we'll get a wave. Maybe we should put that down as W-A-V-E, because that's certainly a wave. But we're going to finish. Because he wasn't perfect, we're going to actually <laughs> shoot him. So around we go, popping back on the lead. And a big round of applause for Tina and Wilf leaving the ring. Tina says he's been a challenging in do dog in life, but a character. She said he's an absolute lovable rogue. I think you can see why. He loves to snuggle up, gives all the best cuddles. Thank you, Tina and Wilf. And to finish off today, we have Isabella and Hattie back in the ring. And of course, if you've got a child and you've got dogs, what better thing to do than try and teach them to tidy up? So first of all, we have a little bit of wrapping. Round and round and round and round she goes. Absolutely clever. And we'll see if she can get all the toys in the basket for us. Time to tidy, Hattie. One in, good girl. And you do the next one. She's going to try and do two at once, I think. Wonderful. In she goes. Very good. And so to finish off, Isabella and Hattie are going to do the agility course for us. And while we te they're going around, I'm going to tell you that Isabella is also appearing in the YKC ring this afternoon in Graduate Agility with Twiglet, the Spaniel. She's here on Saturday morning in the Agility Dog of the Year with Twiglet and in the Under 18 Jumping with Hattie. And on Sunday morning, she's in the YKC pairs with both dogs. I think you'll agree, anybody that's watched her before, she's becoming a very talented young lady. So in our 50th year of our club, the 150th year of the Kennel Club, we're really pleased that we've been able to come and show you all the disciplines and all the fun and games that our Staffordshire Bull Terriers can have. Well, that completes the display for this year. But one thing you may not know, this lovely lady standing by my side will be here on Sunday morning as one of the judges for over 400, uh, sorry, Saturday, when there's over 400 Staffords entered here. And this is one of your judges, our Leslie. Yeah, she didn't know about that bit. Um, so we hope you've enjoyed the display. If you want to talk to any of the people, they're only too willing to answer your questions and find out what this breed really is all about because what you've seen today is a little bit about what they do. Um, don't visit when they've got puppies. I did that just to see the baby puppies. I went in a skirt and came home in a doily. Um, they are beautiful little creatures, so please join us again next year. The display will be different, but we'd like you all back to see it again. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.
Ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause for the amazing East Anglian Staffordshire Bull Terrier display team. Thank you so much. In their 50th year, ladies and gentlemen, celebrating their 50th anniversary. Uh, the year, of course, that the Kennel Club celebrates an amazing 150 years. So still plenty of action to come here in the main arena on day one of Crufts 2023. Join us at 11.15 for the freestyle heel work to music. We'll be back at 11.15 for that. Hopefully you'll join us then. We'll see you at 11.15. When you slip and slide, the way you seek and hide, the way you shake your head, the way you run up. Next up is Kameek. Easy. <laughs> well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. Round. First up, the weave. Nice quick turn to his perfect start. Round. So spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. Yeah, faultless so far, but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kameek, a compact SUV. Oh. Best in show. Skoda. I love food. I'm a good boy.
Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the main arena and day one of Crufts 2023, uh, the world's greatest dog show. It's great to see all of you here nice and early this morning, battling your way through the snow to join us on day one of Crufts. Our heel work to music competition is on the way in just a few minutes. But first, I want to tell you about something very, very important. I'm sure you're aware of the amazing work of the Kennel Club Charitable Trust. They are a registered charity working to improve dogs lives by funding all sorts of different projects science research support and training and health and welfare and you may remember last year at crufts the trust with support from the kennel club launched its appeal for ukraine and since then an incredible amount has been raised almost 260 thousand pounds thanks to your amazing generosity i think that deserves a round of applause ladies and gentlemen two hundred and sixty thousand pounds has been raised for the appeal now one year on since the invasion uh, the kennel club charitable trust is pushing to try and get that figure up to three hundred thousand pounds and in order to do that this year they've launched a very special auction with lots of different items that you can get your hands on and help us get that total up to that amount. Uh, there's items ranging from art to experiences and jewellery and sporting memorabilia and of course plenty of dog related uh, items as well. There's an incredible uh, artwork, uh, a painting that's been gifted by Stuart Mallard, who's judging this year's Best in Show. That's just one of the items. Also in tribute to our late Queen, photographer Anna Sabo has created two limited edition framed prints as well. So do take a look at the items. You can find out more by having a look at the Trust Stand, which you'll find in Hall 3 on Stand 61. So Hall 3, Stand 61, if you want to see some of the items and place your bids. And of course, you can go online to find out more and make your bids online as well at crufts.auction. That's crufts.auction. And you could be going away with an amazing item and helping us raise money for an amazing cause. We'll be back in just a few minutes with our heel work to music. So we are delighted to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, that the Kennel Club Crufts Hero Dog of the Year is back for 2023, uh, celebrating the unique relationships that people have with their dogs and how dogs change lives. Let's find out a little bit more about this year's Hero Dog finalists. Asher is a bi-detection dog. Not only has he overcome what I'm sure was really quite a traumatic part but he's used his incredible sense of smell to save human lives. He was the first step. He was the dog that would tell me whether a disease had a particular odour that a dogs and other dogs could be trained to find in the future. The work Asher has done is saving and will continue to save thousands or even millions of lives in the future.
So there we are. Oh, certainly, yeah, I call it Booty a Hero for myself and the whole family. Booty seems to be the bond that has held us all together through a very difficult time now. Lily was diagnosed with leukaemia about two months after, after uh, Booty came into her forever home. Booty is my best friend and she's always been by my side for everything. She means the world to me because if I didn't have her, I wouldn't be as happy as I was right now. I think Bertie's a hero dog because he inspires me to keep on going and sleeping outside. Night Bertie. Day 6, 11, 335. I've been raising the money for Course Rescue so they can build a shelter for the dogs so they can keep them warm. Bertie has been helping me um, by sleeping out with me. He's helped me through those stages where I've been like, oh, it's such a cold night, I don't really want to sleep out tonight. I don't think it's just me raising the money, we're both raising the money. Because Albert has so much joy, that really helps me with managing my chronic pain. He has completely changed my life. Albert is three years old. He is from the amazing charity Dogs for Good. It's easy to feel quite down and to find it really difficult to do normal day-to-day -day activities because of the pain. But Albert is helping me with my studies and my ambition to become a solicitor. I wouldn't have been able to do that without him by my side. Stella's a hero because she's shown that Staffordshire Royal Terriers are amazing dogs. Stella's a rescue dog from the RSPCA. She was the first Staffordshire Royal Terrier in the country to become a police dog. She's found thousands of pounds in cash. She's found numerous drugs. She's found three guns, so very, very proud of her. For us, it's so rewarding to see her in such a positive light, especially as a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Stella's living proof that in the right hands with the right training, they're incredible dogs. So there we are, some incredible stories of how dogs change lives, and every vote counts, every vote will make a difference. So do head on to the Crufts website and place your vote for the Hero Dog Award 2023. Voting closes at 4pm on Sunday afternoon and the winner will be announced on Sunday evening. You can find out more and place your vote on the Crufts website. OK, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with our freestyle heel work to music. Pets are special. From the moment they melt your heart, through every moment of life together, they are always there for you. And you can always be there for them. Protect your bond with a lifetime policy from Agria Pet Insurance.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the main arena, day one of the world's greatest dog show, Crufts 2023, Gun Dog Day, of course. And we are here with a jam-packed uh, afternoon throughout the day here in the main arena. We've got so much coming up. Give me a cheer, ladies and gentlemen, if you're excited for Flyball this afternoon. Yes. Good morning and welcome to the Crufts main arena here where the freestyle competition is up next. You're about to see the top 10 dogs that have qualified to, for this final, and there's going to be a wide variety of routines that you're going to see. And that means a wide variety of music as well. It's always a great competition, and this is really the top competition for all freestyle handlers that are competing. They want to make it here to this final, and uh, I'm sure there's going to be a few nerves there. And we've got some handlers that are very new. It's their very first time competing in this final this year. So uh, we're going to be having our first three judges make their way into the arena shortly. And a lot of experience between these judges. Today obviously is freestyle, tomorrow will be the heel work to music, which is slightly different. Uh, freestyle is more where anything goes, and the judges have really got to uh, know their stuff. And Sandra Hallam there is our first judge, uh, widely known for her lovely Bernese Mountain Dogs that she works with in the sport. Uh, Louise Ince is our head judge today. And uh, so this is Greta is from Holland and she's our overseas judge. But she's been here in the international competition herself uh, many times. And so they are getting themselves set for what is probably the, the top judging uh, appointment in their calendar. Now, those judges are going to be looking at three areas, and I'll explain a little bit more about those as we go through the competition. They've basically got three areas of 10 points each, so 30 points in total. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about what is within those different categories as the competition goes on. Each handler has uh, up to four minutes to basically showcase what their dog does. And in freestyle, there isn't really any rules. Um, as long as the moves are not interest to the dog, and uh, the, the dog is obviously, you want to show the dog enjoying itself. And this is our first team, experienced Helen Dennis and Combine Away Pure Love, which is her pet name is Kara. They're going to be performing to sing, sing, sing. And uh, a great way to start off this freestyle competition with this team. And it's a fantastic piece of music for our first routine. They're going to be doing their routine to Benny Goodman and sing, sing, sing.
Well, what a lovely way to start off the competition. A super fast-paced piece of music and a nice flowing routine. And uh, we're using the area very well there, which is one thing that the judges will be looking for. And I mentioned how it sort of smoothly flowed. And that's something the judges are looking for in the first section, which is called content and flow. How the moves go from one to another. And there were some lovely flowing sequences there from uh, Kara and uh, Helen. And uh, this little dog is really enjoying itself so much there. It's tails wagging, and that's the beauty about this sport. The dogs really do enjoy it while they're out there. So uh, the judges now will be evaluating what they saw. And that piece of music had some lovely accents in it. If you notice when the dog was sort of rebounding off the handler's a chest on the, the sort of accent in the music, the judges will like that. And that will go into the musical interpretation section of uh, the scoring that the judges will be looking at. So there's lots of different things that these judges have to evaluate. And I mentioned content and flow there. It's not just about how many moves they do, but it's about the variety they do. It's about the difficulty level that they do. So moves that are performed where the dog is facing ahead of the handler or where the dog might be behind the handler. Those would be cl classed as quite difficult. And the judges are looking for those subtle signals. They don't want to see a big signal from the handler to do a move. It should be sort of like a magic trick. You shouldn't see all those signals or hear those commands being uh, sort of said to the dog. So uh, for our first set of scores, some nice eights there for content. And so a 7.8 in total uh, for the content and flow. Accuracy and execution is next, or actually accuracy and team performance, I should say, 7.47. Remember, each of these sections is out of 10. Doesn't, uh, oh, little deduction there. Now, when it says deductions, uh, it's actually if the dog makes a little bit of noise. Uh, so nothing else when it says deductions there, you can see on the screen, uh, it's actually sort of if the, they hear a little bit of noise uh, from the dog. And uh, so one judge just heard a little bit there. Uh, and a good score there, 23.05. Sets us off on a really nice stage okay, for this final a lovely sort of jump over the back the sequence world. there showing good control where the dog this had to wait while the handle went down and uh, onto all fours to for the jump Randall over Blue and was repeated three times which shows Neville good sort of control in that move so we're on to so our bearded collie, and, and this is Leslie Neville with Dewey. They are uh, well known within the sport. Uh, Leslie's been here for a number of years. They're performing to nowhere to go but up. And uh, this dog I know really enjoys itself while it's out there. So I'm looking forward to lots of jumps and again, some nice fast paced moves from this team. Okay. Lights a balloon that tumbles or rises depending on what is inside. Fill it with hope and playful surprises. A bounty redux, then you're in for a right look. Now my heart is so light, 
that I think I just might start feeding the birds and then go fly a kite with your head in a cloud. Only laughter's allowed and there's nowhere to go but I'm Incredible, ladies and gentlemen. Well, let's Jimmy did disappoint there. You do that beardy bounce, lots Bring of jumps the there, and uh, that was the first routine to use props. And you often will see props in the routine, in a freestyle routine, I should say. And uh, they open up various different things that the handler can do. And you saw the dog holding the prop and then performing a move several times in that routine. And that will hopefully impress the judges because the dog is not only performing the move, be it a twist or a reverse round in uh, Dewey's case, but uh, the dog is holding something in its mouth. So it's sort of adding worse to the move. And uh, you're seeing in the first two routines two different types of routine one was more dance place this one was more theme based obviously to do with uh, the hot, hot air balloons and that's what we can see in freestyle a very different type of routine coming out each time um, some people prefer to do a sketch and tell a story whereas others prefer more of a dance based routine and that's where the judges have a hard job. They've got to look at the criteria under each section and evaluate it against those criteria, even though they're so different routines. So we talked about content and flow, and there was a nice flowing routine, but they're also looking for accuracy in team performance. And accuracy, obviously, as the word says, we're looking for moves and not being missed. We don't want to see the dog sort of having to be re to go into the move again. 
um, and the perhaps the dog in. missed the move. Okay. And Six you know, they're all experienced judges. They'll know if a dog has missed a move. Um, and uh, that contest. will sort of feature in their accuracy and team performance mark. So again, we're in the sevens uh, for the content and the accuracy, as you can see there, and into the interpretation. Uh, no deductions for barking. Remember, that's only deductions for barking. 22.43. Uh, so Kara still in the lead. Now, okay. everything you see the dogs being taught today is using what we call positive reinforcement. So that's using toys and treats to get them to perform each of these moves. And if you've never seen this sport before, each of the moves that you're seeing has to be taught individually and then sequenced together. It is not something that happens overnight. Uh, it can take many weeks, months and years to get these dogs to this level. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Kim Lydon so, and Rio. Lovely routine there from uh, Leslie and Dewey. But we're on to our third competitor and this is Kim Lydon she was actually a judge last year she's performing with Rio it's his first time but not uh, Kim's first time and she's been uh, competing in this ring before they're performing to cops and robbers and I think we can tell that by Kim's outfit let's wish them well Not going quite right. She, obviously, Kim senses Rio's not quite right today. It is his Ladies first time into this arena, and it's, it's something and that, Rio. as much as you can prepare for, you go to all different environments. Uh, sometimes the dog just takes a, you know, a look around, and it, he just sometimes looked there like he was like, where am I? He wasn't quite sure what was going on. And Kim knew her dog, and she's just retired, which is a very hard thing to do at this level. But it just shows that the handlers are, are well aware of the dog. They're attuned with the dog because they're working so closely with them on these routines. Because this routine will have taken, um, you know, a year to probably put this routine together. And they did some nice elements here. Look at that. I mean, got dog going forwards, putting its hind leg in the air. That's that's very hard in itself, just dog learning to put its foot back foot in the air. Um, but and facing away makes it doubly as hard. But uh, Rio just not quite on it. 
content. What, what does that mean exactly? So, yeah, we're looking at the moves. We're looking to see that the moves uh, are suitable for the confirmation of the dog, how well they're using the ring, um, whether there's uh, unnecessary repetition. We're looking for the difficulty of the moves and how smoothly all the moves work together, how they transition from one move to another. Okay, that's brilliant. So, is it fair to say then that the handlers might shape their routine based on how their dog can move, its physicality and things like that. They're trying to get the best out of their dog, aren't they? Absolutely. That's the best thing about this sport is that the handler can work the routine, choreograph the routine to suit themselves and their dog. That's brilliant. How, how long will they have been practicing this for, for, the, for the big arena in Cross? They, they will have been practicing this for an awful long time. Months and months. Yeah, a lot of work has gone into working with their dog, creating that teamwork in order to come and perform here for everybody today. That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Sandra. Let's have You're a round welcome. of applause to Sandra. Thank you. All the you, judges Kenneth. there are Fantastic vastly experienced in uh, judging, uh, judging okay. and uh, competing. They've all competed here in the main go, arena. They know what it's like. They know the work involved to, to go into Molly. this arena. Now, this next team, they're making the very first time in this final. Ready and the go, brilliant thing yeah. was that Charlotte came in 2014 to watch this final and decided to take part. And look at them now. Little Monet, Raiders March.
What a lovely little dog that is. And he's really enjoying his time in the ring. Charlotte will be so happy there. I mean, little Mono worked his little heart out, and he's not an easy dog to, to work on. I've known Charlotte a little over the years, and I know that Mono, uh, she has to train him, but then almost not train him, because uh, if he gets too used to things, he might not put the energy into it. And that's quite common. I've trained many sort of non-collies over the years, and you have to be careful how much you do with them. It's all about trying to keep the attitude uh, in them, because look at that little tail wagging. He's a little character. And you're seeing a wide variety of dogs. It's not all border collies. And freestyle is one of those sports where the, the non-collies can do really well. Because look at that. You, you can't sort of get that character uh, in a dog, sort of just any dog. And it just makes him look such a happy soul, doesn't it? So the judges are going to be looking at our third section, which is musical interpretation there. And again, you might have sort of heard some accents in the music. And an accent is something that the, the handlers will be looking at the music and, and analyzing it when they first put this routine together. And, and they'll sketch it out, the routine, picking out these accents. And they might be a punctuation. They might be like a cymbal crash or a, a drum hit or something like that that is quite marked. And the handlers will tr be trying to interpret that with a move such as a twist, where the dog was like chasing its tail or a jump through the arms. So here we go with our scores for a little Monet there. And uh, sevens again. In the content accuracy. And a uh, couple of eights there, which is good. So that gives us a 22.37. Quite tight there, still. At the, uh, at the top, into third place, though. But you can really see that that little dog is so enjoying himself, and you can't get that without lots of time, dedication, treats, and play. And it's just about uh, getting out there and, and selling your dog in a routine. Because freestyle is quite open, we can really do things that show our dog off well. On to our fifth competitor. This is Lucy Heath with Little Trip. Now, Little Trip, a little crossbreed. He not only does freestyle, but uh, you might have seen him in adverts and uh, also in films. They're performing to Harry Potter Bentley. wizard's most rudimentary skills is levitation, or the ability to make objects fly. Uh, do you have your feathers? Good. Now, uh, don't forget the nice wrist movement we've been practicing. Hmm? The swish and flick. Everyone? The swish and flick. Good. Oh, and enunciate. Wingardium Leviosa. Off you go then. Wingardium Leviosa. Wingardium Leviosa. Wingardium Leviosa. Wingardium Leviosa. 
Stop, stop, stop. You're going to take someone's eye out. Besides, you're saying it wrong. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. You do it then if you're so clever. Go on, go on. Wingardium Leviosa. Oh, well done. See here, everyone. Miss Great has done it. <laughs> Splendid. Wingard Leviosa. Well done. Wingard. Enjoying himself, he, he's like he's got Duracell batteries in him, I think. And a super start to that routine. Lots of moves at the start there at a distance, which will go down well with the judges. And a whole sequence at the start. And what was nice about that piece of music was it was a bit different than we've seen before, because we've seen in this arena uh, quite a few times Harry Potter music used, but because the uh, some of the speech was being used from the film in that, it just made it slightly different, and that's what you're trying to do, even though other people may have done the music, you're trying to put your twist on it, and Little Trip there doing one of his favourite moves, which is that sit and beg with a little wave, um, and you saw that once or twice in the routine, the hand really sort of promoting it, and you can see again that uh, it's not about the size of the dog, but it's about making use of what that dog likes to do. So a little career. trip, you might a say, because he's small, you know, you can't see things so well. The uh, handler did so just, good now, things there, like popping the dog onto the book, raising it up. A uh, dog moment, jumped onto the back, which you're not going to do with a bigger dog. So you, you try and make use of your the fact that your dog is actually smaller, because uh, there might be a bigger dog in the competition, which can't do that move. So, um, it'll be interesting to see what the scores are there. And uh, I think, unfortunately, Little Trip did have a little bit of an argument there. <laughs> As in, he had a little bit of a work. So, we might see a little deduction there in our deductions. But I'm sure Lucy's going to be overjoyed with the fact that he worked his little socks off today in the arena. So there we go, already the into the content marks in the nines, the first dog to be in the nines today, so they like that content. Eights and nines in the accuracy, interpretation, oh, and 9.4, nine, now this is going to be good, but how many for that little argument trick was having? <laughs> a few times because he was getting a bit excited basically is the judge going to do anything each judge can give up uh, or deduct up to four marks oh, a couple didn't there so there we go 27.30 oh there go little trip into first place wow and the, the little dogs they don't stop there with a little trip hazard <laughs> um, because uh our sixth team is going to be another small dog because it looks like small dogs are ruling this competition this year. So here we have little Sophie 
That is the dog. She's a little chihuahua. Cross, and this is Jenny. They're performing to a space if medley. If I was an astronaut, I'd be floating in the air. And a broken heart would just belong to someone else down there. I would be the center of my lonely universe. But I'm only human, and I'm crashing down to Earth. If I was an astronaut, I'd have a bird's eye view. I'd circle around the world and keep on coming back to you. In my floating castle, I'd rock shoulders with the stars. But I'm only you, and I'm drifting in the dark. Well done, little Sophie there. You can see Sophie and Jenny there have such a lovely relationship, and it really came through as they're working together. Jenny's very sensitive to little Sophie's needs, and uh, the routine was a great medley of space music. I don't know how many you recognise there. And the costume that Jenny's wearing, uh, you might think, well, why do the handlers dress up? And uh, it's really just to sort of show off that uh, piece of music a little bit more. It's to set the scene. And in this case, the outfit that Jenny chose, being an astronaut, it really showed off the dog. You've got a little black dog there, so you don't want to wear something, you know, uh, in trousers that are black, because the dog, you just can't see it. 
So the white really set off little Sophie really well. So whenever the dog was going through the legs, you could see the dog. And it's so important when you've got a small dog. I've been lucky enough to work here in the main arena with a, a tiny little chihuahua across myself in the final. And uh, you've really got to think what uh, those uh, the, the, the dogs are going to be seeing. So it could be that the dogs may be barking while they're performing, or it could be that they are they squeak while they're actually performing. And we try to discourage that because it takes away from the performance. So that's why we have the deduction box. Okay, and so is that the only thing that goes into that category, or can it's it's just literally that the dogs make it? It's not the handler, is it? They no. can speak. <laughs> no, they the can say what they want. Right, okay. <laughs> no, the so handlers can make a noise. It's just, it's just the dogs if the dogs make a noise oh, while, they're, while yeah. they're working. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Often they sometimes they do it just because they're happy and they're really excited to be doing it. Um, but um, it's something that we kind of like we do discourage it. Discourage it. Takes, takes okay. away from the performance. Yeah. <laughs> Got yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. You're That's welcome. brilliant. Thank you. Stuff. So there was a little bit more about uh, barking and if there was any noise. We shouldn't say barking, it's noise because it can take all different forms. And, and uh, scores there in the sevens again. 21.93 takes them into uh, fifth place. And uh, Jenny competes in the Young Kennel Club competitions as well. So uh, we wish her luck over the next few days in those. But what a lovely relationship those two have. On to number seven, and this is uh, Demelza with her handler, Jill Davis, another well-known handler within the sport, been here with uh, various other dogs before. They're performing to Bring Me to Life.
A lovely controlled ending there by uh, little Demelza. And uh, you can see the, just the different kinds of music you can get in a competition. It's really hard for the judges because they're putting a, you know, a story against a sort of more of a flowing uh, atmospheric routine like you just saw there. Some good cross the legs movements there from Demelza. But notice this attention. That attention is such a key thing. From a young age, encourage the dogs to keep 100% attention to the handlers because when you're out there in that main arena, there's so many distractions going on. And uh, you want that dog to be focused, looking at you because you might be giving it a physical signal, uh, taking your hat off, which might mean to the dog to stand up on its hind legs. Um, or it may be a vocal cue. And if the dog isn't looking at you, then it's not ready to take that move, that command that you're going to be giving it. And across here, you can see there's lots of marks on the floor sometimes where the, the different agility equipment's going to be put out. And all of those things can be a little bit distracting for the dog. And so many of these handlers will have been during the winter in preparation for crufts going to all different environments that they can to try and get the dog used to sort of this, this atmosphere. Of course, you can never sort of do anything that's like stepping out there with the nerves and just the, the area that we, we get here at crufts. It's not like a normal competition. And all of these dogs have qualified to get here today. They've won one of the 10 qualifiers that are up and down the country. And so if you are interested in the sport, do have a look on the Kennel Club website and you'll be able to find a show that might be a little bit nearer to you than uh, Crufts is. So here we are into the sixes and sevens. So 7.4 for content. 7.10 for accuracy and team performance. Musical interpretation 7.33. So a 21.83 into six. So at the moment, little Trip Hazard doing the medley from Harry Potter is still in the lead at 27.30. But we've got a few good teams to come. Now, this is their first time competing. And running Crufts. number also eight, our next handler, well. is uh, Lorna with the lovely Brown. blue male, Nora. Now, this is their very first time here in the main arena. They've gone from starters to advanced to getting a Crufts qualifier. I mean, that that's dreams are made of that. They're performing to jump in the line. Sensation, the 
reason for aviation And fellas, you got to watch it When she wind up, she bottom, she go like a rocket performance in a freestyle final i mean lorna must be over the moon with nora on her very first uh, final and there were some lovely moments there in that routine where the dog was working at a distance facing away from the handler and i think the judges are gonna like some of that because there was super distance away it wasn't just like a couple of meters away the dog was well away from the handler and uh, Lorna says that uh, Nora loves to work for a crowd, and you could see that. I mean, look at this dog. She's just enjoying it the whole way through. And look at that, facing away from the handler. This is when the dog was at a distance. Performing all these moves, you can see her listening intently, the ears back there, and that's really hard. And all those moves have to first of all be faced, taught facing the handler and then the dog turned around and talked to look ahead and perform them. I can't tell you how difficult some of those moves are to have the dog facing away from the handler and the confidence that the dog needs. So the judges are going to have a lot to think about after that routine and it was it was a lovely fun routine and you want to get the crowd on your side a little bit uh, having been competing myself there if you just get that crowd clapping that little bit more for you you never know what might happen might just influence those judges a bit i'm sure it won't but uh, starting off there in the content with some uh, 19.2 and but the eights are really good and uh, obviously a few things perhaps didn't go to plan there so into the eights for the accuracy and team performance but interpretation was always going to be sort of a good marks in the nines um, because there was some good team performance there and uh, into second place on 26.43 so uh, i'm sure lorna's going to be so happy and that is a team we are going to see again i can guarantee the dog's only three years old and uh, i'm sure we're going to see for many years to come so number nine freckle frenzy a rescue dog uh, 11 years old and they're going to be performing to the great british bake-off so this is i'm guessing going to be a bit of a sketch and uh, they again are regulars here in the freestyle final and the heel work final you'll see tomorrow not many dogs make it into base finals so we wish them luck Dream.
Mars gets served fake. Because you have five minutes left. Fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. What a well done, Freckle there, telling us the story of the great well, British Bake Off. A uh, lovely moment there where the dog puts the cake in the oven using various different skills there, having to open the oven, put the object in and close it. So that shows great training. And uh, the good thing about Freckle is, again, she, she just stands out. She's got that character that you're looking for. Uh, in a performance dog and uh, doing some lovely little sort of touches and moves and, and it's very hard to find these pieces of music and it's something that gives you no end of headaches as a freestyle and who music handler and I often get asked well, where do you find the music and, and it can be in really random places you can be sitting in a restaurant and there's a piece of music come on and, and you just have to try and find out who, what bit of music is because you just sort of start to have a feeling about your dog what suits your dog the speed of the music has to suit the dog um, because if it's too fast and you've got a sort of slower type of dog it doesn't look right and the judges aren't perhaps going to like it that much some dogs obviously go for serious types of music because of the way the dog looks Normally, I uh, advise. But there's all to different kinds of music, and, uh, and it's it really open to the handler to find the right then piece of music for the dog. Start with, uh, a turn uh, uh, around, a twist, or a circle around you, or through the legs. So, if you want 
in age, then I would say around six months you can start slowly. But no jumps, no hind leg work are the heavy stuff. That okay. should not uh, be done. Yeah, so it's really important, obviously, to protect the puppy in their, in their physical state in those, early, in those early months. So it's more about socialization, just about responsible ownership, isn't it, I guess, which so is what hopefully see, everybody's going to be doing with their dogs and then just starting maybe to get a little bit more tricky, if you like, with, 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 with your training. Yes, indeed, that's most important. It's not only physical, but also the, uh, mentally. And when he, the dog is around the year, you would make it a little bit progress. But of course, in the first uh, year, they can get a little bit in contact with the exercise, but not too much. Not too much. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Let's have a round of applause, please, for Greta. Thank you. OK, absolutely. First up, the weave. Nice quick turn. It's a perfect start. So spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. And yeah, faultless so Keep far, going. but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kamut, yes. our compact SUV, Ooh. our best in show. Skoda. Well, it's our last competitor, and what a team they are. Because they won the freestyle and HTM finals last year here. This is Nikki with her red and white collie Elsa. Elsa is fast and furious. As you can see, she's already trying to start off working. So we're bound to see some fast and furious action from this team. So will they beat 27.30 by trip with Lucy?
Well done. And I said some of that was going to be fast and furious, and it certainly was. But there was lovely elements of light and shade in their movement. Some very controlled movement, but also that fast work, which Elsa really loves to do. And some nice sort of sequences there that the team did. Brilliant choreography of taking off a coat, you could see there, and then use of it. If you notice in the lyrics, uh, the uh, lyrics said something about a matador, and Nikki took the coat off and pretended it then became a cape. And so there was great use of the prop because the coat is actually a prop uh, in that routine. So some really nice musical elements for the judges to evaluate there. So it's been a great final, 10 very different routines for the judges to evaluate. And you can see here with Elsa, the enthusiasm this dog has is just amazing. She, uh, she will be in the uh, He Works Music final tomorrow as well. And uh, she'll be just as busy and excited, I am sure. So we're looking for a score to beat Trip, uh, which is 27.3 they got. So uh, we'd be needing to look into the nines and look at this. Contents into the nines, accuracy oh, into the nines again, and interpretation sure to be into the nines. So this is shaping up for a very high score. So, will they do enough? And yes, 27.63, just picking Trip with Lucy Heath into second of 27.30. But that was a great routine uh, to the music Good Morning. And using the bench well there as the prop. And uh, nice presentation at the end there. So... That's a, it's going to be a second freestyle final win for uh, Nikki with the lovely Elsa. So if you've really enjoyed today, then uh, back tomorrow we will have the HTM or the Hillwork okay, Music Final, which is a little bit time. different. And then don't forget on the... Uh, Saturday is the International Freestyle Final, which is Please always fantastic to watch. Top three, the winner, Nikki Hansen and Elsa. So what's so lovely about our first and second place, place is that they're great friends, they train together, and, place, and, uh, and they will be very pleased for each other to, to get to the places they got today. And there's Lorna with Nora, who will be ecstatic for their very first cross. And Nora being only three years old, she is bound to be back here again. So many of these handlers will have spent months and months of training, and it means a lot to them to, to come out here and they will have tailored their, their training down to this, this one day. And sometimes it obviously goes right, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, you can tell the hours of work that has gone into some of those routines just to get the timing in. You've got to have an ear on the music, You've got to know that routine inside out. And then, of course, it sometimes doesn't always go to plan. And so you have place, to improvise and you have to almost pretend to the judges that Sarah what you are doing was meant to happen. And those top three really showed that today. They were okay. all very we professional, polished performances. So now... Uh, Nikki and Elsa will be the representative to go into the International on Saturday, so you will see them again. So they're going to have a busy schedule. They will be back in the Frost Main Arena here doing their spotlight performance later today. Uh, back into the ring tomorrow for the he HGM or Hewitt's Music final. And also in the International, but the beauty about that dog uh, is that she has got energy to burn. So 
congratulations to all of those teams putting on a great performance today. Well, wasn't that fantastic, like I said before, the highest standard of heel work to music freestyle here at Crufts 2023. If you want to watch any of those routines again, head over to the YouTube channel and you can watch those routines as many times as you like, youtube.com forward slash Crufts. Okay, we will now take a short interval, ladies and gentlemen. We will be back at 12.50 with the afternoon programme here in the main arena. We have got lots still to come. We've got agility, we've got fly ball, we have got the West Midlands Police Dog Display Team, all still to come. We will be back at 12.50 and we'll see you then.
Yeah.
Next up is Kamik. <laughs> well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. First up, the weave. Nice quick turn. It's a perfect start. So spacious, getting slipping through this with ease. Confident run up to the seesaw. Yeah, faultless so far, but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Shkoda Kamik, a compact SUV. Best in the show. Shkoda. I love food. I'm a good boy.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to the world's greatest dog show, Crufts 2023. very good afternoon to you. Welcome to the afternoon session of agility, flyball, and you name it, it's here today for a canine wise. A big thank you, by the way, to you Move, our official craft sponsors for 2023. Fantastic to have them back again. Uh, if you were here this morning, you'll seen the courses that was going, that we had the uh, Novice Cup small dogs going around. And we've also got part two coming up very soon as well. So stay with your seats. Especially if you're here for watching Freiball, because the arena will be packed out very, very shortly. And our next job is to introduce our judge, Nick. Great to see you. Known Nick for a very long time. Hands together, please, for Nick Jones. set for the novice cup final the dogs competing in grades uh, three to five top grade seven to remind you okay so and these go, dogs are qualified by competing in a semi-final of the kennel club agility festival last summer a couple of parts that we have already had the jumping and now we're going to watch part two which is the agility in reverse order of where they finish this morning so, as you can see, it's agility, got the white novice dogs the first uh, first to go and away they go with neil harding and uh, which in the working cocker spaniel graham novice dogs they are called graham partridge alongside me jim rose what can we expect from these novice dogs 
Uh, a very good competition. They are, um, in the greater scheme of things, not quite as experienced uh, as uh, some of the dogs that we're going to see during the next four days. But uh, we have seven grades, so this is right in the middle. So these are less experienced dogs than the grade six and seven dogs. And we're watching the first of six small dogs going here, just to remind you, that they're running in reverse order of where they finished uh, this morning in the jump. And there we are. Unfortunately, that's Neil Harding picking up uh, an elimination uh, along the way. So, seconds ago, we've got Laura, Laura Farrow with Dubs. Thank you all very much for your time. First by the Crofts. This is Dubs with Laura Farrow from Liphook in Hampshire, Staffordshire Bull Terrier, four-year-old. First time at Crofts, Dubs born in the Netherlands, nickname is The Prat. Loves stealing food, loves her toy pig as well. Let's see what The Prat can do on the green carpet and drop. This is good so far, nice and quick and uh, no faults as well. Good work between Laura and Dubs. Up and down over the A-frame. Was there a fault on go, going over the A-frame? Just failed to touch the white mark at the bottom. Graham would uh, confirm that. It, it, uh, it was a pole down, Jim, actually, on, num on number 10. But this is a, still a very, very nice round. You don't see many staffies doing it, but uh, very, very nice indeed. Very impressive. Yeah, good work. And... Uh, very nice star, very agile dog, making a handle of work hard. Look at the dog extending out over that. Very nice. This is Spider, working Cocker Spaniel, Lily Woodford from not too far away in Northamptonshire. A couple of tickets this year. Intense concentration and a Waco Spider. Quickly through the tunnel, comes towards us. Good work there over the seesaw. This is really quick. Great start to this round. 12 seconds. Absolutely clean as well. Good contact at the bottom of the A frame. Nice twisting turn there. In and out of the tunnel. Spider, an absolute flash. Almost went back in the tunnel. Didn't. Through the wheeze, approaching it well from the right hand side. This is going to set the standard if these two keep it going. Up through that tunnel at the far side of the course, if we look at it. Up and down over the dog walk. Brilliant. Brilliant little round. 34.2 and faultless. Very, very impressive. Uh, Jim mentioned just now about the dog winning a ticket the tickets are only available to uh, grade seven dogs but these dogs have qualified within the grade three to five and have probably moved on but that was very nice working cocker spaniel sheba amy gas says from hertfordshire loves to work no matter what happens there they always leave the ring on a high fast furious super fun and uh, That'll be an elimination, unfortunately. Whenever you see those crossed arms uh, uh, from our judge, that means elimination, taking the wrong course there. But uh, they will have fun. They will complete the course, as always, uh, Graham. And fun with a capital F, the name of the agility game. And uh, you know what I always say, Jim? Nobody's told the dog it's been eliminated except the handler. They're still having fun out there, and they've done very well just to qualify to be here at the world's biggest and best dog show. So two dogs already eliminated. That means they cannot take part in the final. This is Brew. Matthew Burdett, five-year-old Shetland Sheepdog, penultimate oh, small dog here, small dog but with a very big attitude. So it's only small dogs, but if you can see, I'm not going to say it very silly, but they go into the tunnel, they actually don't run in the tunnels, they jump into the tunnels. A-frame, contact, very good at, on, on, on the white. Almost, almost took the wrong balls there, but... Uh, as Matthew corrected Brew, and this is another very good round, it's clean so far, there'll be a flying finish there over the dog walk, and the 35.1 for Matthew Burdett and for Brew, second place in the small dogs with one to go. Very nice, and look at that dog kicking its back legs out. There's no chance of that one having a pole down and flying through the weaving poles. These dogs just absolutely love it. She's a bit shattered. Be there, rational, loving, and just wanting to be.
Millie, the four-year-old cockapoo, Graham Murphy, the handler from Hayden Bridge in Hexham, the last of the small dogs. Uh, Millie is Graham's first agility dog, a reminder, 30 4.2 and clear is the time to beat. It will not happen. There's a five faults. Nice and steady though over the seesaw. And that is an elimination. Sadly, crossed arms again from uh, Nick Jones. And again, the dog will continue with Graham and will complete the round. Just wants to please, and uh, there's no point in pulling up short, is there? They're here at Crufts, the greatest dog show in the world. They're performing on the legendary green carpet. And Graham Murphy and Millie, the four-year-old cockapoo, and that completes the small dog section. And it, and it really is um, worthwhile them continuing, even if they've got faults, and doing their very best, because there's nothing like experience, especially in, in competitions like this, where they've uh, it's indoors, it's on, it's on artificial grass, we've got all the lights and everything else going on. So there's no, no better preparation. Just confirmation, then, uh, of the results. <laughs> confirmation, then of the result, the small dogs final. Let you just uh, check that for yourselves. So I think we're looking at possibly good to go. Anyway, first competitor to go will be when we're ready. Jenny Watson, Jenny for the second box of the field climb. He's ready. Third jersey dog, the goal was about 30 seconds on the green carpet to cross my dream goal. First of the six medium dogs, Scout, five-year-old Cocker Spaniel and Jenny Watson. Third agility dog for Jenny, this one. And their goal just to have 30 seconds on the green carpet at Crufts with her dream dog, Scout. A loose cannon, never knows does Jenny quite what Scout will provide. Backing round the course, pulled up short, wrong course there, righted it, but that'll be five faults. A frame, missed the contact at the end, five more faults this round, slightly unravelling at the moment. Up at the far end of the course as we look at it, nifty through the weaves. Tight turn, heading for the tunnel, loves the tunnel, in and out of that, up and down over the dog walk, and that is the finale. 37.4, 15 faults for Jenny and for Scout. And they saw the dog uh, not completing the jump and coming round the side and therefore picking up the refusal. And now probably one of the easiest decisions for the judge today. Edith Radkai from Southampton. Naughty Nora, four-year-old Manchester Terrier. Naughty Nora won best puppy in breed in Crufts in 2019. But it's always going to be an agility dog after her ears went up. It's a, it's a lovely sight, that beautiful looking dog. And it's a beautiful looking round so far as well. For Naughty Nora, the Manchester Terrier. Don't see that breed that often, Graham, unless I'm mistaken. No, you don't. Um, working Cocker Spaniels, Cocker Spaniels becoming very popular, but you don't often see this breed, but I don't know why, because she's done really, really well. Unfortunately, just picking up uh, a fault on the end of the dog walk. You see our judge, Nick Jones, just signalling that fault. Yeah, that's a shame. Just, just missed that contact point. So crucial as the finale, the finishing line. Yeah, it was beckoning. It was. <laughs> Sprite, four-year-old working Cocker Spaniel. Emma Ross, the handler from Dingwall in the Highlands of Scotland. Crazy, noisy dog. Caught in, not jumping, <laughs> lives for agility. Amazing first year, qualifying for numerous finals. A dream come to here at Crops, and what an impact in the first 15 seconds this one's making. If anybody ever tells you that dogs don't enjoy agility, just show them 10 seconds of this dog going round. And unfortunately, they've picked up an elimination for a wrong course there, but... This dog <laughs> really doesn't care at all. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. High enjoyment, high octane, high decibels. Eliminated, who cares? What a 37 seconds in the life of Sprite and Emma Ross. <laughs> <laughs>
and, and that dog really doesn't care, you know, <laughs> whether it's got in contact or whether it's fallen off things or it's just having the best time. You're looking at Nancy, three-year-old cross, Nancy Pop Sally Butler, excuse me, the handler from Gloucester. Nancy, sweet-natured, loves competing, not a great trainer, apparently, but can be very, very fast. Not kidding, that's a good, quick, faultless opening 10 seconds or so. Remember, they have to touch the white at the bottom of the A-frame. Almost went for the tunnel, but was uh, well corrected by Sally. The tunnel's OK this time. Now the weaves. Oh, dear. Dear, dear. Mister. Mistake on the entry. That'll be five faults there. And an elimination, too. And there we are, over the nicely made seesaw there, very speedy, this dog. And unfortunately, because it didn't complete the weeds correctly before moving on, picks up the dreaded crossed arm elimination. One to go in the, in the mediums. Jasper Carrot, working Cocker Spaniel, Robin Sinkler, the handler, called Jasper Carrot, not after the local comedian in these parts, but because Jasper loves his toy carrot. You can hear Robin, very vocal. Jasper responding well. Wasting no space or time at all. Very good, very good work between uh, Robin and Jasper. This is shaping up to a good one. Again, a tight turn, so quick through the tunnel. This could be really good. Robin and Jasper Carrot, 34.2 for Robin and Jasper, numero uno. Well done to Robin and Jasper, very well deserved. They've, uh, again, had a really, really good year this year. You heard Robin all the way around just talking to the dog. You can talk to it, lots of body language is allowed, but the only thing you can't do is touch it. Beautiful looking dog, Skedaddle, three-year-old Shetland Sheepdog, Stephanie Best, experienced handler, a novice dog here, the last of the medium dogs. 34.2 and clear is the time to beat. And it's good so far, really good. Really tight turns, wasting no space at all. Perfect combination at the moment between Handler and Dog, between Stephanie and Skedaddle. How about the weaves? Shouted weaves, through you go. And right up with the clock as well. Can she get inside that 34.2? Right up there, the moment, up and down over the dog walk, safely over the dog walk, through they go, 32.6. Stephanie Best, Skedaddle, the best in the medium class. Very nice class act, this pairing. Look at the effort Stephanie's putting in to keep up with it all. Go on, she's saying, and he did. Great effect, uh, winning that by uh, over one and a half seconds. Here we go then with the agility result. Terrific from uh, Stephanie Best, Robin Sinclair there. The two clear rounds. And the combined result coming up for you now against Stephanie and Robin, one and two. Uh, excellent competition and quick and clear does the business. So the jumps have gone up, it's exactly the same course. The only thing has changed is the dimensions because we're now moving up a height in dogs. So we're now for the intermediate dogs. First of the intermediates, Pippa two-year-old border collie Ray Lambert from Driffield in North Yorkshire the handler first of six intermediate dogs you, you, you sometimes get a dog that and that is a instant instant elimination that is it not to Graham very very unfortunate he knew exactly what he'd done as soon as the dog had done it just as you say just took his attention off the dog the dog thought that's the next one I'm going for that and unfortunately it wasn't as I say oh, but things I just <laughs> need people to understand how difficult this is in this environment. It yeah. is so difficult to remember where you're going, remember where you need to be, remember where the dog's going, what commands so I need to give, and mistakes happen in a flash. But Indeed they do, and Pippa, a lovely dog, but a bit on the wild side, and poor Ray hands on his head when he realised what had happened. 
that's so unfortunate that that that, that, that really is but um, plenty more to come just two years of age is, is pippa a learning crafts experience Pepe, four-year-old border collie, Amanda Ellerton from Stafford, the handler. First time competing at Crufts, and Pepe loves to compete, but does tend to get very excited. It's great. Just great to hear the conversation between the handler and the dog, between Amanda and Pepe. Yep, I see what they mean about Pepe being excitable. It's all good, though. Giving it absolutely everything and enjoying every step. Pepe and Amanda. It's still clear and it's still very, very quick. That is brilliant through the wheeze. High stepping, quick, elegant, in and out of the tunnel, up and down over the top. Well, good contact at the end with 34.3. And clear. That will set the standard. Amanda Everton and Pepe. It will. It gives everybody else now a target they need to chase, so we can expect to see some fantastic uh, rounds now. People know they're going to have to chase that brilliant time. Seven Border Collie, three years of age. Sarah Kitchen from a Peter Lee in County Durham. Sweet little dog, this one, lots of attitude. And they believe will relish the buzz of what is an increasingly growing crowd here on the first day of Crufts on Gum Dog Day. What a young dog this. Sarah's a very experienced competitor, so had numerous uh, really, really good dogs. This is another one, only three years of age. Bearing in mind, you can't compete with these dogs until they're at least 18 months. To be here at three is a great achievement. Come on, can she make this dog walk? Yes, she does. Well, according to me, she did, and according to the judge, she did as well. Brilliant, well done. It is well done, it's very well done. Sarah Kitching and Seven, clear and quickest so far, 33.5. A really high quality competition going on here. Absolutely responding and delivering on the green carpet. Here's Bam, working sheepdog, five years of age, Lindsay Spring from Bristol. Likes the sound of her own voice, this one. I see what you mean, or I should say I hear what you mean. Bam, Bam, thank you, ma'am. We definitely know that Bam is in the building. Oh, dear, wrong course there. Wrong course. I'm forgetting Nick Jones. Five faults there. But still, plenty to go for. Yeah, that's a good round. What a shame about those those faults. 37.4 and, and the five faults, Brad. Yes, it was uh, such a shame there. As I say, just the five faults ruining uh, another great round. Uh, the refusal on the jump before the weaves. Uh, picking up those five faults, but still very, very nice. Marita Ogilvy from Bourne. C Cicada, Border Collie. Two years of age, first time at Cross for Cicada, competing in two events at just two years old. This is a terrific dog with a fantastic career already launched. Lovely stuff. Picking up lots of time between the jumps of all. Really concentrated. 21 seconds. This could well threaten the best if they keep it going. In and out of the weaves. Little tight front. Left hander there through the tongue. This is going to be quick. Up and down over the dog wall. That's really good. 33.4. And that is first position for Cicada, the two-year-old Border Collie, and Marita Ogilvy. Just keeps getting better and better, as you say. Once they know what they've got to beat, they just, they just think, right, I've got to go for this. And look at that really good striding there down onto the end of the dog walk. Lovely running contact there. Mike Organ and Mika, working sheepdog, five years of age. The last dog in the intermediate section, 33.4. And clear is the time to beat. And Mike is going to have to go some, as is Micah, to beat that. To my eye, that's a very good first 15 seconds. Oh. And it's an elimination as well. Saw the tunnel, went for it. Poor Mike was trying to point the correct way. 
dog went through the tunnel and now we'll try and repair the damage but um, as we always say it's not the dog's fault it's never the dog's fault Graham I'm gonna say it for no you I'm, I'm glad you said it Jim because it, uh, you're right it never is the dog's fault um, it's either a lack of training or the dog just picks up the wrong signal or they the handler gives it the wrong signal um, but as you say he's having a he's having a great time barking his enjoyment all the way around <laughs> So Marita Ogilvy and Cicada, faultless and in the 33s, and Sarah Kitching, runner-up in that section, and over the overall, again Marita Ogilvy, top of the pile, and really, really intense competition. First of the large dogs, Lynette Chant from Bournemouth and Monkey, Border Collie. They're already underway. Loves her agility, does Monkey. First of the large dogs. Lou possibly lost a bit of time there. The A frame beckoned and had to pull her back round in Lynette. Again, wondered, wondered about the wisdom of going into the tunnel. That is the right way. 23 seconds. Might just have dropped a few precious seconds. They're not being in total coordination, but it's still very good. And I love that's a great finish at the end. Did it? Yes. They did make contact at the end of the dog work. 34.2 and clear. And setting the standard, Graham. It does. You talk about a few precious seconds, Jim. In this competition, it's a few precious hundredths of a second. Correct. It's that close. This is banter. Shannon Spring for the handler from Swanley. Two years of age, Border Collie. Only a baby. But so proud they are to get to two-year-old banter here. And there go we go. On, I'll just you, talk, you talk talk us around the, the class course, here. So we're coming up towards the seesaw. It's a long jump, sharp right turn. And then this is quite difficult. You've got to push the dog out there. You've got to bring them right back in to the backside of that jump and then over the A-frame. Another one. And, of course, you've got, the, you've got the tunnel there calling the dogs into it. She manages to uh, do that really, really well. She's a very experienced competitor. As Shannon competed with Team GB with some of her older dogs. But she's doing very well there. Just a touch wide on that one, but it's got plenty of ground speed here. Up and over that. Lovely running contact and a great finish. 33, 257 puts him into the lead. That's a really good round, expertly described uh, by Graham. What he doesn't know about agility just isn't worth knowing, and that's uh, first place at the moment then for Shannon Springford. Steely, three-year-old border collie, Joe Gleed, experienced uh, handler, always produces a good dog, so Joe from nearby Coventry, first time at Crufts for Steely, kind, gentle and sweet girl, and like all the dogs here, loves the agility and especially relishes the tunnels. Over the Yumu jump, very, very elegantly, Steely. Looked at the tunnel, not this time, on you go, Steely, in and out. <laughs> And again, this is right up there. Remember the time to beat at the moment is 33.2. And Steely is looking very competitive to go close to that as things stand. Big leap at the end, 33.1. First place, you talked about the hundreds. You're dead right. Well, it's brilliant. You, you actually thought this dog's not moving that, that quickly, but it was obviously covering the ground in really, really good time. Great big jump there as well. Fantastic. This is Nicola's uh, young dog, Panache, three-year-old border collie, Nicola Wildman from Preston, the handler. First time at Crufts for Panache and uh, working with a bit more settled in the agility ring. Three clear rounds so far and all in the 33s and 34s. So no room for error here. Nice. Nice. Nicola's not going to be far out of the mix. Always very, very competitive with whatever dog she's running. She always gives 110% total concentration. Waits for the dog to pick up the wheels before moving away. Round this one into the tunnel. Into the tunnel and through that tunnel in an absolute. This is going to be really close as well. 33.3 and clear then for, for Nicola. Good enough for third place. Excellent.
And there we go. Great big jump. Ears up, tail up, having a good time. Waiting for me, Mum. Come and get my toy for me. <laughs> and there it is. There goes the toy. That's the reward for doing it well. <laughs> Penultimate large dog, Max. Working sheepdog, seven years of age. Hayley Tyndall, the handler from Market Raisin. Bred by the family, Max. First time, though, at Crufts. Hillary has been here before, though. Never quite sure what to expect from these uh, first-timers at Crufts. But again, this has been an absolutely thrilling competition. Four clear rounds thus far. Amazing. And all up there in the 33s and 34s. Shame. Got to go back, go through from the right-hand side into the weeds. And that little, and there's five more. Just had that pole off. Just uh, unraveled a bit towards the end of the round, unfortunately, for Hayley and for Max. But as you can see there, even though he'd had a couple of faults at the very end, the first thing he gets is his toy because he's, he's been a good boy. So, great dog. You can see the protectors on the dog's uh, legs there. Uh, nothing wrong with that. It's just protecting what is possibly sticking out, dew claws or something like that. It's just say it prevents further injury. Last large dog, Jane Powell and Noddy, Border Collie, five years of age from Newborough in Staffordshire, started competing in agility in 2021 and absolutely loves it. 33.1 and clear is the time that Jane and Noddy are aiming at. <laughs> Noddy wanting everybody to know, yes, I'm here, yes, I'm at the famous Crux, yes, I'm enjoying the green carpet on the opening day and it's good so far a really good 20 seconds can't see any time lost or dropped at all what about the weeds in from the right hand side that's good tail flapping against the poles there in and out sharp left hander towards up and down towards the tunnel it's going to be pretty close to that 33 you know up and down over the dog walk 34.9 34.9 and that's an excellent round fifth as things stand lovely round there as you say look at that two footing through the weeds probably the most efficient way they can do it and a great big jump over there. yes joe gleed and steely that by the way the kennel club named the full name of Devonjum ready to steal is the kennel club names and uh, look at all those clear rounds and look how little there was to separate them what a fine competition and here are the combined results uh, nicola joe and jane the top three pretty much if you have a fault down those uh, down those rankings you go I probably wouldn't be here, to be honest, if it weren't for Ellie. Every day, I put my life in Milo's paws. Chewie never left his side. Without him, I wouldn't have my husband. And she's still here today. Because of the dog. He's everything, not just to me, to my whole family. Day in, day out, dogs change lives. That's why, for 150 years, the Kennel Club and its members have been making a positive difference for dogs and their owners. We guide new owners, helping them to find the right dogs, brought into the world by responsible and caring breeders who want the very best for them. Giving puppies like Barney, a flat-coated retriever, the best possible chance to lead a healthy, happy life. Thanks to DNA testing, we've eradicated diseases such as CLAD, an inherited blood disorder in Irish setters. 
So Sky, Marta and Pear, as well as all Irish setters, can now lead healthier lives. There's always more to be done, which is why we continue to lead the way in helping breeders eradicate inherited diseases, improving dog health for generations to come. And we do all of this because when you have healthy dogs living with loving owners, the real magic of dog ownership begins. We're helping to build that unique bond between dog and owner through a range of training and activities that bring joy in the best and even the most difficult of times. Hayley lost her sister, but spending time with her dog Ellie, doing the activities they love, agility and heel work to music, got her through her grief. They've even been to Crufts, our most famous event for anybody who loves dogs. And thanks to Petlog's microchipping database, we're making sure that your canine companions have the best chance of being reunited with their loving families, should the worst happen. Like Jazz, who was reunited with her family after eight long and heartbreaking months. <laughs> So thank you for being on this journey as we work hard to make sure we continue to make a positive difference for dogs and their owners. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen, amazing 150 years of the Kennel Club. 2023 is a very, very special year indeed. Okay, it is now presentation time. Please give a very warm welcome to do our presentations, Fiona Hope, the CEO of You Move. Okay, so this is our Crufts Novice Cup Final Agility. Uh, and in the small, the winner, handler Lily Woodford with Finney Simon Abbey of Chumley Lily. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And... Our winner in the medium, the Crofts Novice Cup final in the agility in the medium category, handler Stephanie Best with Z Atomic Spy Scorfetti. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Our winners of the intermediate, the Crofts Novice Cup final agility, handler Marita Oglide with Darley Falls Cryptic Enigma. And in the large, the Crufts Novice Cup Final Agility winner, Handler Joe Gleed with Devon Gem ready to steal. Okay, we are now going to bring in uh, the winners and the runners up in the overall category. Uh, so the competition from this morning, the jumping combined with the agility from just a few moments ago, uh, those scores are put together to give us first and second place. So see, please give them a big round of applause as we bring them out for the presentation. Okay, firstly, the Crufts Novice Cup final winner in the small, in first place, with Lyco Satira, Final Frontier, handler Matthew Burdett. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Well done, thank you. And our runner up in second place, with Finai Simon, Abbey of Chiltner Lily, handler Lily Woodford. Next up in the medium class, the Crufts Novice Cup final winner, Zed Atomic Spice Corfagian handler Stephanie Best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And our runner up in the medium Crufts Novice Cup final, handler Robin Sinclair with Breezy Brook Daredevil. Thank you. 
And then on to the intermediate group, the Crufts Novice Cup final winner. And it is Darley Falls Cryptic Enigma with handler Marita Oglive. Our intermediate runner up. Handler Sarah Kitching with Indie Storm Lucky Seven. And our final group is, of course, the large category and the Crufts Novice Cup final winner with run by Do It With Passion handler Nicola Wildman. Thank you. And our runner up in second place in the large handler Joe Gleed with Devon Jen ready to steal. And now, ladies and gentlemen, give them a huge round of applause. It is lap of honor time. Wonderful. Next up is Kamik. Easy. easy. <laughs> well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. Round. First up, the weave. weave. Nice quick turns. Round it's turn. perfect start. Round the so spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. And yeah, faultless so far, on. but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kamik, yes. our compact SUV, Ooh. our best in show. Skoda.
Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, we are just setting up the agility course for our next agility competition. That is on the way in just a few moments' time. We've also got flyball later this afternoon as well. It all gets very loud, very exciting for the flyball a bit later on. Now, something very, very important to tell you about, ladies and gentlemen, a chance for you to make a difference just by casting your vote, because the Kennel Club Hero Dog Awards are back for 2023, celebrating the unique relationship that we have with our dogs and how dogs can change lives. Let's find out more about the finalists for the Hero Dog 2023. Asher is a bi-detection dog. Not only has he overcome what I'm sure was really quite a traumatic part, but he's used his incredible sense of smell to save human lives. He was the first step. He was the dog that would tell me whether a disease had a particular odour that a dogs and other dogs could be trained to find in the future. The work Asher has done is saving and will continue to save thousands or even millions of lives in the future. I think Bertie's a hero dog because he inspires me to keep on going and sleeping outside. Night Bertie. Day 6, 11, 335. I've been raising money for Course Rescue so they can build a shelter for the dogs so they can keep them in. Bertie has been helping me um, by sleeping out with me. He's helped me through those stages where I've been like, oh, it's such a cold night, I don't really want to sleep out tonight. I don't think it's just me raising the money, we're both raising the money. Stella's a hero because she's shown that Staffordshire Water Terriers are amazing dogs. Stella's a rescue dog from the RSPCA. She was the first Staffordshire Water Terrier in the country to become a police dog. She's found thousands of pounds in cash. She's found numerous drugs. She's found three guns, so very, very proud of her. For us, it's so rewarding to see her in such a positive light, especially as a Staffordshire Water Terrier. Stella's living the proof that in the right hands with the right training, they're incredible dogs. Because Albert has so much joy, that really helps me with managing my chronic pain. He has completely changed my life. Albert is three years old. He is from the amazing charity, Dogs for Good. It's easy to feel quite down and to find it really difficult to do normal day-to-day -day activities because of the pain. But Albert is helping me <laughs> with my studies and my ambition to become a solicitor. I wouldn't have been able to do that without him by my side. I would certainly uh, call Lucy a hero. For myself and the whole family, Lucy seems to be the bond that has held us all together through a very difficult time now. Lily was diagnosed with leukaemia about two months after, after uh, Beauty came into her for, forever home. Beauty is my best friend and she's always been by my side for everything. She means the world to me because if I didn't have her, I wouldn't be as happy as I was right now. So there we are, some incredible stories of how dogs change lives and your vote really can make a difference. So head online to crufts.org.uk forward slash HDA, that's crufts.org.uk forward slash HDA and cast your vote for the Kennel Club Hero Dog Awards 2023. If there's one particular story there that's really captured your heart, then please do make a vote. The winner will be announced on Sunday evening and the voting closes at 4 p.m. on Sunday afternoon. Okay, we're just gonna get things set here in the main arena. We'll be back in just a moment with more live agility. We'll see you then.
Next up is Kamik. <laughs> well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. First up, the weave. Nice quick turn. It's a perfect start. So spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident run up to the seesaw. Yeah, faultless so far, but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda can make a compact SUV. Best in shape. Skoda. I love food. I'm a good boy.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so as you can see, uh, we're just getting ready for our next agility competition. Our handlers are just walking the course. This, of course, will be the first time they've seen the agility course, so it's important that they uh, get the chance to walk the course fully. And while they're doing that, I'm just going to tell you about the Kennel Club Charitable Trust, who I'm sure you're aware of their incredible work. And you may remember, if you were here last year at Crufts, the Trust, with support from the Kennel Club, launched its Appeal for Ukraine. And since then, an incredible... And hello again from Jim Rosenthal and Graham Partridge. Welcome, or welcome back to the opening day of Crufts 2023. We're about to see the second round of the Intermediate and Large Championship. This morning we had the jumping, now we have the agility. We will combine the results to decide who goes to the final. Let me just remind you to qualify. Handler and Dog must have won a championship event in the last 12 months. If you get eliminated, you are out of the final. And these are all top-grade dogs. That means top-grade seven dogs. Graham, you had a little look at, uh, at the course. I will ask you to talk us around a complete round. Just, just give us your overall general impressions, could you? I think it's a great course. It's got a little bit of everything in it. It's got a little bit of speed. Um, and as you would expect uh, for uh, one of the highest competition, or highest level competitions at Crufts, uh, there's a little bit of work in it as well. They're going to have to just be on, on their dogs the whole way around. If they relax, it's going to be game over. And listen, despite some pretty foul weather conditions, lots of snow around here in the in, in the Midlands, there's a very healthy, growing crowd here in, in the main arena. Our judge is uh, Gary Murphy. Yeah, Gary is one of the most respected judges that we have in this country, uh, and he's been rewarded with judging the championship here at Cruff. Uh, he's set some great courses, he does a great job. He's one of those unassuming judges, which is what a judge should be. You shouldn't see him, you shouldn't notice him, but he does have a big part to play in the competition in designing the course. OK, first of uh, 18 large dogs. Cop, Chris Curtin. Fitness coach uh, for the Kennel Club Team GB. Four years of age is Cop. Born in Poland, now lives in and competes for Wales. And won a ticket via the Welsh Championships. Cop, the board, the board of Collie. Just making good contact at the bottom of the A-frame. Little right-hander through the, through the tunnel. Quite a complicated technical course at the end there. The weaves are good. Setting the standard early. First of 18 large dogs up over the dog walk. Good contact at the end of it. Slight hesitation that might cost them precious hundreds of a seconds, we have to say here. And a 39.4 and clear for Chris and for Cop. It was, and I would say that was probably quite a tactical round, quite steady. Um, it just made sure that he got everything. He knows this is a tricky course and there are going to be some eliminations, so he's making sure of his place. You're looking at Kiss, seven-year-old border collie, Sean Inningworth, consistent handler from Crawley. Distinctive uh, red hair to Sean. And Kiss, anything could happen with this one, says Sean. Across debutant. Slapping the poles with her tail as she goes through them. Great sight that. Good tight turn at the top, up and down, over the dog walk. When next? That's next. And a little full 360 there. That could cost her precious time. And that's a that's a tricky old finish, that, isn't it? 42.1 and second place, Graham. Yeah, as I say, it's got plenty in it, this course, but uh, it is a very fair test for them all. This is Fee, nine-year-old uh, border collie, Jemmy Walchester from Stoke-on-Trent. Easy dog to train and to live with. Yes, consistency very much the key here. On a, on a calm, hopefully a clear round with no major errors. And thus far, uh, Fee is delivering. 
Joining us for the first time, a reminder that they lay a new carpet every time here at Crofts, and uh, the previous carpet helped uh, lots and lots of dog clubs all around the UK. And Fee making steady progress. And Fee 42.6, but most importantly, Graham, clear. Most importantly, clear, yep. Uh, really, really nice. Uh, round here as you say such a tight turn coming around there but Gemma and Fee really nice round looking at Falcon working sheepdog Mike Bendel in great form at these just loves agility workaholic is Falcon Falcon this is really good from Falcon and a real good opening 15 seconds. Mike from Bristol in terrific form, this combination. And the next dog, Graham, I'd like to ask you to talk us all the way through and they'll lose time around the, uh, the tunnel there. And unfortunately, compromise the error. And when you see the judges cross hands there, the Gary Murphy, that means elimination. <laughs> And it's still immense fun. It's still immense fun for, for Falcon. And take take your moment in the spotlight, Falcon and Mike. Yeah, as I say, I think I'd probably put the mockers on this by saying this dog have been in great form. <laughs> you see, notice there that the dog's uh, got ball patch on its on its uh, back. It dog's just got alopecia, just the same as humans are. Doesn't preclude it from doing it. It's not in any pain. It's just got alopecia. This is Vibe, seven-year-old Border Collie and Becky Hodson from Peterborough. Go on, Graham, talk us through this round in your own inimitable style. So the start is towards the edge of the arena, which is uh, not very common here at Crofts, onto the seesaw, through the tar, and then they've got to go round the back of the next jump. They do that. Now she'll send the dog to find the entrance to the tunnel. She waits for it, collects it, takes it up over the A-frame. Now she changes sides, and now a nice little circle here. This is the difficult bit. Oh, and as I say, they're so caught up with trying to send the dog into the weaves, and the handler really wants to be on the other side. She does that very nicely by doing a, executing a blind turn there, and round the back of that jump, she just pulled away, took the dog with her. As you say, there's plenty in this, but a very nice finish. She's just got to keep the dog's confidence up here. That's another tricky pick, that jump really does get in the way, and a really good effort on a, quite a tricky course. Indeed. Very tricky course, that one. Uh, 44.2 for, for Becky and for Vibe. Heather Grant from Bangor in Northern Ireland. Emily, eight-year-old uh, golden retriever, working, kind of loving dog, this one. Qualified therapy dog as well. Visits, visits care homes and hospitals. And, uh, needs to, needs to uh, deliver here at Grusso on the on the opening day. Very appropriate appearance for Emily on Gum Dog Day, the traditional opening Thursday of Grusso. <laughs> oh, top marks for style. Top marks for that. I'll do it my way, says Emily. <laughs> Yeah, this is excellent. <laughs> and it's about, listen, it's about enjoyment, Graham, it's about entertainment too, and, and uh, that is proper canine entertainment. It is, Jim, it is. I say, dog has a great time. <laughs> and this is, this is proper, proper showing off now. Look, the head's starting to go up higher and higher until it gets to the end. Yeah, <laughs> loving it. Look at that, I swear that dog's smiling, you know. <laughs> jukebox, seven years of age today. Happy birthday, uh, Jukebox. Border College, Gemma Haycock from nearby Northampton. A giant uh, clown at home. Just a little uh, five faults, I think. Uh, um, went too close to the tyre. And uh, missed the contact point at the end of the A-frame, too. So, so. Jukebox not actually hitting all the right notes here. 
as things stand. But hey, it's uh, it's it's his birth it's his birthday, so we'll we'll cut jukebox a little bit of slack, shall we? No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> should have got that contact. He should have got the contact. You're a hard so, man at times, eh? Beneath, just, beneath that, that endearing exterior. Heart. So, Go on. just want to demonstrate here how far we've come. A few years ago, that was a solid obstacle. Now, it's a breakaway, and that is purely... They've introduced that obstacle to uh, for the safety of the dog, so it's not going to hit the solid object. Duca, six-year-old border collie. From Marita Ogilvy. Duke has competed three times at Crofts and competed with Team GB six times as well. A good, good pedigree, good form. Six years of age, Duca, the Border Collie. At the moment, the quickest time, 39.4. And clear. Well up with that time as well, but this... this uh, as I, say, I call it complicated at, at part of the course at the end there. Good tight twisting, well up with it, 39.5. Just outside it, second place for Marita and for Duca. Fine effort. Made it look very, very easy, and as we've seen, uh, it's not. Some people find it easier than others, but uh, it's, it's, you've just got to keep your head and experience that these big events counts for an awful lot here, Jim. Shape. Border Collie, five years of age, Martin Reed from Leamington Spa. Very successful handler is Martin, and this combination finished third in the uh, jumping this morning. Just to say the difference between jumping and agility, uh, no seesaw, A-frame, or dog walk in the jumping this morning. Good style and good speed through the weaves. Where next? Tight left-hander. Dog walk. That's good. This will be there or thereabouts as well. Clear round. Tight turn at the end. Really good. 38.1. First in the 38s then for Martin and for Shape. Competed many times in this event and looking good again. He is. I'm not going to put the mockers on him, but uh, that's a great shot. Dog's coming through the tyre. Look, just the dog just powers through and that's where you pick up your time you carry on right the way to the end Donna Javi by border collie six years of age from Peebles in the Scottish borders vibes first time competing at Crufts really proud to be here and really proud is Donna for, for, for Vibe taking her so far and so far, Vibe very, very happy on his opening day at the biggest dog show in the world. Sending out uh, good vibrations from the uh, green carpet to all of us up in the commentary box and to all of you watching, I would imagine, just a slight bit of hesitation. Steered away from the jump. It's still good, it's still quick. It's really quick, you know, it's 38.0. It's quick enough to be number one for Donna Jarvie and for Vibe. <laughs> oh, I'm laughing, Jim, because I know how happy Donna will be with that. I mean, what a great, great round. This is the round that you hope you're always going to get here at Crofts, and she's done it. Very nice. Look at that turn into the weaves. Sita, border collie, four years of age, Ola Kordas from Warsaw in Poland. Got eliminated uh, from the jumping, and that means that uh, these two cannot compete uh, in the final later on today, and picking up faults early on in the round, Ola and Sita. And a few, and a, a few more again. They will learn from this experience, of course. And I can't tell you how much it means to everybody competing here at Cross. This is the goal for everybody who enters this sport of agility to have their moment, to have their 40 odd seconds um, um, at, at Cross. It's a very, very decent time though for Ola and, and for Sita. Yeah, you said they'll learn, and they will. Both dog and handler will learn about this experience. And I think she got eliminated this morning and decided that she was just going to go, let the dog have its head let the dog enjoy itself uh, and it will serve her well for the future.
Legacy Border Collie, three years of age, Dave Munnings, a hugely successful handler, runner-up in the jumping this morning, so this is a combination really to watch. Legacy, a first-timer. He's got a couple of tickets as well. They're not parking tickets, those, by the way. They're the tickets that you really want to have in your possession. That's a good first 25 seconds of, of, of this round. Anything up there, remember, the quickest time is 38.0. Set by uh, Donna Jarvie. That's the time to beat. You've got to keep clear and clean. It's going to be well in there. It's going to be well. It's not only going to be well in there. It's going to be inside it. 37.9. Dave Munnings and Legacy first in the 37s. And some really great shots there of both dog and handler. And it just shows you you know, the work that the handler has to put in to be in exactly the right place to help the dog at all times. And as you say, made it look easy. Um, really great job. Well done, Dave. Beautiful dog, this one. Agent, the border collie, handsome dog, lovely face. Sean Illingworth, our regular at Crufts. Agent knows his way around at this place. Oh, dear. Didn't know his way, though. Over the long jump, picked up five volts. Great sound effects. Sorry, Sorry Graham. Great sound effects as ever going through the uh, going through the tunnel and great pictures as Graham has pointed out. Yep, nice turn around there onto the dog walk. She's just going to make sure that she gets his contact, which she does. She doesn't want to get an elimination at this point. She wants to be in with a chance of qualifying for the final. And she's done that very well. Very experienced handler, Jim. Into the top six they go, picking up the five faults. Actually, into the top eight. Okay, so. Lemon Border Collie, six years of age. Nara Cuddy, third last year. Definitely a combination to watch this one. That long jump. With these, <laughs> might just have made a little bit of contact at the end of it. It was a great jumping style over the long jump for sure. Wanted to go right, went left. That's the right way. Well done, Nara. Just here talking all the time, Nara to, to Lemon. Constant little bit of banter going on there. And Lemon responded in great style as well. This will be very, very quick. This good, very quick indeed. 36.9. Right then, we've gone from the 38s to the 37s. Now we are in the 36s. Excellent work, Nara Cuddy and Lemon. Another border collie, Clippy, four years of age, Dalton Meredith from Bristol. Runners up last year, two tickets this. Finished the first in the jumping this morning. The winners of the jumping this morning now looking to do the same in the agility this afternoon. And a reminder, combined results, and then we will have the grand final later on today on Gundog Day, the opening day of Crufts 2023. Ah, missed the weaver, oh dear. Oh, what a shame. Elimination for Dalton and uh, for Clippy. And that uh, means that'll be the last we'll see of them today, Graham. It is, unfortunately, as you say, has to go in between those first two poles, misses it. The dog comes out. He looks as though he's going to take it back. But as he takes the dog away, it sees the other jump and does it, which is a jump out of order equals elimination. And uh, sadly, we won't be seeing him tonight. Last year's winner, Ewan Patterson, crazy, border collie, seven years of age, highly rated, one of the favourites, came fourth in the world out of 128 at the end of last year. This morning, finished fourth in the jumping. I got the impression, though, that they had plenty in hand. Ewan Patterson and crazy. It's a good opening, 20 seconds. Crazy, good speed, good accuracy. Uh, through the weaves as well. Check, 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 check. check. Round you come. And just a no. mistake. Oh dear. A mistake at the end of the dog walk. And that'll be elimination. That's a shock. Last year's winner eliminated. Ewan Patterson and Crazy.
Well, I think I've just lost all my money, Jim. Uh, my my <laughs> money was on, on Dalton this. Meredith and Crazy for uh, for a place as well. Um, tis a shock. Very you won't take your, put them. your hand in the pocket for a cup of coffee, let alone betting on dogs, Graham. You're looking at Alan Bray, very experienced handler. Ticket, four-year-old border collie. Again, the tyre that Graham pointed out earlier on, and that's five, uh, five faults for Alan and for Ticket. Nothing has gone through the weeds quicker than that, I don't think. On you go, Graham. No, no, well, I, I very unkindly re <laughs> referred to him as Peter Pan earlier on today. You've done it twice it's, today uh, now. It, it is. Uh, yeah, well, I just wanted to make the point, but no. <laughs> and my point being is that Alan is very experienced. He's been at the top for so long, and how he does it, I don't know. But he is a, a really great guy. There are a few Peter Pans in these parts. Don't worry about that. There you go. The seesaw must be touching the ground before it gets off. And again, that's as much for safety as anything else. Last of the... Last of the large dogs, then. Shannon Springford and uh, Fernie Nigella. Border Collie, five years of age. A wild child is the description that loves life. Fernie Nigella from Swanley. And knowing that... Uh, it's 36.9 to beat, but of course, knowing that uh, we are qualifying for a grand final tonight, so they want to be quick and want to be clean and want to get into the top ten, really. That's right, isn't it, Graham? Yes, Jim. Yep, yep. As you say, it's uh, they just want to get there. As you say, it's the top 50% up to a maximum of 20. Um, but uh, it promises to be a great final, and hopefully, we're going to see Shannon in it picked up the five fox there but uh, again you can see a really good time great style there she goes shannon going past the dog trying to get in front so that she can be there for the next obstacle and again look at that style look at just steadies up oh and that's where she got the five great competition great competition jim So there we go, and look at look at the how things really speeded up as well. Only one to the 36s was Nara Cuddy, all qualifying for uh, this evening, of course. A large result that one. Through to to the top ten, and things will get rounded up, and then we will have our field for uh, the grand final tonight, later on today. OK, on we go then. First of 17 intermediate dogs. Fate Border Collie, six years of age, stepping his best. A big striding dog is Fate. Setting us off first of 17 intermediate dogs then in the Agility Championship. We have had the jumping this morning. We're looking at the agility and then we'll crunch the numbers really for the final later on today. Nothing really to criticise in this round so far. Well done, Stephanie, and well done, Fate. 38.1 and a clear round. Follow that the rest of you. You're right, she set the marker. Always oh, good. First dog round, if they can put in a really nice clear round, it does actually put pressure on your opponent. Imp, Border Collie, nine years of age. Nine years old with a first-timer at Crufts. Terrific effort, Ian Pat, the handler from Warsash, down south, near Southampton. Be very happy with the first 20 seconds or so of this little swerve to the right, but then correctly through the weeds, tunnel. Up at the top end of the course as we sit now, dog walk, beautifully done. Goodness me, the quality of this uh, competition already is 
pretty breathtaking. What's it going to be like later on? 40.1 and clear. Good enough for second place. It might be slightly compromised on the time, Graham. Not sure. Well, again, it's a bit of tactics coming in here, but Ian uh, settled down a lot from the first round. It is nerve-wracking here. There's, it really does focus the mind appearing uh, in this main arena, which is an absolutely great atmosphere. Dashi, Border Collie, ready to go, five years of age. Lila Zakvatovic from Fleet, the handler. Dashi, ready, underway. Now we've got very, very great action style over the long jump. A frame looking pretty good as well. The right hander uh, through the tunnel. Perfection in the first 20 seconds. They want the next 20 seconds to be as good as well. Again, I love going through that tunnel. Dog walk. Skidded over the dog walk. I thought so, but just missed the contact point at the end of it. That'll be five faults. Oh, dear. And that's elimination, taking the wrong course. It's really interesting sometimes, Graham, as though the dog realises it's made a mistake and perhaps the concentration level drops. I'm not looking into the mind, but... No, no, no. It's, it's not actually the dog that's thinking about it. It's the handler. The gotcha. handler sees the dog make a mistake. Um, or miss a contact, and then they're thinking about uh, why and what th their mind's five seconds behind them, if you know what I mean, rather than concentrating on the moment. But well done. Pepe, border collie, four years of age, Amanda Ellerton, the handler from Stafford. <laughs> and fourth in the jumping, so right up there, but picking up um, a five faults early on, failing to make contact at the end of the, the seesaw. Amanda Ellerton and Pepe. First time as a Cruft, intelligent and a very fast dog as well. Just a little bit too fast over the seesaw and for Amanda's liking. Graham, absolutely right though. We always have to look at the handler and never at the dog. I was just trying to read the dog's mind, so what a clever <laughs> bloke I was, you know. And you, and you threw me straight under the bus. Well, you. <laughs> You see some of these people and you do think they're in each other's <laughs> minds, you know, it's... Uh... <laughs> That's it. And there we go, this is the, the fault on the seesaw. The seesaw must be touching the ground with the dog on it in order to, evolve a fo ev uh, in order to uh, avoid a fault. And unfortunately, he came off before. Great sight. Kruger Rand, Australian working Kelpie, four years of age, fairly young, was very steady in the jumping this morning. Bethany Todd, the handler from Wharton, near Morecambe Bay. Love to see these dogs in action at Crufts. And again, with uh, plenty of improving to do, and Bethany, great encouragement there. Good boy, good boy. And this is quite a young dog, and that's what you want. You want, you heard her say just now, good boy, good boy. She's just improving that dog's confidence. The dog's happier now. Oh, and picks up an elimination there for going over the wrong jump. Ah, that's a shame. So she'll just correct it. Yep, and now she can praise the dog. Brilliant. Yep. Yes, that, that round was, look, was looking really, really promising until the elimination. And, and sadly for Bethany and, and sadly for Kruger and sadly for all of you love Australian working kelpies, we won't see them again today anyway. Great working breed, bred to work, and they just love their agility. Here we go with Gamble, another border collie, five years of age, Stephen Richardson, the handler from Wigton in Cumbria. Proud winners of a couple of tickets to get here. That's great over the A-frame. This is shaping up nicely. Got to enter the Weezer from the, the uh, right-hand side. Terrific sight, those white paws going through the weaves. That's the way to do that uh, particular jump over the dog wall. Missed the end again, just too quick. That's a, a couple of dogs that have done that, just missed the contact point. Run, you have to make contact with a white bit at the end of the dog wall. So a really quick time, a shame about the five faults, but uh, they're into third place at the moment. Don't write them off completely. And there we go. Just, just watch the handler here. Don't watch the dog. Trust the dog to go into the tunnel, picks it up at the other end. Great, great effort saving that measure, sir. Star, another border collie, seven years of age. Star Lee Gibson, the handler from Shrewsbury. 
won the jumping this morning. Uh, Lee Gibson, respected judge and competitor, so surely a combination to watch this. The winner of the intermediate jumping competition that started it all off here at Crofts on the opening day. Yes, a star seven years of age, reasonably experienced. Looks as though star, she knows this game. Really good contact at the end of the dog with a really good tight turn too. And picked up the five faults, but they're still right in there. 38.7 is a very, very good time. Uh, fourth place, five faults. Yep, but he avoided the elimination. Great turn into the weaves. You saw Lee just cutting about the dog telling him, come on, let's go a bit quicker. Q Border Collie and Laura Pye from Bristol. Runners up in the jumping this morning. Can they carry this form into the, this afternoon's agility? Fine looking dog is uh, cute, beautifully marked. And this is the difficult bit that has been all day. See, they've got to send the dog in. She's got to get in front of the dog. She'll want to pick up the dog on the other side, which she does beautifully. Puts her in the right position. No, it doesn't. Let the dog just drift away from her. She should have been calling the dog in. Such a shame. Well, you picked that round up at exactly the right point. Um, sadly, Laura Fire and Q not particularly on the same wavelength there. They will complete the round, as always. And it can be unforgiving this, you know, can just one slight misinterpretation. Oh, that means elimination, and that means the end of their day today at Crufts. Laura Pye and Q. And there we are, crossed hands by the judge means elimination. Okay, so let's go. We have Natasha Runners up last year, Natasha Wise and Pebbles, really popular dog, loves Crufts. Ten years of age is Pebbles. We've seen a lot of them over the years. Uh, they cannot uh, compete tonight because they were eliminated this morning. It won't stop these two putting on a show this afternoon. They can win the agility, but they cannot go forward to the grand final later on today. But a really good combination. Shouted tunnel, tunnel. So that's, uh, yeah, not heard that one that often, if I'm honest. You can use whatever command you want to, but it's yes. whatever you've taught the dog, and whatever you decide to teach your dog a command, you have to be consistent. But you had a great round there by Natasha. 37, 7, 5, 5, puts them into the lead, Jim. Yeah, what a shame we can't see more of them today, but they got in very, very good shape, as we said, to win this competition. And great vision and great images going through the tyre for Natasha Wise and for Pebbles. Beryl, 11-year-old uh, Border Collie, what a fit dog this one is, 11 years of age, Handler uh, Alan Short, and that just underlines, you know, do agility, you will have a fit dog, Graham. It certainly helps, Jim, I mean, regular exercise, good food, etc., etc., but uh, if ever you want uh, an advert for how much good and how good it is for your dogs, look at this dog, 11 years of age, still performing at the top of his game in the championship class at Crofts. From Kokodi, these two, we always get a really good contingent uh, from Scotland at Crufts every year. Gives absolutely everything, this dog. First and last Crufts, and uh, they will be, will be retiring after this. That's a very, very decent effort from Alan Short and uh, from Beryl, up into the seventh place at the moment. Uh, people, a very common question for me is, when should I retire my dog? The dog will tell you. You'll know when your dog's had enough. That dog is really fit and is quite capable here of uh, carrying on, but he's decided he's going to OK, Lulu and uh, Joe Nash, six-year-old Labrador, representing the ABCs, anything but a collie. It's great to see over 500 Labradors entered into Crufts this year. Gun dog day on the opening day as well. That's lovely going through there, isn't it? And you could almost feel the affection pouring out of the crowd here towards the lab. Just, it's, but it's a great demonstration. Look at this dog. This dog is, is on good competing terms with all the border collies. You don't need a border collie necessarily to compete here, Jim, because this dog's done it 
Fantastically well, great time. Great time, 38.7, and uh, for the lab, that's good enough for third place. Well done, Lulu, the lab. Seeing a border collie, seven years of age, Alan Wildman from Blackpool, the hand, the lovely natured dog. This one competed for England in the GB teams last year and won a couple of tickets in the process. Alan Wildman and Zing. A great variety of dogs in this competition, which is always great to see as well. Weaves, 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 shouts Alan. And uh, Singh didn't quite oblige. Five faults. Well done on the dog walk. Good contact at the end of it. But there is a, an elimination, sadly, for a wrong course. And there's the finale. Not quite the round that Alan Wildman and Zing would have wanted, Graham. No, he wouldn't. Uh, but, as you say, he's a tremendous competitor, as Alan always gives it his all. Uh, and as you say, at the end of the day, the dog's having a great time. And unfortunately, you saw it there, missed, missed a weaving pole. And then w before he could correct it, the dog went on to another obstacle, equals the elimination. Thank you. Cosmo, four years of age. Kaylee Hewitt won a couple of championship tickets this year, this combination, but also eliminated from the jumping this morning. So this will be their grand finale on the opening day of Crufts won't be able to go through to the final because they have suffered an elimination. But that won't stop them giving absolutely everything and looking to impress. The dog walk is good. Time, 30 seconds and ticking is very respectable. This is a really, really good round, this. Excellent stuff. 38.2 for Kaylee and for Cosmo. Into the top three they go. Lovely combination. Yes, lovely round there. Just a little bit of confusion there at that point, but the, the judge didn't deem it a refusal, so uh, they got away with it. Last year's winners, Zest and Nicola Wildman from Preston. Three tickets so far this year. Excellent combo, a whirlwind of energy in the, in the ring, this one. And a sweet dog at home as well. Nicola, a full-time agility trainer these days. Changed career from being an architect. Now looking to uh, build great things on the green carpet at the NEC. It's a clear round so far, and it's a quick round so far for Nicola and for Zess, winners last year and looking to go for a big, big win double this time round. It's really quick and a good, quick finale as well. 38.9 uh, for Nicola and for Zess into the uh, top five they go. And here we go, the seesaw. People say to me, why do they stop their dogs on the end of the seesaw? It's as much to just collect the dog, make sure it's under proper control because she knows that she doesn't have to push the time. Next to go, Cicada, just a couple of years old, Border Collie, Marita Ogilvie, from Bourne in Lincolnshire, first time as a Crufts, and uh, competing in a couple of events, eliminated, though, in the jumping, so the next 30 seconds or so will be their work done for the day. Uh, Cicada and Marita Ogilvie. Round, you've got to go. You do. Picking up a little bit of pace over the dog walk. It's all good and it's all clear so far. 32 seconds and ticking. Uh, oh, just clipped that. Penultimate obstacle. That's a shame. Picking up the five faults. 38.2 and, and uh, five faults then for Marita. Top eight. It'll have to be because of that late mistake. Oh, just a little stumble there, but collects herself very well. Look at how early that dog took up. Those poles, I should point out, are plastic and they're, they're designed to come off very easily. Savannah, the border collie, five years of age. Philippa Bradley, the handler, the penultimate dog in the intermediate section. First timer at Crufts, fast and takes this event very, very seriously. Lovely, sweet girl at home, a different character when the competition ships are down. 
is good speed. Graham, on you go. Just about to say, this is uh, a quick dog covering the ground very quickly, but uh, Philippa making it look really easy. As I say, you need to stay calm. Oh, oh dear. She tried to get a stop, stop contact in there to make sure it got it, but unfortunately the dog questioned her, and that's where the mistake weighed. Okay. It's easy to say, isn't it, losing time at the end of the dog walk, but uh, it's better to do it that and, and to make that contact, but not to do it this way, Graham. Yeah, clear round will beat five folks every time. Here we go, then, the last dog in the intermediate section. Phoebe, a border collie, Tony Smith from Nottingham, uh, the Handley, third generation of a homebred collie, very smart, intelligent, and dainty. Wonderful temperament and loves agility. The time to beat 37.7 and clear. But don't forget, they will, will want to be in the shake-up, really, in the top nine or ten to qualify for the combined final, the grand final tonight. And that will be some competition. That will be well worth watching. Tony roaring Phoebe on and this is looking really good the last dog that, but as I say that just missed the end of that dog walking that's been a problem for a few of them hasn't it picking up those five points 37.2 uh, seventh place at the moment what a shame about the end of that dog walk it is I think they're all anticipate they're seeing the, the handler pull away to the right and the dogs are anticipating that and not driving through to the end and there's that open hand signifying that's the five folks on the course So confirmation then, uh, Natasha, Stephanie and Kaylee, Joe, Nicola, all, all clear rounds, all zero faults, and we will see them all again when they crunch the numbers for the combined agility and jumping numbers for the big final later on. Just ticking through to see uh, if you have got a personal favourite where your dog finished. and rounding up the agility results, the intermediate section. Tremendous uh, competition. What a great opening day we're having here at Crofts. There's a lot more to come as well. Flyball is just around the, the corner, and, of course, the grand final that we have of the competition that we have just let seen. It's been good stuff so far. So this is our Kennel Club Agility Championships in the Intermediate and the Large. And to do our presentation, please give a very warm welcome to Paul Harding, a Kennel Club board member, and Neil Brettel, the CCO of Windbells. Okay, first up, our winner of the Intermediate Agility Championship. Agility champion, Nedlow, flipping, shiny pebble, and handler, Natasha Wise. And the winner in Thank the large, the Agility Championship winner in the large, Agility Champion, Lil Hayes Dark Pleasure and Handler, Nara Cuddy. And the final will take place a little bit later on this evening here in the main arena. But now, put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, because it is lap of honor time. Well done, you.
Wonderful. Next up is Kamik. Easy. easy. <laughs> well, he's cool. eager. Let's see how they perform. Round. First up, the weave. weave. Nice quick turns. It's a turn. perfect start. Round the so spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. And yeah, faultless so Keep far, going. but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Škoda Kamik, yes. our compact SUV. Ooh. Our best in show. Škoda. 2023 is a very, very special year because we are celebrating 150 years of the Kennel Club. I probably wouldn't be here, to be honest, if it weren't for Ellie. Every day, I put my life in my lungs, pause. Chewie never left his side. Without him, I wouldn't have my husband. And she's still here today. Because of the dog. He's everything, not just to me, to my whole family. Day in, day out, dogs change lives. That's why for 150 years... Because Albert has so much joy, that really helps me with managing my chronic pain. He has completely changed my life. My chronic pain began to develop when I was a teenager and then when I turned 16 I became very unwell and didn't get better. I wasn't able to attend school regularly. I wasn't going out with my friends or going to parties or even just going to the shops. Chronic pain is something that's difficult to understand if you don't live with it and that can make it quite isolating for the person that it impacts. We didn't really know much about exactly what was wrong with her at first. It took a number of years to be able to understand her illness and that's been quite hard, that was quite a hard journey. And then Albert appeared and Albert joined our family. And he's just changed it again. Albert is three years old. He is from the amazing charity Dogs For Good. Uh, they trained him and matched him with me a year ago. Albert's very intelligent, he's very smart and good at figuring things out. He loves his job, he's happiest when he's doing task work, whether that's loading the washing machine, fetching the post or picking things up for me. It's easy to feel quite down and to find it really difficult to do normal day to day activities because of the pain. But the last year with Albert has been amazing. I've started a legal apprenticeship, so Albert is um, helping me with my studies and my ambition to become a solicitor. I wouldn't have been able to do that without him by my side. I feel much more confident to go out to places independently, and that's really helped me to build my own friendships and my own life and feel like a young adult. He's enabled her to go out on her own without having to constantly check in with me or without having to be with somebody else. He, he watches out for her and you can see the way he looks at her, the way he watches her and he watches what she's doing. They are a life-changing charity and they've produced Albert, who is a life-changing dog. I can do things that I didn't think I was going to be able to. Having him has opened doors again, it's opened up opportunities. I feel really positive about the future with Albert by my side. To me, Asher is a real hero dog. Not only has he overcome what I'm sure was really quite a traumatic past, but he's used his incredible sense of smell to save human lives. And he's done it with a waggy tail and enjoyed every moment of it. When Asher came to us, he came to us because he'd clearly had a number of homes that were been unsuccessful and he had a lot of behavior problems. He used to run away and when you tried to catch him, he used to become quite defensive. I suspect something quite horrible had happened to him because he actually became really quite scared and would scream in fear. So it took quite some time to get him to see his real personality. So now he just, <laughs> if anything, he'll trip you up. Um, he just wants to play with you, be around you, play with the other dogs. He just has a great life now. 
So Asher is a bi detection dog for the charity, which means that he uses his nose to smell human disease. The use of the dog's nose to detect disease means it can be done rapidly and non-invasively. So it can be done in a way that has very little impact on the patient. Asher is always keen to work, always loved his work, always wagging his tail when we go into the training room and teaching us incredible things. Because we've used Asher for a lot of our research and development work, so he was the first step. He was the dog that would tell me whether a disease had a particular odour that a dogs and other dogs could be trained to find in the future. Now for some diseases it isn't about the dogs always being the diagnostic, it's about learning how these incredible noses find the disease through the volatile signature and translating that perhaps into an electronic device in the future. So I suppose one of the most exciting jobs that, that Asher did was he told us that COVID-19 had a unique odour, or rather that people that had the virus had a unique odour. I mean, it really is a win-win. Asher, with his difficult background, his many, many homes, can now enjoy life and enjoy saving our lives. I mean, it's just amazing. We're so proud to have had Asher as part of the team. The work Asher has done is saving and will continue to save thousands or even millions of lives in the future. I would certainly call Beauty a hero for myself and the whole, whole family. Beauty is a Labrador now, going on two years of age. Beauty seems to be the bond that has held us all together through a very difficult time of the family. Lily was diagnosed with leukaemia about two months after, after Beauty came into her forever home. Chemotherapy is difficult for anyone to go through, a bit more difficult for a younger child, and, and she's still going through it at the moment. However, as soon as Beauty walked in the room, it was all smiles. Uh, the dog actually get, kept the family together. Beauty is my best friend and she's always been by my side for everything. I can't imagine a life without Beauty and she's made the biggest change to my life and I don't even know how I coped without having her because she's been amazing to me. Well, when I, when I was losing hair, she was also losing hair as well because she moats. So it was basically like we were both lo losing hair together. Like when I used to brush her, there was big clumps of hair just like me. Where do I start with Beauty? She's been amazing. She is if she was meant to come, to be honest with you. Um, she came along at the right time. But she's been amazing, absolutely. <laughs> Beauty has really helped me with my epilepsy on numerous occasions. I had a seizure in the nature reserve that's close to us. I fell into what was quite a deep puddle. Uh, Beauty actually burrowed underneath me and lifted me out of that puddle, which meant that I didn't take it in the water. I'm very happy to have Beauty because knowing that she's with my dad when he's out for walks and he might have an epilepsy attack keeps me um, happier knowing that he has her to keep him safe. Beauty has given me a lot of support throughout when I was ill and she means the world to me because if I didn't have her I wouldn't be as happy as I was right now. In my eyes, Stella's a hero because she's shown that Staffordshire Bull Terriers are amazing dogs. They are an incredible breed. She's been a fantastic little dog that's spread love and showed how positive and amazing they are. My name is PC Claire Todd. I've been a police officer for 24 years and a dog handler for 18 years. In 2014, I took on Stella as my police drugs dog. Stella's nine years old. She's been working as a drugs dog for the last eight and a half years and she's just recently retired.
Stella's a rescue dog from the RSPCA. She was the first Staffordshire Bull Terrier in the country to become a police dog. When I first went down there and I watched her search and her search drive was immense, I thought, well, I'd be stupid not to give her a chance, although she wasn't the typical Spaniel or, or Labrador that, that we normally use. It's normally a six-week course to train the dogs and uh, Stella completed a course in four weeks. Her number on the side, 2025, is her uh, issued uh, police number. And this is uh, Stella's actual warrant card with her picture on. They were issued in 2019, so it's when they became uh, recognised as police officers as well as ourselves. So she's trained on a set of blocks, and in one of those blocks we'll put the drugs or the cash or, or the gun, and we run her along those. And as she goes along, she recognises that one's different and she gets a reward. And then you build it up by repetition, and then eventually she learns to stop on that smell. All our drugs dogs are trained on real drugs to make sure that they're indicating properly. She can search a house a lot quicker than what we can as officers because Stella's using her nose. So when she finds the substance, she's trained to freeze. Obviously with drugs with powder, we don't want her interfering or ingesting anything you know, to keep her safe and also to keep the evidence safe. Her first search, she searched a house and uh, indicated behind a dog bed and there was £25,000 in cash hidden. So she's found thousands of pounds in cash. She's found numerous drugs. She's found three guns. So very, very proud of her. For us, it's so rewarding to see her in such a positive light, especially as a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Stella's living proof that in the right hands with the right training, they're incredible dogs. This is my 654th night in the tent, and it's always better when Bertie's with me. It's day 6, 11, 142, 335. My name is Ashley Owens, and I'm 13 years old. I've been raising the money for Porsche Rescue so they can build a shelter for the dogs so they can keep them all warm. Bertie has been helping me um, by sleeping out with me for over 150 nights. I think that's pretty impressive for a dog when I feel very lonely in the tent. <laughs> He's a very nice companion and he keeps me warm. I'm Emma Owens and I'm Ashley's mother. We have three dogs. The eldest is Holly, who's 19, and then we have Bertie, who's 10, and um, we have a puppy, uh, Lucia, who is a rescue dog. As a family, we've been fostering dogs for around seven years. Ashley saw the dogs arriving and would see the state they're in, and he's been to see the shelters. When he first saw them, he burst into tears, and that stayed with him. I started sleeping outside um, just by myself for over a year, and um, I felt fairly lonely. There was one night I just thought, how about Bertie does this? And I've got, obviously, Bertie again, because he's so cute. So there's sometimes it's really tough, and he just doesn't feel like continuing. It's frost, literally inside of the tent. Every time he says that, he thinks of the dogs. It's not just my fractured ankle he helps me out with. Um, he's just been a very good buddy, and uh, he's helped me through those stages where I've been like, oh, it's such a cold night, I don't really want to sleep out tonight. But yeah, he's helped me a lot. We are amazed by what Bertie and Ashley have been doing, and we really hope this inspires other dogs and children to have that bond and to do something special with them and maybe go out and raise money together. I don't think it's just me raising the money, it's we're both raising the money. Spreading the awareness and the importance of um, adopting an abandoned dog, that's really my goal. I think Bertie's a hero dog because he inspires me to keep on going and sleeping outside. Night Bertie.
hearts are special. From the moment they melt your heart, through every moment of life together, they are always there for you. And you can always be there for them. Protect your bond with a lifetime policy from Agria Pet Insurance. I love food. I'm a good boy. Your puppy will grow into a dog in several distinct stages, and sooner than you thought, they're almost grown. But right from the start, Royal Canin's Puppy Growth Program provides everything your dog needs for the ideal foundation for a healthy life. I could not go for a walk without a dog. It just wouldn't be worth going for a walk, would it? You know, it just, it just wouldn't. Wonderful. Next up is Kalik. <laughs> well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. First up, the weave. Nice quick turn. It's a perfect start. So spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident run up to the seesaw. Yeah, faultless so far, but what about the finish? He does it. Oh, marvellous! Skoda can move a compact SUV. Ooh. Best in show. Skoda.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and what an afternoon we've got here on day one of Crufts 2023. We have the fly ball on the way in 10 minutes' time. 10 past three will be the first run on the fly ball. It's going to be loud, it's going to be fast. We may well see some new records being broken, who knows. Uh, we've got the West Midlands Police display team a little later. We've also got the winning performance from our Hill to Music freestyle winner from earlier today as well. 2023 is a very, very special year for the Kennel Club. We are celebrating 150 years of the Kennel Club. Let's look back on just a few of those highlights. I probably wouldn't be here, to be honest, if we weren't for Ellie. Every day, I put my life in my love's paws. Chewie never left his side. Without him, I wouldn't have my husband. And she's still here today. Because of the dog. He's everything, not just to me, to my whole family. Day in, day out, dogs change lives. That's why, for 150 years, the Kennel Club and its members have been making a positive difference for dogs and their owners. We guide new owners, helping them to find the right dogs, brought into the world by responsible and caring breeders who want the very best for them. Giving puppies like Barney, a flat-coated retriever, the best possible chance to lead a healthy, happy life. Thanks to DNA testing, we've eradicated diseases such as clad, an inherited blood disorder in Irish setters. So Skye, Marta and Pear, as well as all Irish setters, can now lead healthier lives. There's always more to be done, which is why we continue to lead the way in helping breeders eradicate inherited diseases, improving dog health for generations to come. And we do all of this because when you have healthy dogs living with loving owners, the real magic of dog ownership begins. We're helping to build that unique bond between dog and owner through a range of training and activities that bring joy in the best and even the most difficult of times. Hayley lost her sister, but spending time with her dog Ellie, doing the activities they love, agility and heel work to music, got her through her grief. They've even been to Crufts, our most famous event for anybody who loves dogs. And thanks to Petlog's microchipping database, we're making sure that your canine companions have the best chance of being reunited with their loving families, should the worst happen. Like Jazz, who was reunited with her family after eight long and heartbreaking months. <laughs> So thank you for being on this journey as we work hard to make sure we continue to make a positive difference for dogs and their owners.
Your puppy will grow into a dog in several distinct stages, and sooner than you thought, they're almost grown. But right from the start, Royal Canin's puppy growth program provides everything your dog needs for the ideal foundation for a healthy life. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we all know why you're here. Are you here for Flyball? OK, so I'll give you a quick run through the teams before we actually kick off. I'm going to hand to John in a minute as well. So today we've got running Watson's Legacy. Anybody here supporting Watson's Legacy? Sal Tyres. Focus. Aces High. Tails You Lose. And all the way back from Belgium, the Roadrunners Beep Beep. And the Molten Magnets. And tails we win! How about that one, John? I'll land you over there. We'll introduce our judge for the afternoon. We will indeed. The lady who's going to be keeping order and making sure everything is as it should be. Please welcome all the way from Canada, your fly ball judge, Monica Johnny. <laughs> so we are in for a fantastic competition. Uh, we have got record holders amongst our teams, haven't we? We've got Focus, who are the outdoor UK record holders. We've got the Belgians, of course, who hold the European record. And we've got the Tails We Win team, who currently have the UK record. So, do you think we're going to get a new record set this afternoon here in the fly ball? I'll be shocked if we don't. Let's, I mean, let's be honest, honest about it. If we don't beat a record today, at least one, if not more, I'll be shocked, John, I've got to be honest. It was so exciting last year, and of course, the louder our audience cheer, the faster these dogs will run. That is official, isn't it? Radley, it, thank it you very much is, indeed. Like Good afternoon, reasonable. everybody. Say, you it, want a little bit of high ball, octane entertainment. Do it not move. Flyball packs them in here noise, at the arena at the NEC, and it's hugely and popular course, for you guys at home as well. We're going to see four lightning quick races in the company of Graham Partridge. And last year, Graham, this competition provided the best fly ball we had both ever seen you in particular the Crufts record went on, ten times would you believe and we just wonder what to expect over the next four days this is the group of 16 that's today and tomorrow the quarterfinals on Saturday the semis and the final on Sunday and the two teams are out is Watson's legacy on the near side from Stoke on Trent and Saltars from Scotland from Livingston on the far side great well, Jim, if it's as exciting as it was last year, they're going to have to get someone younger in to do it next year. Don't because, be silly, don't because, be silly. Because, uh, as you say, I, I, sh I should avoid too much excitement. What we're actually going to see now, that uh, the first run of every team uh, during this competition, they will get a practice run. So, and the reason they get a practice run is because they will never, probably, unless they've raced here at Cross before, will never have seen such a magnificent stadium, a magnificent setting uh, for their dogs. And what they're doing is they're just acclimatising it. They're, you see that they're lifting their dogs up and actually showing them, and now they're running the dog down towards the boxes. They're just, again, and it's about warming the dogs up. It's like any athlete, they need to make sure that the dogs are properly warm warmed up if they want to get the maximum speed out of all these dogs and you can hear the box loaders making a load of noise there trying to attract the dog's attention and uh, there we are Jim I mean we are in for some fantastic racing. Saltires on the far side that is the red side uh, from Livingston in Scotland Ray, Fusion, Sky and Storm the first four dogs and Watson's legacy on the near side. Go with Epic, go with Comet, go with Colin, and go the last dog will be Optic. Ready. This will be a practice run that we're looking at now. Of, the, of the, the two teams, it's the best of three when things are actually start. And getting some practice runs, and the, it, as, it, as uh, Claire has said, 
These are the Olympian dogs, really, the fastest dogs from both British leagues. And they'll be using this run to uh, assess the speed, to see whether the dogs are performing as they want them to, because uh, the changeovers are key in this, and I'll talk about the changeovers later on during the race. But uh, they just want to make sure that everything's good. They've got their measurements marked out. Uh, as I say, looking forward to it, Jim. So, Saltires from Livingston in Scotland, past winners, very consistent. If there is a favourite, it is Saltires on the far side in the red lanes against Watson's Legacy from Stoke-on-Trent. Third time here, newbies, really. A nice collection of fast dogs, all related, keen to have fun, no great expectations, really. We ready? So Watson's legacy then on the near the blue, Saltires on the far. Looking at Mon Monica Johnny, Canadian judge, first North American to be invited to judge here at this very prestigious fly ball competition. The fly ball competition that gave us so much excitement last year, the best we have ever seen. What will 2023 produce? We're about to find out. Good start on the near side from Watson's Legacy. They have it at the moment. It's with Watson's Legacy. Saltires struggling a bit on that far side. Watson's Legacy have it on the near side. And that's a fine piece of work, really. We look to see where the judge is going to point. Just have a little look and we will confirm the result for you. Confirm the result. On this side. Let's have a little look which way she's is that coming. Clean this side? She's yep. coming. Do they have a fault? We're looking for a they definite single from the judge. Win in the and red it goes, lane. It Win goes the to the far lane. side. Goes to the far side. So it yes. is Saltires who are one to the good. So we had a number of faults. They had early. So we had a number of faults here. Very difficult to keep an eye on what's going on. If a dog has a fault anywhere on the course, it must be rerun until it produces a clean run. Saltires won to the good then on that far side. If they win this, they will go through to Saturday's quarterfinals. The Saltires from Scotland, as expected. Watson's legacy on the near, they have to strike that. So it is with Saltires have the advantage at the moment. Bit of a confusing error strewn race, the opening race of Plus 2023. We're all set and we are running. And on the far side, it is just with the Saltires, but very, very close indeed. It's really close, still just with the Saltires on the far side. But there's a fault on that far side and a fault on the near side as well. So both will have to run extra dogs. This is a really getting, and there we go, the extra dogs. And another fault on that far side. This means it could well square up. It could well be one apiece and we'll need a decider. Let us have a very close look at Monica, our judge. If she points to this near side, she does indeed. We have a decider then. One apiece between Saltires on the far side and Watson's legacy in the blue on the near. A little bit of rustiness there, perhaps, Graham. I think it is. I think uh, pre-match nerves have, uh, have got to them. But uh, I think on the balance of things, one all is probably a fair result at this side. So... One to go through to Saturday's quarterfinals. Will it be the past winners? Sol Tires on the far side. That is the that is the red lane, or will it be Watson's legacy? Creating a bit of a shock on the near side. One apiece. This is the deciding race then. Fast Opening race ready. of Crufts 2023. Is Shouting the name of the dogs, the handler. Best of order, and we are off and running. Nothing in it at the moment, probably just with the near side, I would imagine, but only just. Just with Watson's legacy on the near, just. But they're gaining on that far side now, and the Soul Tires are fine. Uh, but there's a fault on that far side as well. So if the near side keeps it clean, Watson's legacy, they could create an upset here. They could well create an upset, Watson's legacy. They are celebrating, and it's gone to the near side as well nice so it is everybody. watson's legacy nice job. who have gone through and have created a bit of an upset they came here to have fun with no expectations they're in the quarterfinals graham they did and there you saw the fault the dog took the ball 
and it dropped the it dropped the ball, but it must take the ball back over to the finish line with it. in the red broke the record when they won here in 2019 and that record I'll tell you was 15 seconds 20 it's now 1471 and included in that aces high quartet uh, riot goes first high second icon third and hustle goes fourth my personal favorite I make no, no qualms about that 20 months old was hustle the first time the dog uh, competed now coming up to nine years of age one of the fastest teams around aces high this is going to be close though focus on the near side from selby winners of crops 2020 and runners up last year so here we go with uh, these two teams practice run. What I'm going to try and do is just to talk about the intricacies uh, of the box loader and just tell you what he can or cannot do. So there she is. She has to make sure that she knows which dog is coming next and then she will put the ball in the correct hole. She cannot touch the box apart from putting the ball in. All she can do is to use verbal commands to try and get the dog to come towards her just as quickly as that. So this is Leanne Burrows that we're seeing here. They do play a very important uh, role in this, and I will explain more about the uh, two holes that you see on the box there uh, at the end of the race. Thank you, Graham. Very illuminating as always. This one could be really, really close. Best of three, as ever. Winners go into the quarterfinals on Saturday. Another round of 16 tomorrow. The losers pack their bags and head for home. Focus from Selby then, aces high uh, from Lincolnshire. Focus on the near side, that the blue side, aces high on the farther red. They've been coming here for the last six years of Aces High. And watch for my little hustle running the last leg for Aces High. Coming up to nine years of age. Focus on the near. Aces High, red on the far side. Monica calling best of order. And they're away. It's focus on the near side. Uh, that have it at the moment just but making up good ground aces high on the far very little in it at the moment it's still really really close and is the scene set for hustle is it set for the hustler on that far side is it is it i think it might just have gone to the near you know i think it might have indeed it has indeed it has focus we're told it'd be close and they have just taken it and gone one to the good what a race grab as you say Danny Cornwall proper race that was absolutely proper very very close there's nothing in it so they'll be looking now to try and just tidy up their changeovers to see if they can square it up again Focus from Selby, one up, another win, it's the quarterfinals, aces high, record breakers back in 2019, a top team, one of the fastest around, staring elimination in the eye here, aces high on the far side, 
Focus are on the near. I told it was going to be close. It was a really close opening leg. What's going to happen here? Will it be decisive? Will we get a decider? We're about to find out in the next 15 seconds or so. And they're off and running. Nothing in it on the opening leg. Hardly anything at all. Possibly just on that far side. Just with the far side uh, with aces high. Still nothing in it. There's a fault on that far side. This could well then go. Go focus his way. We're looking for a fault. And it has indeed, and would you believe it? It's gone to focus. It has gone to focus. Two races to nil to focus from Selby. That has to be down as a, as, as a, as a bit of a shock. And there we go. Unfortunately, aces are just trying that little bit too hard. What a race that was, very close, on the wicket, aces, valiant effort there, but a brilliant run from focus, who go through. All right, let's bring out our next two teams as the battle continues for our Fly Ball Championship. Make some noise, ladies and gentlemen, for Tails You Lose. Ladies and gentlemen, here they come, featuring an 11-year-old handler who looks very, very talented indeed. In the bright pink. And they're going to be going up against, all the way from Belgium, Road Runners Beat Beat. I think they brought half of Belgium with them in the audience. Fantastic support for this amazing team, who are the European record holders. Our friends from Belgium doing very well to get here today. In all the conditions. So it's a team of the Alphas and the Liverpools. Thank you, Luz. Up against the Belgians here in the green. Real players for the week. Real players that comes up with a 13 plus score of seconds. Our fans is on the way. Real players for the last year. Tails, you lose then effectively Tails second team, but they actually beat the first team in qualifying. Road runners, well they've had a horrible experience on the road coming here to Crufts. Road runners beat beat, who came here as the first uh, overseas team last year and won everything, smashed the record just about every day. The record went 10 times. We just wait and see how that horrible accident with a couple of cars written off, underlining all the dogs have been checked out and all okay. How will it affect them? Road runs beat beat on that far side in the red and on the near side, tails you lose. We've had the practice run, we're all set. This is the real thing then. And that's a sleek start on the far side by Roadrunners, by Set the first dog. It's with Roadrunners at the moment, with Drogon on that far side. Satsa holding the lead for the Roadrunners. This looks good for the Roadrunners on that far side. As Kion comes through to take it. They are the champions. They are the Crofts record holders. They are the serial winners. Accident or no accident, they're looking very, very sleek. 
very nice run there by the Roadrunners. They did exactly what they needed to do and no more. Uh, the changeovers weren't that tight. They knew that they had a little bit of uh, leeway in what they were doing, uh, and they did it perfectly as you would expect from uh, a team of their calibre, Jim. So tails you lose on the near side have to produce something absolutely extraordinary here. Frenchie, Lupa, Wiggy and Blink. At the moment, the Roadrunners looking as though that horrible experience has taken nothing out of them. Just about a perfection in that opening. Let's see what happens here. It's a good start on the near side, but it's still with the Roadrunners on the far. With the Roadrunners by a decent distance on the far side. Keep it clean and keep it quick. It'll be on the Roadrunners way. The Roadrunners stretching away with that fourth dog on the far side. That is Kion. That's the Roadrunners. Through they go to the Saturday quarterfinal. Well done all after that vile experience coming here to the NEC. That's a terrific effort from them. Well, it's what a great run there by Roadrunners. As I say, they, uh, they timed it perfectly. I feel a little bit for Tails You Lose. Uh, they've come up against the reigning Crofts champion in really a great form. So, uh, but well yeah. done to them. Brilliant performance there from the team in pink. Tails You Lose. We loved it. All right, are we ready? Make some noise, ladies and gentlemen, as we welcome out the Molten Magnets! They've got their fan club up at the top there, making some noise, that's what we like. Here comes their opponents, Tails We Win! So, Moulton's beat the Tails last year, I seem to remember. So, are they going to be looking to get their own back this time? I wonder, and maybe even Siemens. Tails with win currently, the holders of the UK record, for 14.46 seconds. Can we get more ready at the same time? Let's find out. Thank you, Radzi. They're all, they're all set to go then. Tails we win on the far side, far quicker on paper. This effectively Tails first team. There's previous here though with Molten Magnets who knocked them out last year, shot them really on the Saturday and denied them a place in Sunday's uh, finale. Tails we win, far side then. And uh, Molten Magnets on the near. 
Will we see another shot from the Magnus? Tells you win current UK record holders, 14.46. Runners up in the Worlds last year. All the pedigree with Tails we win on that far side, the red side. This is the last of the fly ball action today. There'll be more tomorrow and Saturday, of course, in the grand climax with the semi-final and final on Sunday. We're off and running. Tails we win on that far side just at the moment. But precious is in it. Now on the near molten magnets are made up a little bit of ground. It's still very, very close. I think there's a fault on that far side. It's still close. The far side has it at the moment with the Tails we win. But is there a fault on that far side? Are they going to have to run another dog? No, there isn't. It's clear on that far side, and it, they are pointing the far side's way. So as, anti as anticipated, really, it is one for Tails We Tails Win. 16-2-4. 16-2-4, the time from Tails. We heard that from uh, Monica, our judge. For Tails We Win on that far side. That was a beautiful close race. Tails We Win, though, if they do that again. It'll be a comfortable qualification uh, for Arlo, for Panther, for Kenneke and for Cody. The quartet from Tails We Win on the far side. The near though, molten magnets, come on, they must think, let's have a bit of last year's spirit or he knocked them out of the quarterfinal. It's not the quickest start by the molten on the near side, but just about in front of the moment. It's still with the magnets on the near side, but only just, still just with the magnets, but on the far side, they are making up ground, our tails we win. They're making up ground on the far side. A fault on both sides, I'm hearing here. Fault on the far and fault on the near side. So, we are looking, we're, we're, we are waiting, and it is at one apiece, and we're going to have a runoff, a couple of balls on both sides, and uh, Monica pointed this way, pointed towards us in the commentary position, and so we have one apiece, and it's all going to go to a third race round. Does, uh, there just seems to be a little bit of a query there from the team captain from Tails We Win. So we're just waiting for a decision on that. Steve! Steve! Let's just have a listen. I think we can probably have a listen to this. Okay, it's got to be a rerun then, I'm afraid. That's the only choice you can, you can do with it. Yeah. Okay. If they put the wrong bit on, it's got to be a rerun. Okay. Don't explain. Yep. Yep. We're going to do a rerun. Rerun. We're going to rerun. The, the fault light was wrong. Okay. Guys, right, well, you heard it here. Uh, the technology that can be a bit complicated. There was a wrong fault declared. That's why, I must admit, I hadn't spotted it. That's why Tells Me we queried it. So we have a rerun of that one. As you can see, Steve is our, not only talks to us, he's the oracle of all things. Uh, um, all things fly ball here, a rerun, and that means uh, Tails we win holding a one race lead. And uh, there is quite a lot of uh, technology out there, it doesn't, doesn't surprise me, it's always a very exact sport and down to a hundredth of a second as well. So a rerun, just to bring you up to date, then on the far side, Tails we win far quicker on paper, are one to the good, if they win here, they go through. Molten Magnets, who have a bit of history of shocking Tails we win, will look to do it again after that little technical malfunction. Well sorted out, though, by Monica, well sorted out by everybody. No complaints on either side. We are off then on the far, tails we win on the near, it is the Magnets, and it's just with the Magnets at the moment, but very, very close. Tails we win probably just ahead after that first leg, still just with tails we win on that far side. It, it's very, very quick on the far side, there's a fault on the near side too, this is going to be tails we win as we anticipated. Tails we win, the winners. 2-0, that's good enough for them, that's good enough for the quarterfinals, and good enough to say we will keep a close eye on Tails We Win for the rest of the competition. And it was a really, really good race there, as I say, that just made the difference there for Tails We Win. Just had a couple of dogs which uh, made up the extra yardage that was required. So Tails We Win go through.
tails we win go through, we have the four Thursday qualifiers for the quarterfinals on, on Saturday. They are tails we win. Road runners beat beat. Well done to the champions after their horrible experience on the road this morning. Focus and Watson's legacy. All right, here we go. Final four, please welcome back Watson's legacy. So what's this like to see in the pink and green? They're going to be going up against Focus! So all of the first round is now complete. Okay. So but this is the runoff of the day. Okay. So, so it's Watson's versus Focus. What we have? We've got Watson and Focus. And we've got the first round. All right. Can we do this right? All four of the teams are already to the quarterfinals, so we are going to win this afternoon. So now the competition continues to find the Thursday champion and we have Watson's legacy on the near side, the blue side, no practice run and focus on the far side, that is the red. This to decide Thursday's champions from that four and they all know they can relax a little bit, they all know they're going through uh, to the quarterfinals of Trust 2023 this Saturday. Focus the winners a couple of years ago, runners up uh, last year. Great to ever present captain in Craig Burroughs and focus on the far side, just trailing at the moment, it's just with Watson's legacy on the near, still with Watson's legacy uh, on the near side. And if they keep this tidy, it's going to be one to Watson's legacy on the near, I would imagine. A pretty clear cut, decisive victory for Watson's legacy. Concerned by Monica Johnny, 15.40 the time. Thank you, Monica, for that. So on the Near side Watson's legacy are uh, one, two, we three. are one, nothing, and for one. a good, good clean race there. Uh, just too good for uh, focus there, just beating them by uh, probably about a jump. So they'll be looking to tighten up their, their changeovers here. Look at that. Where's my man? So this could be the decisive. Uh, ready. Box race. judges. Line uh, judges, thank you. Focus have anything to do with it. It's Watson's Are legacy, ready? one to the good from Stoke on Trent. This will be a ready. very pleasing for Watson's legacy from Stoke. If they manage to get one over Focus this afternoon, all good bragging points here. It's, it's a good start from Watson. They could just be Focus on the far side of the moment in my eyes. Still just, oh, there's a fumble. There's a fumble from Focus on that box. And uh, that could compromise the far side, and that could well mean it's going to be uh, Watson's legacy all the way here. In the blue it is indeed Watson's legacy in the blue, and that is two to the good for Watson's legacy. And Watson's legacy, as they run that final dog on the far side, do focus after that fumble. Go on, Graham. Yeah, we saw the fumble there. The dog actually took the ball out, dropped it, picked it up again, and completed his run. Just, just time lost there, Jim. Congratulations to, uh, to Watson's legacy then. Two to the good. Fine work by, by all of them, really. OK, so Watson's legacy progress. Christina Upperman. Um, but who Matthew will Lees, be going up against? That is the question. I'm Liz Meredith, Stephanie Lee, and Rachel Colbert. Good work. We are playing for these fabulous trophies and presents for the first and second team. Let's bring out, ladies and gentlemen, our next competitors. Let's hear it for Road Runners Big Beat. <laughs> Up against Tails, we win. So the Road Runners very swiftly back in action, and they will be so pleased that they have uh, qualified for the quarterfinals on, on Saturday. And they're 
there up against right, tails so we win on the uh, far on the side, side the this could course. be a really good race in this as we decide uh, uh, Thursday's champion, Tails We Win, a reminder, runners up in the world of last year, current UK record holders as well. The first team from Tails and Roadrunners Beat Beat, the welcome visitors from Belgium. So I was starting to, uh, to say earlier on about the box. The box, you will notice, uh, has got at least a couple of holes in it. Dogs do like to turn one way or the other. Basically, they're left-handed or right-handed, so they put, the dog, they put the ball in the side the dog likes to turn to get a quicker turn. This is warm-up liner. Yes. We're all set, the boxes Judges are ready. ready. Judges are ready. Andrew Very impressed with Monica Johnny's opening work, opening day's work here at Trux. Tells we win then are on the far side. Roadrunners beat beat from near two high quality combinations and very, very close in this opening leg. Just with Tells we win on that far side. There's a fault on the near as well. It's still just with Tells we win on the far side. A fault on the near means that. Uh, and there's another fault on the near side. Roadrunners beat beat then, um, probably relaxing a, a, a little bit after, after qualifying. And it goes with Tails We Win on the far side. Understandable drop in performance quality from Roadrunners beat beat, Graham. Still very surprising to see the faults. That they'll want to try and put in as many clean runs as they can so that the dogs get used to the timing and everything else. You see the dog turning to the right there, dropping the ball. That incurs a fault because it must carry the ball back down over the course. Tails we win then. All a team drawn from all over the UK, from Portsmouth to Yorkshire. Even got somebody from Belgium in there. And there's all Belgians and Roadrunners beat beat. And the champions, those multiple record breakers, have to strike back here if they want to be Thursday champions again. Always huge bragging rights in that. On the near side, then, are Beat Beat. This looks better from Beat Beat. They're ahead at the moment on the near side. Still maintaining that advantage, Beat Beat. Tells me we're having to strike back. What's going to happen with the final dog on this near side? That's more like it. And that's one apiece. Excellent. The road runners saying, you think we're slacking off, you think we're feeling the pressure, do not believe it. As you say, normal service has been resumed, I think you could say, Jim. Very nice, clean run there. That's more like it from uh, road runners beat beat. Wow. Wow. turning to the right. It's turning before it picks the ball out. Amazing. They really work hard at it to Roadrunners beat beat. Came here as an unknown quantity last year, came here as the first uh, overseas entrance to Crufts and swept the board and broke all sorts of records. Now they have to win this one as they hunt the title of Thursday's champion. Roadrunners then, one apiece on the near side. Tails we win on the far, doing so well in that opening leg. Let's see what happens here. It's with the Roadrunners at the moment on the near. Still with the Roadrunners. Little bit of a gap opening up between the blue and the red lanes. The Roadrunners quick and clean. Are they going to complete it? Should I really bother asking the question? No, they have completed it. They've won two, won the Roadrunners. Through they go. A gallant effort from Dales. We win. There's no sliding off the road here on the green carpet at Crumps. Roadrunners beat beat. Very, very popular. I think the story's got around about what happened to them coming to the NEC, Graham. Yeah, and you'll see this dog with the same. The dog's actually turning before it takes the ball out. Only just got a hold of it there, but he still manages to maintain it, drops it when it's over the line. That's not a problem at all, and now he'll get his reward.
Okay. Are we ready for some more? Can we handle some more? Please welcome back Watson's Legacy. You can cheer louder than that, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, these amazing teams are back. So Watson's Legacy are in the pink and the green. And they're going to be going up against our new record setters. The team, by the way, who already hold the European Championships. Lots of fly ball action across the weekend here at Crufts 2023. Please welcome back Roadrunners BB. So Roadrunners hardly any time between that victory and here they are competing for the right to be called Thursday's champions. They will be on the near side, the, the blue so, side, and on the far Watson's side, the red, legacy. Watson's legacy. Fast dogs, all related, Watson's this legacy, third time here. Good. Well, they came here with very low expectations. They've done well, they're gonna be back on Saturday. But now they are up against absolute class in the shape of road runners beat beat. If there are records to be broken, road runners beat beat from Belgium, they break them. Best of three. Winner of this one will carry the kudos of Thursday's champions into Saturday's quarterfinal. This the last action on Thursday from the round of 16. Road runners beat beat. On the near side, the blue, Watson's legacy, looking to upset, well, cause a major upset here. From Stoke on Trent, Watson's legacy have done a really exceptional day. Monica Johnny, our judge, British born, but now living in Canada. Very calm, very authoritative, keeping good order. Boxes are ready. Boxes are ready. We're all ready, Monica. Let them go, Monica, let them go. First of three, Roadrunners beat beat near side. Watson's legacy on the far. Lights are on and away we go. Good start by Watson's legacy on that far side. The opening dog just has it at the moment. But the Roadrunners are caught up with the second dog. It's with the Roadrunners from Belgium, the reigning champions on the near side. There is a fault on the near side though, though. So Watson's legacy, if they keep it clean and quick, this will be their race. If they keep it clean and quick, this will be theirs. And it's looking that way. It is indeed. It is indeed. Watson's legacy. One, two, one up, two to go. Yeah, and there we go. We quite clearly saw the fault on the crossover. The dog incoming into the course uh, can't enter it until the dog leaving the course has left. I think that was right, Jim. I'm certain it was right, Graham. No thinking about it. On the money as ever. Can we turn the light off? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Watson's legacy. One to the good from Stoke on Trent against Road Runners Beat Beat from Belgium. Okay. Reigning yeah, champions. Boxes, ready? Watson's legacy would love it. They came here having fun. They came here with no great expectation. If they were declared Thursday champions, they would Boxes, celebrate ready. long and hard into the snowy night here at the NEC. Watson's legacy then on that far side. Roadrunners on the near. And they're away. Good start again by Watson's legacy. But it, it's just with Watson's legacy at the moment. But Roadrunners have made it up on this second leg. It's with the Roadrunners. On the third, it's with the champions, the record breakers on the near side. It's still with them. It's going to be close at the end, but yeah, they squared it up. They've squared it up to one apiece. Roadrunners beat beat. Nine, five, Winning the blue leg. 14.95 the time. That is pretty quick. 14.95, 14.71, the Crufts record. Yep, Roadrunners uh, just wound it up a little bit, but they still left. And notice the dog that faulted on the changeover before. They actually left that little bit more room just to make sure it didn't fault again. The Roadrunners, they want to be these champions. What a day it would be first day. A grim start on the road. A really nasty accident. Coming back, all the dogs fit and well. 
a couple of aches and pains from some of the uh, handlers. But now, if they win this one, the Roadrunners will be Thursday's champions. This the decisive one to decide the best of the day. Very close at the moment, probably just on that far side with the legacy, but catching up well on the second leg. It's with Roadrunners at the moment, is it? It's very, very close. It's still with Roadrunners on the near. Legacy straining and straining and straining, but I think the Roadrunners have it. I think the road. yes, they do. What a great race. Really, really good. Hey, well done, Watson's legacy, by the way. They pushed them all the way in that. The team from Stoke-on-Trent. It was a great race, and I'll tell you what, that quarter-final day on Saturday really does promise to be something very, very special. We're going to possibly see these teams running again. Uh, yeah, and a great consolation, I think, there. Winning today's final um, is really going to help them. Absolutely right. One big family, well, the uh, Flyball family, by the way. Just to say, a lot of the other teams helped out Roadrunners beat Beep on the back of that accident. So, one big family, hugely competitive out there when things start. And that is the uh, conclusion of the Flyball action for this Thursday afternoon. And there is plenty more to come. But uh, it's quite astonishing the attraction here as the arena empties just about falls to its 7,000 capacity in off, off fly ball. And um, this is Jim Rosenthal and Graham Marshall saying we hope you will enjoy it. There's plenty more to come and uh, we will see you soon. See you shortly. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is presentation time. So as we welcome back our top two, our winners and our runners-up for our amazing flyball competition this afternoon, it is now time for the presentation. Please welcome back Paul Harding, member of the board of the Kennel Club, to do the presentation. Give Mr Harding a big round of applause, everybody. The winners of Crufts Flyball this afternoon and setting a new Crufts record of 14.59 seconds. Roadrunners beep beep. Incredible, what a performance this afternoon. We can't wait to see what they're going to be able to do in the quarterfinals on Saturday. All four teams, the top four from today, will be going through to the quarterfinals on Saturday. Congratulations. The semi and the finals, of course, taking place on Sunday. Congratulations, good job. Your dogs are Our runner-up this afternoon, they've been amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, dogs. let's hear it for Watson's Legacy. Congratulations. Well, I don't know about you, but that was absolutely electric, wasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Don't forget, you can re-watch all of the flyball action on the Crufts YouTube channel. But for now, give our two teams a massive cheer as they do their lap of honour.
So still lots to come this afternoon here in the main arena. Day one of Crufts 2023 as we celebrate 150 years of the Kennel Club this year. The West Midlands Police Dog Display Team is coming up. Also, we're going to enjoy a spotlight performance of our heel work to music freestyle. Winner. Wonderful. Next up is Kamik. Easy. easy. <laughs> well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. Round. First up, the weave. weave. Nice quick turns. Round it's turn. perfect start. Round the so spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. And yeah, faultless so Come far, on. but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kamut, yes. our compact SUV, Ooh. our best in show. Skoda. So, earlier this morning, if you were here, you will have enjoyed some fantastic heel work to music. We've got heel work to music action every day here at Crufts 2023. Earlier today, it was our freestyle heel work to music competition, and I am delighted to welcome back for a very special extra performance this afternoon, the winner. Please give a very warm welcome with her six-year-old border collie, Elsa, Nikki Heinsen, and their good morning routine.
Well, that was a fabulous performance. Elsa and Nikki Heinsohn. Spotlight performance. Elsa really is Nikki's soulmate and won the freestyle and heel work to music finals last year at Crufts and has competed here a total of eight times. Time now in the main arena to see this fabulous display from the West Midlands Police. They have one of the largest breeding and puppy development programs in the country. And they supply the majority of police forces. West Midlands Police have over 50 breeding female dogs. A range of breeds as well. German Shepherds, Malinois, Springer Spaniels, Cocker Spaniels, Labradors, Dutch Herders even as well. And the majority of, of dogs are used for protection and searching for offenders, German Shepherds in particular. And they have a team of full-time trainers and kennel staff who help with the development of their dogs. It's a long-running display at Crufts. It really will, over the course of the next little while, demonstrate so many facets of work that these extraordinary animals do in aiding their handlers. And brave dogs as well, many of these. Dogs for duty trained absolutely to the nth degree. and welcome to the West Midlands Police Dog Unit Demonstration. Just need to be clear, none of the handlers or the dogs that are here today are part of a display team. They're all operational police dogs and handlers that have come here giving up their free time to show you how fantastic our police dogs are out on the streets. A lot of what we show you today is going to be our general purpose police dog work. We use predominantly German Shepherds, Dutch Herders and Malinois to do our GP work. We're going to kick off initially with a little bit of ag agility. Now we are in an arena in the centre of Birmingham, so we're a little bit struggling for what we can do. So we've impro improvised a little bit, and we've got PC Wayne Truman and PD Riot, who are just going to do a little bit of a demonstration for you. Oh, I missed one. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really run round cones out on the streets. As long as you can get on top of a car, I'm happy with that. <laughs> there we go. No problems with the car. together now for around two years taking down our criminals out in the West Midlands. We've also got lots of our specialist work so coming into the arena now is PC Lisa Phillips with PD Ashley. So she's one of our explosive search dogs. They've been around the West Midlands keeping us safe during the Commonwealth Games and they were also deployed to London uh, for the Queen's funeral. So what Ashley does is she's searching for explosives so she's just going to scan the arena. Lisa's just going to work around once she gives a freeze indication, that's indicating to us that she's found the substance that she's looking for. So we'll have a nice freeze, then what Lisa will do is give a click indication and reward her with a ball. 
All of what we do with our police dogs is reward based, so we make sure they, they love what they're doing. It's uh, all about toys, all about play. There we go. And a reward with a toy. See that again? So we've got Springer Spaniels, Cocker Spaniels, Labradors. Uh, we've got uh, Springer Doors as well that are out there keeping you safe in terms of explosives work. They don't just do the big operations, but they also respond to spontaneous incidents across the West Midlands. There we go. Oh, she loves her Kongs. There's PC Lisa Phillips with PD Ashley. Also, what we need to do is make sure they can search vehicles. So a lot of what they do is um, search vehicles when they're coming into venues. Make sure that they're not shy to jump up and down things. Make sure that they are really confident in the different environments that they go into. We're going to kick off now with a little bit more of an operational twist. So we're going to go into a bit of a scenario. Uh, I'll talk you through some of it, um, and then we'll see where we go. So we've got um, a couple that are going to be coming into the arena, I hope. And here they have PD Oreo, who is one of our Springer Spaniels, who is going to hopefully be going on to, sorry, she's a Cocker Spaniel, not a Springer Spaniel. She's going to be going on to a course, hopefully, later on this year, to become an explosive search dog. Oh, who we got here? Oh, these two look like they're up to no good, don't they? Oh, no. <laughs> She's a little bit nervous. When we did this yesterday, there wasn't a crowd. <laughs> Oh, he stole a bag. I hope there's some police officers around. I'd have thrown the poo bag at him. <laughs> Hopefully we've got some police officers that can come and sort hey, this hey, out. Stand still for the police stop. Stand still. A nice take down there by PD Gus. Our dogs are really confident in taking out criminals in lots of lots of different scenarios. We make sure that they are as confident as they can be, so that they can be fantastic operational police dogs. We like them to be a little bit cheeky as well. Some just control work there, so to make sure that he's calm in front of the helper. And then he will help escort him out of the arena. This is really hard for our dogs. They love them bite suits. It's absolutely the best thing for them when they get to bite the bite suit and play. As you can see, he's waiting for him to run off so that he can then grab hold of him and detain him again. Genuinely, this is really hard for him to do this. It's fantastic to see the control that the handler has got. <laughs> I knew I was going to jinx it. <laughs> Big cheer then for PC, Paul King and PD Gus. Oh, what's he doing? Oh, he's seen what, what's good in that bag. and our dogs are in it together, so they will always take on the fight together. As you see, PC Gemma Bickley has taken on the criminal as well as her dog, PD Aggie. 
They've been operational together now for around three years, taking down criminals across the West Midlands. Told you they love these bike suits. Come on, give them a cheer. <laughs> Police dogs don't just detain people, they also support us to locate evidence. So she will be able to do what we call a property search. What that is, is the dogs will search an area in order to locate some evidence in relation to uh, an offence. So for example, a criminal that's stolen a vehicle and has run off from us might throw their car keys, might throw their mobile phone, they might take their jumper off to try and disguise who they are. And our police dogs will then go out and do a search in order to locate the property. Sometimes that's hidden in like long grass, uh, in woodlands, just on the side of the road. But it's fantastic to be able to identify evidence to link the criminal to the offence. So just go out and search the arena. Once she's located something, she'll do a, a down indication for the handler. She should do a down indication for the handler. <laughs> and then she'll be rewarded with that. Like I said, all of our, uh, reward, all of our uh, training is reward-based. I think we've got another article out and she'll do that again for you. Brilliant. Well done, Aggie. She's got to be quick getting that toy out of her pocket because the dogs absolutely love their cons and their balls. It is really important that our dogs um, are really confident in lots and lots of different environments. So all of our dogs that you see here today have come through our development program. So they are bred with our uh, Kennel Club Assured Breeding Program as part of our West Midlands uh, Police. Uh, they then go out to volunteers from about eight weeks old where they are looked after in their home environments and our volunteers take the dogs to lots and lots of different environmental. There we go, she loves it. They take them to everywhere with them, so to train stations, to shopping centres, just to make them as confident as they can possibly be so that then when they come out to be operational police dogs, they're not phased by anything. Even being in an arena surrounded by thousands of people, they're not phased. They're absolutely comfortable with that. Come on, give PC Gemma Bickley and PD Aggie a cheer. Oh, it looks like we've got somebody else skulking about. who's six months old Malinois. As you can see, she's just on a baby sleeve at the moment, but we get them playing with sleeves, doing all the biting and the ragging and the tugging from a really young age so that they absolutely love it. You can see she's so confident, she absolutely loves it, even at six months old. I think, though, that our criminal just got injured. I think we're gonna need um, a volunteer to just give us a hand. Oh, no. Who's this? Oh, not you. It's Mr. Scary, who we haven't seen in the arena since 2017. You'll have to do. Go on, get in there. 
That's our brakes, brand new police car there. They love this X Reg uh, Vauxhall Astro, don't they? As you can see, the criminal has stood still, so our dog is now doing what we call a standout. So he won't bite, he'll just bark at him. Put him under pressure to make sure that he doesn't run off. If he does run off, then he'll obviously take hold of him. And a recall back to the handler, because it's now an attack on handler, and the dog has responded to the handler to call him back and take down the criminal. I'm sure, though, there's two there. I'm sure there was three criminals. Have we missed one? Honestly, Royal Canyon have done our legs today. They've given us these brand new suits and our dogs don't like to let go of them. <laughs> this is PD Pancho. <laughs> are genuinely the biggest thing that our dogs have got, so it's a fantastic reward for them. <laughs> they don't let go. It's not a bad thing our dogs start letting go of people, so we don't want them to let go when they start shaking their arms or kicking their legs. If that happens out in the real world, we don't want our people being able to uh, shake our dogs off, so they will make sure that they do hold on to, uh, to them until we do release them. Criminals don't normally wear bite suits, so we can't get them off out in the, uh, the real world. Oh. oh, it looks like we've got a crowd. This crowd isn't big enough, though. Can we have some volunteers in the audience? Is there anyone that can volunteer to give us a hand? <laughs> Everybody volunteers in the audience so that our, uh, our uh, officers and our staff can come and grab hold of you. We need more of a crowd than this. Come on.
when the OSU get involved, you know things are getting serious. You've got to wrap it up though for the MSU. They don't come out for anybody. Come on. Crowd, let's go. Let's get the audience showing. Let's clap them out. Come on, make some noise. Police dogs and our operational support unit often work together hand in hand. And what we've got here is our police dogs pushing the crowd back away from the OSU. And our crowd should go back into the audience. Thank you very much for your audience participation. Our dogs will push them back, push them back, push them back. Like I say, our dogs support lots of different departments across West Midlands Police, the operational support unit being one of them. Oh. Here we go, Mr Angry. You can't ever come here without Mr Angry being here, can you? wonder if he's going to be a match for the OSU. If you ever see our, see our operational support dog, unit bend down, you know that the dogs are coming over the shields next. You better want to get out of the, uh, the way. Thank you to our OSU. Who have genuinely only found out they were doing this about an hour ago. again. He's taking some game down today, isn't he, this uh, Mr. Angry? <laughs> I think what he's asking us to do is a double dog deployment. I think that's what he's doing. We've got, uh, we've got our brothers, PD Chaos and PD Riot, who I think will oblige with that. I'm 
We're going to need the support of our firearms unit in order to deal with this criminal. Our dog units always support our firearms colleagues to uh, firearms incidents, so they're always there as a less lethal option. We will use our police dogs in order to take criminals down if they pose a threat to us and our colleagues. We like to turn upon the bonnet of a car. their weapons. And a recall back to the handler. PD Wes and PC Derby have been supporting our firearms colleagues for the last three years. Wes have been an operational police dog for five years and they are absolutely fantastic out in the uh, public. Can you actually believe that people run away from this dog? Uh, not once, but twice in the same incident, so just a couple of weeks ago. Somebody was detained by the dog. Once she'd released him, he ran off again just to be detained again. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our demonstration. I hope you have enjoyed it. A massive thank you to all of our officers, all of our staff, all of our uh, police dogs. Um, if you are interested in volunteering for us, if you go onto the West Midlands Police website, all the details are on there. A genuine thank you. All of these handlers are keeping you safe 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year. Thank you very much. Display from the West Midlands Police. Wow, Those dogs really do a tremendous dog. We saw the sniffer Please. dogs. Yeah, that six month old Malinois as well heard about the Kennel Club Assured Breeding Thank Programme so they much. run and how the dog support, the operational away, support the unit and, and the firearms the unit as well. Highly commendable work and great to have that demonstration here at Crufts. There'll be a break in the main arena now, just until 5pm, but plenty more coming up. Agility Championships final, the intermediate and large. And we've got the Breeders' Competition final, gun dog display, gamekeepers' competition final. Kennel Club 150th anniversary celebration stakes before the first group judging of Crufts 2023, which is the Gundog Group. Look forward to seeing you back again at five o'clock for more action.
I probably wouldn't be here, to be honest, if it weren't for Ellie. Every day, I put my life in my lungs, pause. Chewie never left his side. Without him, I wouldn't have my husband. And she's still here today. Because of the dog. He's everything, and not just to me, to my whole family. Day in, day out, dogs change lives. That's why, for 150 years, the Kennel Club and its members have been making a positive difference for dogs and their owners. We guide new owners, helping them to find the right dogs, brought into the world by responsible and caring breeders who want the very best for them. Giving puppies like Barney, a flat-coated retriever, the best possible chance to lead a healthy, happy life. Thanks to DNA testing, we've eradicated diseases such as CLAD, an inherited blood disorder in Irish setters. So Sky, Marta and Pear, as well as all Irish setters, can now lead healthier lives. There's always more to be done, which is why we continue to lead the way in helping breeders eradicate inherited diseases, improving dog health for generations to come. And we do all of this because when you have healthy dogs living with loving owners, the real magic of dog ownership begins. We're helping to build that unique bond between dog and owner through a range of training and activities that bring joy in the best and even the most difficult of times. Haley lost her sister, but spending time with her dog Ellie, doing the activities they love, agility and heel work to music, got her through her grief. They've even been to Crufts, our most famous event for anybody who loves dogs. And thanks to Petlog's microchipping database, we're making sure that your canine companions have the best chance of being reunited with their loving families, should the worst happen. Like Jazz, who was reunited with her family after eight long and heartbreaking months. <laughs> So thank you for being on this journey as we work hard to make sure we continue to make a positive difference for dogs and their owners. Because Albert has so much joy, that really helps me with managing my chronic pain. He has completely changed my life. Albert is three years old. He is from the amazing charity Dogs for Good. It's easy to feel quite down and to find it really difficult to do normal day to day activities because of the pain. But Albert is helping me with my studies and my ambition to become a solicitor. I wouldn't have been able to do that without him by my side. I think Bertie's a hero dog because he inspires me to keep on going and sleeping outside. Night Bertie. Day 6, 11, 335. I've been raising the money for Force Rescue so I can build a shelter for the dogs. So Bertie has been helping me um, by sleeping out with me. He's helped me through those stages where I've been like, it's such a cold night, I don't really want to sleep out tonight. I don't think it's just me raising the money, we're both raising the money. Asher is a biodetection dog. Not only has he overcome what I'm sure was really quite a traumatic part, but he's used his incredible sense of smell to save human lives. He was the first step. He was the dog that would tell me whether a disease had a particular odour that a dogs and other dogs could obtain find in the future. The work Asher has done is saving and will continue to save thousands or even millions of lives in the future. Yes. 
Stella's a hero because she's shown that Staffordshire Water Terriers are amazing dogs. Stella's a rescue dog from the RSPCA. She was the first Staffordshire Bull Terrier in the country to become a police dog. She's found thousands of pounds in cash. She's found numerous drugs. She's found three guns, so very, very proud of her. For us, it's so rewarding to see her in such a positive light, especially as a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Stella's living proof that in the right hands with the right training, they're incredible dogs. I would certainly uh, call Pookie a hero to myself and the whole family. Pookie seems to be the bond that has held us all together through a very difficult time now. Lily was diagnosed with leukaemia about two months after after uh, Beauty came into her forever home. Beauty is my best friend and she's always been by my side for everything. She means the world to me because if I didn't have her, I wouldn't be as happy as I was right now. special. From the moment they melt your heart, through every moment of life together, they are always there for you. And you can always be there for them. Protect your bond with a lifetime policy from Agria Pet Insurance. Next up is Kalik. <laughs> well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. First up, the weave. Nice quick turn. It's a perfect start. So spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident run up to the seesaw. Yeah, faultless so far, but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda can make a compact SUV. Best in show. Skoda. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very good evening and welcome to this, the very first evening of Crafts 2023. May we now ask you to stand, please, for the National Anthem. The Kennel Club is celebrating 150 years. We are celebrating the world's greatest dog show. It is Gun Dog Day here at Crafts. Good evening and welcome to Thursday night of Crafts 2023.
countdown begins to best in show here in the big ring on Sunday night. Who can remember, who can forget those fabulous pictures of uh, Patrick and Baxter 12 months ago? Who's it gonna be on Sunday night? Live on Channel 4. Well, a very, very good evening. What a night tonight. It is the first of those groups. We've got so much to get through on this, the very first evening. But first of all, it is the first of our championships, our agility championships, and a very grateful thanks indeed to you, Move. And so, uh, the man who's going to take us through the next half an hour, they've been jumping, they've had agility rounds here during the day. We're now down to the final. It is the first of our championships. Nigel, what an evening we've got. Well, what an evening we've got. What an afternoon we've had. Oh, well, welcome back to Crufts 2023, the first oh, yeah. evening of Crufts. About to get underway. Jim Rosenthal here, Graham Partridge alongside me. Wherever you are watching, you are very, very welcome. And we are poised for the final of the Intermediate and Large Agility Championship. We have already had the jumping this morning, the agility this afternoon. Any eliminated dog cannot take part in this competition. What they do is a crunch the results, and here they go in the final shakeup. Looking at uh, Gary Murphy, agility judge, judging for 13 years, got three dogs in his household. So, no, so, no, so knows, uh, knows what it's all about. And we wait for the first of nine intermediate dogs, Alan Short and Beryl. Very, very fit dog, 11 years of age. Is Beryl picking up uh, five early penalties there? That will infuriate Alan from Kokodi. Taking it, setting another five penalties. Go on, Graham. And unfortunately, it's just, when, it's, when it starts to go wrong, it quite often continues to go wrong because you're actually thinking about the first mistake and why it happened and, and all the causes for it. And then you stop concentrating and then you pick up another mistake and then it, it exaggerates itself. But uh, as you say, this dog's 11 years of age, uh, really is a great advert for how fit and healthy uh, doing something active with your dog like agility is. Wrong as you say, on my monitor. Lots of... Uh, here we go. Lots of twists and turns, but finishes really nicely. He'll be really pleased. Look at that. Very proud of his dog as, we, as everybody is. They, everyone thinks they've always got the best dog. Absolutely. That's got us underway in the first of uh, nine intermediate dogs and in the, uh, the time 50 and uh, 18 faults as well. Here we go with Tony Smith and Phoebe, four-year-old Border Collie, a third-generation homebred Collie, up and down over the dog walk on that far side, heading towards us now, in and out of the tumble, good speed early on, yeah, excellent entry into the weeds from the right-hand side, tight, a right-hander there, in and out of the tunnel, tail flapping against the interior of the tunnel, and again, this is good, this is quick, this is just picked up the five penalties uh, so far, but it's going to be a fast round. Good contact at the end of the seesaw. Enjoying watching these two at work, Tony Smith and Phoebe from Nottingham over the long jump yeah. and through the tire to finish 36.4 and the five faults, Graham. Such a shame, she really did attack the course, uh, did a really great job here, and the dog finding those weaves perfectly. Nicely through the tire to finish. You're watching him, Border Collie, nine years of age, Ian Pats from Warsash near Southampton. First time at Crufts and done really well on his first championship ticket last year too. And hoping... And already eliminated early on, Graham. 
Yep. It's very difficult there, as I say, you really do need to just keep an eye on the dog uh, and make sure that you just pull it in because the natural angle is actually taking you around the back of the jump. But uh, he'll continue on. This is really good experience for him and the dog. I think it's their first time here at Crufts, certainly with this dog anyway. Uh, and there's, there's no substitute for experience, but he's done fantastically well to get here. Well done, Ian, Pat and him. Shame about that early elimination. We're still looking for a clear round. Never want to see that. Pepe, Border Collie, four years of age. Amanda Ellerton from Stafford. Jumped really well this morning. And that is so quick over the dog. Well, that is terrific speed. This is a very, very rapid dog, is Pepe, but sadly too rapid. Fox going into the weeds, but carries on through. It's got that much speed in it. It's got the ability to make up that time, perhaps. Shame about those Fox. Really swift over the ground, really noisy as well. Up and down over the A-frame, that's good and clean. Tight left-hander over the IAMs at the far end of the course. Over the seesaw too, over the U-move, right in front of our commentary position. Beautiful dog, beautifully controlled. It's a pity there's a, that five-fold blemish as it finishes through the tire. 40.2 and, and the five folds up to second place. But she did the sensible thing. She kept going because I think we've only got nine in this class so that we could end up, she could end up winning it on five, five yep. folds. If she does win it on five folds, they will not award the challenge certificate. It has to be won on a clear round. Lee Gibson and Starr, seven-year-old border collie. Lee from Shrewsbury. Won the jumping earlier on today. Lee knows this sport inside a good judge and a good competitor too. It's a fine entry and completion of the weeds. Scampering round into the tunnel underneath that A frame. Second tunnel right in front of us. This is good. This is the class of the field so far. A frame, fine. Twisting over the IAMs. How about that seesaw? That's really good too. 27 28 over the U move. Big right hander. And round we come again through the tunnel for the finale over the long jump. And through the tire. 36.7. Number one. Clear round then for BC. Star. The border collie and Lee Gibson. And that will set the cat among the pigeons, if I can say that at a dog show. You can, you've just said it. Backstage, because they'll all be watching the monitors and now they know they've got to go for it. Gamble, another border collie, Stephen Richardson from Cumbria. They know now the time to beat 36.7 and clear. Gosh, what a round. This is good too, shaping up really well though. Stephen Richardson and Gamble. Go, come on, go, come on. You're gonna have to. There's every hundredth of a second is absolutely precious. That's fine speed of contact over the A-frame. This is about the quickest we've seen, surely. This is great stuff. Over the seesaw, over the U-move. Brown we come, heading for the tunnel. Come on, come on, it's gonna be inside. It's gonna be inside, it is 55 point. 36.7 by close to a second. This is heating up beautifully, Graham. It is, and immediately Stephen set off. You could see the urgency that he was actually trying to inject in the run. He wants that extra bit of speed. That first clear round really has, you know, got them going. Fates away, Stephanie Best, big striding dog, this one, runner-up in the agility, definitely one to watch, and Stephanie knows 35.8, and clear is the one to beat, and sadly, there's problems going into the weaves there, and that has compromised the round completely. There's just, you can't lose a hundredth of a second, let alone two or three, but uh, fate will keep going. Stephanie Best from Ringwood, professional dog agility teacher. She's giving it absolutely everything despite the early problem. She still wants to finish as high as she can. Well, Stephanie and Fate, and then the long jump and the tire to complete 42.0. And uh, the five fourths up into the top five. A couple more still to come. Just, and of course, lost the time because that uh, was a refusal because she went the wrong side of the first pole. Had to bring it round and do it uh, correctly unless she wanted an elimination. Looking at uh, Joe Nash, Lulu, the Labrador, hugely popular. 
on Gun Dog Day. 500 plus Labradors entered into Crufts this year. And we've taken to Lulu. Great to see the six year old lad. And no slouch, I can tell you. No slouch. It's a good opening 15 seconds from Lulu. Through the tunnel. All looking good so far. A frame is fine. This will be in the mix for Lulu and Joe. Good work, still clear, still clean. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37.0 for Joe and for Lulu. Into the top three they go. That is a fantastic effort by the lab. Really pleased for her. I know uh, Jim and I, we've been talking about it most of the days. One of our favourites, and it has been. Uh, what a great effort there. Brilliant. Last intermediate dog, last year's winners. Zest, Border Collie, Handler, Nicola Wildman. Time to beat 35.8, and of course, without a fall. Over the top, Lord Mako, flying over that. That's a great leap as well into the tunnel. This is really, really quick. If they keep it going, it'll be fine. They didn't. Too quick going into the weeds. Don't want to be eliminated. Go again. It will not win. <laughs> really flew out of the traps, though, Graham. She had to. She, I mean, you know, there's just a really, really quick clear round in front of her. She had to go for it, really. There's nothing to be lost. Um, and, and that's what happens. You, the pressure's on. Chances are you're going to make a mistake. But really good effort, though. It's a great partnership. So they're not going to win this year. Nicola Wildman uh, and Zest. Oof. Oh, dear. And that is a elimination as well. Uh, Zest clattering into that long jump. Yeah, right? just uh, Nicholas stopped moving. The dog uh, didn't quite believe uh, that he wants to do the jump. Clapped over, but the first thing Nicola did was make sure that the dog was all right. Yeah, I just couldn't get back in time to get that third pole. Oh, dear. And he's fine. Terrific competition then, terrific intermediate competition. And we'll just confirm the result for you in, in just a moment. There we go, Stephen Richardson and Gamble first, Lee Gibson uh, and Starr second, then Joe Nash, The Lab and Lulu in third place. The three clear rounds. Great competition though. And we'll just tidy everything up for you with the rest. So what's happening now is uh, just changing the jump heights to accommodate the large dogs. Um, so it's exactly the same course. Um, it's just that the jumps are now set at the appropriate height for the large dogs. So uh, as I say, this promises to be equally as good a competition as we've just seen. First of 10 large dogs fee handler Gemma Walchester from Stoke on Trent, nine years of age. Lovely, easy dog to live with and to train. The first of 10 large dogs on show tonight. So she'll be looking to put in a, a really quick clear round to put the pressure on as she did before. She's working really hard. There's, there's a lot of tests in this course, some quick bits as well. There we are, she's making it now. It's a sharp left turn now towards the seesaw. She'll want to try and get in front of the dog as it comes off to push it round the back of 16, which this is. Now sharp turn, now there she comes into the tunnel and then it's a race for home. Come on, Gemma and Pete, this is gonna be a great start for them. Yes, well done. Excellent stuff from Gemma Walchester from close by Stoke on Trent and Fee, the nine year old border collie. 39.9 and clean. Great images as always from the main arena here at Crufts. Beautiful stuff. Alan Bray, what he doesn't know about agility. Really experienced handler. Excellent ticket, four-year-old border collie. Ticket uh, has got two tickets as well. Difficult to know which way Alan's going to play this. He knows he's got the speed overall, I think, to beat Gemma. Um, so, but does it? How far does he push it? Because the more he pushes it, the more chances are there is a mistake coming. But he's uh, Alan's attacking the course as he always does, and has been for a number of years now. He is one of the country's top handlers. And this is a good round too. 
This might well be the quickest of the, of the large dogs that, that we have seen in. And then long jump over that. Yep. That's 36.3. That's taken, that's taken three seconds out of it. Alan Bray and Ticket. I don't know about the conservative round. That was a flyer, Graham. He's very deceptive, very deceptive. But just look at that. Just shaves the top. No time lost there at all. Marita Ogilvie uh, from Bourne, Duca, six-year-old Border Collie, experienced Crofts competitor. Impressive form coming into this one, uh, hoping for a top-quality performance uh, tonight. And they'll need it as well. 36.3, the time to beat and clear. Well up with it at the moment, uh, Marita and Duca. Wonderful sounds, wonderful images as well. Constant soundtrack, Duca barking her way around this really tricky course over the Iams, over the seesaw, tight right hander over the U move. And right, this is going to be close, right up there over that long jump, and through the tile as well. 38.6. Well done, Marita. Well done, Duca. Second place and deserved applause from our judge, Gary Murphy. Really good effort there. As I say, she's an exceptional handler, and this is a great dog. Did very, very well on what is quite a tricky course. Sean Illingworth, regular at Crufts with Agent of Border Collie. Beautiful looking dog, this one. A really lovely face. Excellent. He is pretty ready to go. When can I go? 36.3, the time to beat. Already at this early stage, that will take plenty of beating. And everyone knows it. It's a stiff task, but they're giving it their best. A Sean and Agent right now. Well done. Stayed away from the deceptive A frame there. Big leap right in front of us. This is good from Sean and Agent. Sean and Agent. Nothing wrong so far. Seesaw. Quatters. Good, good contact. Good jumping. Good pace. It's really good. Big sprint finish knee. 34, 35, 35.9 from Sean and, and from Agent. Absolutely excellent. But of course, just picked up a few faults there. And that's down in fourth. Yep, such a shame there. Lovely, lovely round there from Sean. And she, she just attacks anything that's put in front of her with this dog. And the dog loves it. The more, more she pushes him, the better it is. Shannon Springford from Swanley with Fernie Nigella, five year old border collie. Bit of a wild child, this one. That's fantastic pace over the dog. Bernie Nigella really can shift. That's about the quickest we have seen over the first 14 or 15 seconds. Can they maintain it? Shannon Springford and Fernie Nigella. Excellent over the A-frame. Keep this going. This will threaten the best for certain. Really good so far. Tight twisting turn. Then up there through the tunnel. 32, 33, 34, 35. 35.5, oh, yeah, top of the pile. Impressive, I think it's probably the word I would I would use for that. Really, really nice. She always tends to get the best out of whatever dog she handles, Shannon. Um, she, she's an amazing motivator, and that's what you need. Chris Curtin, cop, four-year-old border collie. They're off and running, born in Poland, now lives in and competes for Wales. Qualified for cross via the Welsh Championships. Chris, the fitness coach as well for the Kennel Club. Oh dear. Team GB. Fit he might be, but unfortunately that's the wrong course and that's a cross arms and elimination. That's sad to see because these two look really promising, Graham. Yep, such a shame. It all happened in the blink of an eye, but uh, he's done really, really well just to get here. This, this pair has been an amazing improvement over the last 12 months. Um, and th 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 he's only got better things to come, really. So he'll just treat this as really good experience for him. Not really nice guy, great dog. Does a great job for the Kennel Club and Team GB. Well done, Chris.
Mike's first time coming across. I'm just so proud of him and grateful for the journey he has taken me on so far. No. Nope. There we go. Donna Jarvie and Vibe from Peebles on the Scottish borders. Looked as though it was the wrong side, Graham. He was good. It was good. It was good. Made okay. a great recovery by the dog there. OK, there was a groan from the crowd. There was a groan from me. You say it's good. That's good enough for me, for Donna and for Vibe. Seesaw, good. Might not quite be quick enough, but it's very, very respectable. 35, 36, 36.9. superb run there. Third place. So we're gonna. I think we're gonna have another look at these weaves just to see if we can see what happened. The judge was there. So in the first two poles. Ah, look at that. Good call, Graham. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not contradicting you, Graham. <laughs> and the judge is always right, and he's the guy who called it. So. <laughs> Shape. Five years of age. Martin Reed, the handler. Second in the jumping this morning. Sweet girl, Martin, really successful handler too. Wow, that style, that proper style through the weaves from Shape. Excellent. This is shaping up really well this round. Good over the A-frame. Come on, come on, come on. Seesaw. Yep. This will be very, very close to the to the peak. Very, very close. 33, 34. 35.3 for Martin Reaver and for Shape. Very close. It's the best yet. It is. It is. He is just so deceptive. You see, uh, the Shannon looked as though she was going really, really quickly. This guy looked as though he was just like almost not competing. But it's all about tightness and lines of the dog uh, to get the maximum out of it, and he's done just that. Penultimate. A large dog, Nara Cuddy, third last year, definitely one to watch with Lemon the Border Collie, came first in the agility this afternoon. 35.3 and clear they have to be. They will have to shift and make no mistakes along the way, and they're doing just that in the first 10 seconds. Wonderful, towing the way through those weaves. This is absolutely excellent from Nara and from Lemon. Can they do it? Can they get inside? 35.3 and can they keep it clean and tidy it's all excellent first 25 seconds keep scampering keep eating up the time keep those hundredths of a second down 31 32 33 34 35.3 for nara and for lemon whoa 35.330 plays 35.328 it means second place. Two hundredths of a second. Two th yeah. Uh, two thousandths of a second. Uh, and the person who's beaten her is her partner. So there's going to be a few arguments tonight. Two thousandths of a second. It's that close. But a fantastic run there. Uh, she'll be really pleased with that. Last large dog. Dave Munnings, really successful legacy, the three-year-old Border Collie, runner-up in the agility. The time to beat, 35.328. A couple of thousandths of a second, separating first and second place. And Dave knows they're going to have to be in absolute peak form with legacy. Clearing that jump by miles. This competition has come to the boil, and it is boiling right now, really bubbling along. Just keep watching the clock at the bottom left of your screen. Sadly, picking up some faults there. Just picked up those faults. It's a really good time, 35, 35.0. It would have been the best, but for those five faults. Really, really great effort, and especially for such a young dog here. So this is not the not the last we're going to see of certainly of this dog. Uh, there's so much more to come. Great style over that, and a great big leap there. Just totally concentrating on what Dave's got doing. So thanks very much for being with us. We are still on to get another one. Nothing else coming up shortly.
decided by thousands of a second. Look at that, 35.3 to 8, 35.330, 35.5. 7-3. Astonishing, close, high-quality competition. Well, we've come to expect that at, uh, at Cross, but there's no reason at all why we shouldn't gasp uh, at the sheer excellence that we've seen over the last half an hour or so. What a wonderful competition. Next, Next up is, is Kamik. Easy. easy. <laughs> well, he's cool. eager. Let's see how they perform. Round. First up, the weave. weave. Nice quick turns. Through it's a turn. perfect start. Round with so turn. spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. And yeah, faultless so Keep far, going. but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kamik, yes. our compact SUV. Ooh. Our best in show. Skoda. So what a final that was in our Agility Championships. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is presentation time. And we are delighted to welcome Neil Brettel, the CCO of Limp Bells, to do our presentation alongside Arena Director, Mr. Nick Brooks-Ward. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, first up in the intermediate, the Agility Champion 2023 with Agility Champion, Mole Gamble, Demonic Risk, Stephen Richardson. Oh, Thank you. Well done. And oh, the reserve the ticket going to Eurostar and handler Lee Gibson. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you very much, appreciate it, thank you.
Okay, and now we move on to our large category, the Agility Champion 2023, with Lil Hayes spring into shape, Martin Reed. <laughs> And the reserve tickets going to Agility Champion Little Hayes Dark Pleasure, Nara Kuni! And that completes our presentation. And now give them a huge round of applause. It's Lap of Honor time. Well, what an evening, and there's still plenty more to come. Day one of Crufts 2023. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you're aware of the incredible work of the Kennel Club Charitable Trust. They've been making a difference for dogs for many, many years. And I'm sure you remember last year at Crufts, with support from the Kennel Club, the appeal was launched for Ukraine to support dogs and their owners affected by the war. And since then, an incredible amount has been raised. £260,000 has been raised, ladies and gentlemen. And one year on, we want to try and get that amount up to an incredible £300,000. And we can do that with your help, your generosity, and our very special auction. You can bid in our online auction for some amazing items. Uh, the very special auction includes experience days, limited edition artwork, also a beautiful painting that's been gifted by Stuart Mallard, who's going to be judging Best in Show this year. Also in tribute to our late Queen, photographer Anne Sabo has created two limited edition framed prints as well. There is lots of items. I'm sure you're going to be interested in placing a bid. And of course, you're going to help us raise that total. You can find out more by heading online to crufts.auction and of course you can head over to the Kennel Club Charitable Trust stand. You'll find them in Hall 3, Stand 61 and you can see the details on the screen there as well. Thank you so much for your generosity and I think that amount deserves a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for the work of the Kennel Club Charitable Trust, supported by the Kennel Club. Well, 2023 is no ordinary year. It is a very special year as the Kennel Club celebrates 150 years. We're now going to look back on just a few of those highlights over the last 150 years. I probably wouldn't be here, to be honest, if it weren't for Ellie. Every day, I put my life in my love's paws. Chewie never left his side. Without him, I wouldn't have my husband. And she's still here today because of the dog. He's everything, not just to me, to my whole family. Day in, day out, dogs change lives. That's why, for 150 years, the Kennel Club and its members have been making a positive difference for dogs and their owners. We guide new owners, helping them to find the right dogs brought into the world by responsible and caring breeders who want the very best for them. Giving puppies like Barney, a flat-coated retriever, the best possible chance to lead a healthy, happy life. Thanks to DNA testing, we've eradicated diseases such as CLAD, an inherited blood disorder in Irish setters. So Sky, Marta and Pear, as well as all Irish setters, can now lead healthier lives. There's always more to be done, which is why we continue to lead the way in helping breeders eradicate inherited diseases, improving dog health for generations to come. 
and we do all of this because when you have healthy dogs living with loving owners, the real magic of dog ownership begins. We're helping to build that unique bond between dog and owner through a range of training and activities that bring joy in the best and even the most difficult of times. Haley lost her sister, but spending time with her dog Ellie, doing the activities they love, agility and heel work to music, got her through her grief. They've even been to Cruft, our most famous event for anybody who loves dogs. And thanks to Petlog's microchipping database, we're making sure that your canine companions have the best chance of being reunited with their loving families, should the worst happen. Like Jazz, who was reunited with her family after eight long and heartbreaking months. <laughs> So thank you for being on this journey as we work hard to make sure we continue to make a positive difference for dogs and their owners. Ladies and gentlemen, Good evening and welcome to the Kennel Club Junior Warrant Final. This competition began in 1998 and is a grand final of those dogs who have achieved their Junior Warrant from last year. Achieving a Junior Warrant is one of the highest levels of success for young pedigree dogs as they need to win multiple first prize awards at Open and Championship shows before they reach 18 months of age. Only 600 dogs achieve this accolade every year. To reach this final, Junior Warrant winners had to win through from a qualifying heat at an open show last year. That qualified them for the semi-finals at London's biggest dog event, Discover Dogs, in October. From there, 10 dogs were chosen to compete in this final today. Before we meet the finalists, I have great pleasure in introducing you to the judge of this prestigious competition. He's currently approved to award CCs in 45 breeds across six of the groups and is passed to judge the gun dog, utility and toy groups, plus best in show at championship show level in the UK. Ladies and gentlemen, being escorted into the ring by Tom Mather, Chairman of Crufts Committee, please welcome the judge for the Junior Warrant Final, Lee Cox. Now with our judge in position, let's put your hands together for all these wonderful Junior Warrant finalists, starting with the Gordon Setter. The Welsh Springer Spaniel. The Siberian Husky. The Briard. The Border Terrier. The French Bulldog. And now the Standard Poodle. The Tibetan Spaniel. The Tibetan Terrier. And the Smooth Coat Chihuahua. So this is our lineup for a very experienced judge and exhibitor, Mr. Lee Cox, just taking a first look at this lineup of 10 young dogs. So our first dog coming out to be assessed individually, like in breed competition, this is the Gordon Setter. 
This is a dog, and it's two and a half years old. Qualified at Tame and Oxfordshire show in August last year. Ladies and gentlemen, the Gordon Setter. This particular dog is known as a bit of a clown at home. Life isn't very serious in his world. And apparently his owner says he would win the waggiest tail competition. That's the Gordon Setter. Now on to the next of our gun dogs. This the Welsh Springer Spaniel. This is a two and a half year old bitch. She qualifies at the Royal Cheshire Show under Patsy Hollings. The Welsh Springer Spaniel. This dog is apparently very vocal at home until she's fed first thing in the morning. Nothing bothers her though. She has a stubborn side. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the Welsh Springer Spaniel. <laughs> Moving on to the only working dog in this lineup. This is the Siberian Husky. This is a two-year-old bitch that qualified at Cheshire Agricultural Society under Judge Patsy Hollings. That's the Siberian Husky. I'm told the great-grandmother of this dog won through to this very same final in 2012. So this bitch, too hard bitch, is following on in the family footsteps, the Siberian Husky. And now we move on to the pastoral breed of the Briard. This is an 18 month old dog. He qualified at York Canine Association. He's affectionately known as Teeth at home. I wonder why. He's apparently also a keen gardener and loves re-landscaping the garden. He has a special preference for his dad's socks. That's the Briard. All these young dogs are performing so well in this ring. Once again, put your hands together for the Briard. Now we move on to our first of our table dogs. This is a terrier breed. This is a border terrier. It's a two-year-old dog and qualified at Tame and Oxford. The judge at that show was Alastair Moss. Apparently this dog is called Winston and he's a loving little chap. He loves nothing more than happily walking for miles in the fields or upside down in his handler's bed. That's the Border Terrier. It's a lovely big ring for these youngsters to show off. Ladies and gentlemen, the Border Terrier. And here we have on the table the French Bulldog. This is a two-year-old male. He qualified at Hawley and District under Judge Karen Angia. I'm told 
That togo is cheeky, boisterous, and invariably at the centre of absolute chaos. This, the French Bulldog. Making the most of that ring, these young junior warrant winners, the French Bulldog. It's what it's all about, enjoying themselves in this big ring on center stage. Now we come on to the standard poodle. This is the seventh dog in our lineup. This is a three-year-old bitch qualified at Sedgefield and District Agricultural and Horticultural Society under Mr. Colin Gullen. Zoe, uh, Zoe is a typical poodle, loving life, enjoying herself in this big ring, full of attitude and loves being in the spotlight. That's the standard poodle. And now we come back onto the table for this Tibetan Spaniel. This is a two and a half year old bitch. She qualified at Tame and Oxfordshire County Canine Society under Alistair Moss aptly named. She's called Blondie and she lives life to the full. She's another one that loves running around, getting dirty in the fields. But here she is strutting her stuff in the main ring at Crafts. This the Tibetan Spaniel. This breed is supposed to be aloof with strangers, but Bloody didn't get that memo, and she kisses everyone she meets. Ladies and gentlemen, the Tibetan Spaniel. Now we come on to the Tibetan Terrier. This is another two and a half year old bitch. She qualified at Hawley and District Dog Show under Karen Angier. Flory is a real character. She's another one that loves jumping up on tables and worktops. Any high table she can find. Apparently she even falls asleep up there on the worktop. That's the Tibetan Terrier. They're all performing so well in this ring tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together one more time. The Tibetan Terrier. And to our final finalist, this is the Smooth Coat Chihuahua. This is a two-year-old dog. Came through from the Discover Dogs semi-final to win a place here at Crufts. Arthur is a very happy boy and he loves nothing more than a good walk, meeting new friends and tormenting the poor postman. He's a joy to live with. It's the Smooth Coat Chihuahua. Congratulations making it here to the Junior Warren final. a very long way around that ring. Let's give him our full support all the way to the end. That's Arthur. So we have an even split here. There's five males and five females in this lineup. Who is it going to be for the top prize? 
Junior Warrant winner at Cross 2023. We're going to see them going round one more time. The boards are out. It's that final look, it's the most important part. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for all of these 10 marvellous young Junior Warrant winners. All the handlers making sure that they're making the most of their show dog in this main ring at Crofts. I think we are ready for a winner. The Junior Warrant winner the 2023 is the Border Terrier. And runner up, the Briard. Many congratulations to the, all of the other finalists, but the winning dog is the Border Terrier. Champion or Brick Sky Never Back Down, owned by Mr. and Miss Lauren Goddard. Lauren is handling here. And in runner up position, we have the Briard Foster Brie, just unique. Let's see them go around one more time to see the lap of honour. Congratulations, the winner of the Junior Warren competition, the Border Terrier. The runner of the Briards. And I have great pleasure in handing over to Graham and Kim for the most exciting, one of my most favourite competitions here at Crafts. The Breeders' Final. Protect your bond with a lifetime policy from Arvia Pet Insurance. Ladies and gentlemen, we now go to the final the Kennel Club Breeders' Competition. This competition, promoted by the Kennel Club, is sponsored by Arvia Pet Insurance and involves teams accruing points, group and general championship shows. Points have been recorded by our dogs who published a leaderboard within their newspaper throughout 2022. Each team comprises of three or four dogs of one breed, all bred by the same breeder or breeding partnership. 
There are 40 qualifiers, but however, there have been some late withdrawals, so we have 36 teams with us this evening. You join us now for the finals of the Kennel Club Breeders' Competition. I'm joined in the commentary box by international judge Frank Kane. Now, Frank, this really is the spectacle of, of the dog show world, isn't it? Absolutely. One of the highlights of the canine year, and to, to give credit to clever breeding. So what we're going to see is breeders come in with either three or four dogs that they have bred. But first of all, time to introduce our judge. So this is Sigurd Wilberg, really successful, isn't he, isn't he Frank? Yes, he's uh, from Norway, but has lived in England now for a lot of years. A very talented judge and breeder. He's been very successful in a lot of breeds himself. So he knows the skills about good breeding. So it's a Canix kennel, isn't it? And they've had everything, boxers, bouviers, miniature wire dachshunds. And including reserve besties in short cruffs one year with a pointer. So really knows what he's looking for. So this competition, we're seeing the final of it. It was actually pre-judged. So when you see the dogs running in and you think, gosh, he's, he's judging them quickly, he's not. He's had their hands on them, hasn't he? So he's got a short list in his mind of what he's going to pull out, yes. First breed group by the ring, the Hungarian Visa. So here we have the Oaks Warren Hungarian Vizlas. And of course, what the judge is looking for is an evenness in type amongst the four exhibits. So if they look the same to you, that's good. They look as though they've come out of the same mould. <laughs> and here's another group of Hung Hungarian Vizlas too. The Vizlan. Vizlania. And now we have the backup retrievers. Ah, and here's uh, people might <laughs> see Jenny Campbell, the dragon from Dragon's Den, leading them in with the Rhone Vogue flat coats. So next we have the first of our sets of Nova Scotia duck tolling retrievers, the Usenits. Yes, from the Birmingham area, so they're quite local here. And the second, another group of Nova Scotia duck tollers, the Kretzhengen. This marvellous, marvellous breed, rich red colour with some white markings on the chest and tail and their feet. And here's a group of lovely Welsh Springers coming in from the Channongel Kennel from North Allerton in North Yorkshire. Followed by the slightly larger Venise Mountain Dogs. These are the Waldershelves. They're the, the tricolour Swiss herding dogs. And here's... Canadian Eskimo Dogs. Yes. This is Ankana Kennel. And again, the Newfoundlands come in, three of them here, all blacks. From the Gunners, Gunners Newfs kennel. Here we have Fosterbury Briards coming into the ring. And so we've got a nice a variation of the colours there. That absolutely, you can see. the fawns and the blacks. And again, to achieve even quality and type in both colours is an achievement. They're followed in by the Pyrenean Mountain Dogs. Three of them. Corland Kennel. So three or four dogs is allowed in this. All the tails carried in the wheel over their backs, which is correct for the breed. And here's some cardigan corgis coming in. The Coriand Kennel. Uh, two, bl two blue mills and a tricolor, I believe, if I can see it correctly for me, yes. And wonderful to see a second lot of Welsh corgi, corgi cardigans here. This is the Elisar Kennel. Yes. Three brindles and a red there. Now we have the lamb-like appearance of the Bedlington Terrier. And, and they're light mincing action, a little bit of lift and lightness in their carriage, and a nice arch over the loin, a feature of the breed. They're the woolly top kennel, which is a wonderful <laughs> yes. affix, isn't it? <laughs> and, and here the, the Manchester Terriers, yes, the sleek black and tan Manchesters. This is the Talonor kennel. Very successful kennel. Oh, I've got a soft spot for these. We've got Norfolk Terriers coming in now, Watercroft. Uh, highly, highly successful. I had a wonderful year in the breed rings. Here are three of them. There's little Norfolks, Cobby, and here some Parson Russells. So marvellous. One of my favourite breeds. So rustic, workmanlike, unexaggerated. That's the Diggerden kennel. Diggerden, which is a good name for Parson Diggerden, Russells. Yeah. Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, look at this smart array of, of Scottish terriers now. The ladies ca wearing tartan sashes over their shoulders. So this is the Diverdell kennel. And here are some Petit Bassett Griffin Vaudienne coming in. So this is Everland kennel. Two varieties of classic Griffon Bondi, and this is the smaller. And here come the miniature smooth Dachshunds, strutting their stuff, very confident coming in. Mummy's army camel. Don't you tell them they're the smallest, because <laughs> they don't believe you, do they? <laughs> 
And here, uh, marvellous to see in the men, a, a group of harriers. This is the Hennessy Kennel. Uh, only in the last year have they had classes back in the sh in the show scene in the UK. And here are the Ibethan hounds, that light lifting gate of the Ibethans. The Abbotstoke Kennel, followed by the giant of the competition. We've got the Irish Wolfhounds here. This is the White Orchid Kennel. And here, <laughs> very, very, <laughs> very South African in their dress here, the, the Ridgebacks the in their bush hats. They were hunters' dogs, of course, and this is the significance of their outfit tonight. But I would emphasize that the judge takes no account of the outfits or the yeah, of, of the handlers. And here is a group of whippets. This is the Tig Isle Kennel. Yeah, the, the outfits are purely for our enjoyment, aren't they, Frank? <laughs> and here are the Eurasias, very smart set, the Spitz dogs. And the Affix Albion Spitz Kennel. Uh, very successful in the breed. And it, it's, it's something the same but smaller. The German Spitz coming in now. The Claren Kettle. This is the middle variety. Yes. And here come three apricot miniature poodles. This is Karen Killen Kennel. Now, he's a very uniform set of Tibetan Spaniels. They're a wonderful breed, long lived, highly intelligent. The Belgay Kennel. I'm not sure Tartan is Tibetan, is it? <laughs> it's a new one on me. <laughs> a second set of Tibetan Spaniels here. This is the Torfness Kennel. From Scotland, based in Scotland, been very successful for many years. And here's another Tibetan breed, the Tibetan Terriers coming in now. The Kelmore Spitz Kennel. From the Toy Group, we have the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. And that comes from the Callanland Kennel. All three Blenheims, very smart, beautiful, rich colour, set off by the blue outfits of the handlers, of course. And here is the the cot Cotton de Tuliars, the Coo Cotton Kennel from the north of England near Saltburn. Long, long established in the breed, they brought some of the early ones into the country, I believe, the Coo Cotton. Followed by a really popular kennel here, the Lariva Pomeranians, Avril Cathwera Purdy. And that's a eye-catching colour in the outfit there. And a, a bit of sparkle. The, the, the little rolling tugs coming in full of their own self-importance. So this is the Rodenash kennel. Rodenash, they've been successful in the breed of stakes before. So to qualify for this competition, the breeders collect points in the previous year, and the top 40 qualify. So what an eye full of canine talent there, yes, marvellous. Most dogs you get in the ring, isn't it, in the arena? Uh, the judge just taking a quick look round, refreshing his memory because yes, he judged it, these in the afternoon. In his mind, what he's got in the, the shortlist. All breeders teams have been prejudged by our judge, Sigurd Waldo, earlier today. And following another war, and like we said, he really is looking for that cookie cutter, isn't he? So he's looking for type. And evenness and correct type. You know, it's not just that they all look the same, they have to be correct for the breed. Correct type and even quality through the group. So you need an all-round judge for this because they need to know the breed standards across the groups. Now, he's having a long look. So, our shortlist, the first of our shortlisted teams. So he's going to shortlist. The pointer kennel. The ten shilling first of all, we have the 10 shilling pointers. Yes, 10 shilling. Not sure they, they realise. Where are they? They haven't arrived. That's unfortunate, oh, they right. must not been able to stay. <laughs> no. Maybe the weather, they had to leave. So first finalist, Kretz Hendon, Nova Scotia Duck Tolling There they are, they, they look very smart, coming in lovely rich colour. That tail carriage, you know, arched oh, over the back, that's very typical the for the breed. Also from the Dundalk group. Ah, uh, there's the Challengel, Welsh Springers from North Allerton. Our next finalist are the kennel of Bedlingtons, the Woolly Tops. Oh, the Woolly Tops are in. I the like Woolly Tops are in. Yeah, lovely. So the Bedlington Terriers are coming in. 
And another team from the Terriers. So this is the Woolly Tops. The yes. Team of Norfolk Terriers. Ah, uh, there's ah, the yeah, Waterfront yeah, water yeah. Norfolk's face. coming in. Our next finalist group. The Petit Basset Griffon Vondi, and this is the Errolang Kennel coming into the shortlist. And there they come. Very and even. The, uh, the Albion, Spitz, Albion Spitz Eurasius coming in. Very smart. Bred by Miss Watkins. And our last finalist. And the final the finalist. Lariva Pomeranians. The Pomeranians. Yes. Lariva, no strangers to this competition. Always in with a shout, and they've got again a variety of colours. So These li light, of dainty teams. little poms. So as our other breeders seem to leave the main ring, can I ask you to show your appreciation and congratulate so them The pointers unfortunately couldn't stay, so that leaves us with this short list well of seven. So I'm sure it's a great achievement for all of the breeders. One of the targets in their lives is to get here for the final at Crufts. A mark of achievement. I remember when this competition was introduced and it was so brand new and I just remember everybody just stopping to look. And it's, it's become slicker as the years have yes. come on and people have got keener and they're getting their, their exhibitors together to have a little team together. Yes, there was a lot of um, playing between teammates to start with, wasn't there? <laughs> so we're just going to wait for all the other finalists to clear the ring. We'll go back to the far end of the ring. And I think our judge... So the judge is going to move each of the teams. Now this is where he really needs giving directions to them. They're going to move out and back. So he's going to look at the rear movement on them and then the, the front movement as they come back. So it's hard enough to judge one dog. So, so this <laughs> keeping four in eye. This is when he needs four sets of eyes, yeah. really. Yes. So, but that's a very typey set, and all in unison there. And we said the outfits don't matter, but it, it is up to the handlers to be able to move in unison well, to try and get them to best advantage, isn't well, it? Yeah. And Lovely set. So those were the Kretschengen Nova Scotia Duck Tollers. Angela Chan Chandler. Chandler from North Allerton, and again this rich red and white colour really standing out against the green carpet. And you can see there just the, the salt and pepper there, so we've got some different yes. ages, haven't yes. we? And actually there's... And Handler. <laughs> and three, th three generations of the family have been breeding English Springers and Welsh Springers and, and Cocker Spaniels also, so... And the, the youngest member seems to be on the end, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So family of dogs, family of handlers. So next move. Let's see. So he's say goodbye to the Welsh Springers. Watching them go around, taking in the balance, the top line. Are they out of the same mould? In beautiful condition there. Beautifully presented. So here we have the Woolly Top Bedlington Terriers, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Baldwin. So they should look like lambs, should well, they? Uh, <laughs> but don't, be deceived by, don't be deceived by the lamb-like appearance because they're a working terrier with a big set of strong gnashers. So, <laughs> you know, in the 19th century, they used to bring home the supper. They were such good hunters. But the really distinctive top line there, the yeah. rise and fall. And this little lifting action. It's not a big ground-covering action. It's light and lifting. The standard says mincing action. Mincing. Okay. I love the pom-poms on the end of the ears as well. Well, the, protection. the protection tassels, yes. Little tassels on the end of the ear. The fine ligament of the ear protected by that tuft of hair. And his long heads. Lovely shot of them coming, yes. So next to move, we have the Watercroft Norfolk Terriers, owned by Mrs. Gee. So... Very successful kennel. And of course, some groups have three today. Some have four. It's, a, you know, three is the minimum they should have, but it won't be a handicap to them, but it's rather good that if you've got four of them and they're all the same, that, you know, will be an advantage. Round they go, the Watercroft Norfolks. Full of personality, these dogs. Small but mighty. Low to ground, but very active. 
And again, a working terrier. They want strong muzzles and good teeth and underjaw. So next to move will be the Petty Bassy Griffon Vondins. These are the Erilan Kennel. This team is spread by Mrs. Mr. Mrs. Foot and Mrs. Pauly. There you are. All carrying their sterns nicely, like a little scimitar. They've practiced, haven't they? You can tell they're <laughs> moving really well. They look to have very good coats from here. You want the rustic, they shouldn't be overpresented. Uh, the petit's the there, yes. Erilan. And now. Now come to the breeders' team of Eurasia. Eurasia, Mrs. Watkins She's with her Albion Spitz. We'll Boy, see the breed in the Spitz, utility Spitz. group on Sunday. They have become popular, Spitz. very smart, Spitz-like, with this high-set tail carried over the back, wedge-shaped heads, all of these shaded red, brisk, clean action on the move. And finally, to move in our shortlist, we have the Pomeranians. So the Lariva kennel. And this is another Spitz breed. This is the smallest breed of Spitz. The same characteristics as we just saw in the Eurasias. This wedge-shaped head, very buoyant in their action. They should be fine-boned. And as you said, the colour actually, it doesn't matter that they're not all the same because we're looking for them to meet the breed standard and all those colours are correct. Exactly, it's quite a skill to get the same type in all the colours. Yes. Very brisk, that one, little red one and second in looks really, really buoyant on the move, really enjoying it. So alert in that expression, which is really typical of the spin sprees. <laughs> really enjoying the big occasion, I think, by the looks of it. So as we said, so judge has prejudged these dogs. We will now take a final look. On their success here at first. 2023. So we're going first to fourth in this competition. Long look before he makes his mind up. It's very important to know your placings before you start calling them out. Do you have a favourite, Frank? Well, there's a lot of nice ones. Sure, I thought the, the Poms are always good. The Spits look good. The Eurasias, and I like the, the Nova Scotia Duck Tollers. They were very smart. But again, he's had his hands on them. He's been close to them. He'll know best. Yeah, I think we're ready. Decision is made. It's a very strong final. The, winner, so the winners, the winner, the <laughs> oh, yeah. we are the Pomeranians. the Pomeranians. So this the is Lariva the Lariva Kennel owned by Avril Calthera Purdy. And that's Avril in the, in the lead pole position with her husband following. So. Second place, the Nova oh, Scotia. <laughs> are you doing well too, out of two, Frank? Yep. <laughs> very Frank smart, Schengen lovely Kennel. to see the them Kretschengen here. Schengen Kennel. Third place, the, the oh, Norfolk. So the North Norfolk Terrier, the, the Watercroft Kennel. And finally, the and Albion finally Spitz, the, the, the yeah, marvellous, the Eurasia. Good. And great to see a breed there that's not as instantly recognisable yet, yeah. but he's growing in popularity. Yeah. Yeah. So we have our, our winners in this competition that has been going throughout the year. So there we go. Kennel. Four finalists in this competition, which was run throughout 2022. And we have our winners. So Miss uh, Mrs. Avril, Corthera Purdy, and her Pomeranians from the Lariva Kennel. Well, what a lovely achievement. They've been placed, if they've not won it before, they've certainly been placed they've in the final before. They've definitely been placed before, yes. yes. So always consistent over the years. They've been they've been doing it. Uh, I think um, Avril was a schoolgirl. Her mother before her bred them. So she started as a schoolgirl, and here she is winning with her husband by her side. She did a lot to get young people into handling. Exactly, and you will see the ones with her. She sold them good dogs to get them into the breed. And I think we're going to hand you back to the main ring, to Marina.
when they will let good dogs go to other people. I think her expression says maybe she hasn't won before. It's given me indeed a very great pleasure to talk to... Hello, Avril. You've been here before, I know. But can you just sum up for us what that win means to you? Oh, it's fabulous. Um, you enter a team, you hope they're going to behave, you hope they're all going to be in Kate. Um, you come to Crufts and you end up here. It's, it's really lovely. Very, very pleased and so happy. And the competition has been really hard this year, so very happy. That's wonderful. And can you just tell us the, the full names of all your dogs here, so your pet names of each one? This is Kapow, champion and Irish champion, Lyre Reavers, the power and glory. This is Garfield, champion, Lyre Reavers, wildest dreams. That's Justine, Lyre Reavers, black, flying black in time. And, oh God, Ly, that's James, Lyre Reavers, well, fancy that. <laughs> well, I think you need a gold star for actually remembering all those names. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. It's an incredible achievement for this breeder, the Le Riva Kennel of Pomeranians. So, no matter how many times you've won, there's still obviously a thrill in winning again, yes? So, I think we're going to see a lap of honour now. The Nova Scotians may have to let the Pomeranians have a head start, I think. There we have the Lariva Pomeranians, winners of the Breeders Competition final here at Crafts. Second place, the Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retrievers, Fred Schengen, Kevin. But there they go, those buoyant strutting their stuff, those little Pomeranians. Third place, the Norfolk Terriers. Watercroft Kennel, and then finally those Eurasias, and the Albion Spits. And they'll, they'll be having a real celebration tonight, all of these place groups, I'm sure, a great achievement. clearing the arena, the end of the breeders' competition for this year. Yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident yep. run up to the seesaw. And yeah, faultless so far, on. but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda can eat yes. our compact SUV. Ooh. Best in show. Skoda. Well, once again, we are celebrating the unique relationship that people have with their dogs. The Kennel Club Hero Dog Awards are back for 2023. And you're about to see some incredible stories of how dogs change lives and how you can vote. The Kennel Club Hero Dog Awards 2023. Let's find out more about this year's finalists. I think Bertie's a hero dog because he inspired. Wonderful. Next up is Kameek. Easy. easy. <laughs> well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. Round. First up, the weave. Round. Nice quick turns. Round. It's a perfect start. Round. So spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. And yeah, faultless so Keep far, going. but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kamuk, yes. our compact SUV. Oh. Our best in show. Skoda. myself and the whole family. Booty seems to be the bond that has held us all together through a very difficult time. Uh, Lily was diagnosed with leukaemia about two months after, after uh, Booty came into her for, forever home. Booty is my best friend and she's always been by my side for everything. She means the world to me because if I didn't have her, I wouldn't be as happy as I was right now.
Because Albert has so much joy, that really helps me with managing my chronic pain. He has completely changed my life. Albert is three years old. He is from the amazing charity Dogs for Good. It's easy to feel quite down and to find it really difficult to do normal day-to-day -day activities because of the pain. But Albert is helping me with my studies and my ambition to become a solicitor. I wouldn't have been able to do that without him by my side. Stella's a hero because she's shown that Staffordshire Bull Terriers are amazing dogs. Stella's a rescue dog from the RSPCA. She was the first Staffordshire Bull Terrier in the country to become a police dog. She's found thousands of pounds in cash. She's found numerous drugs. She's found three guns, so very, very proud of her. For us, it's so rewarding to see her in such a positive light, especially as a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Stella's living proof that in the right hands with the right training, they're incredible dogs. Asher is a bi-detection dog. Not only has he overcome what I'm sure was really quite a traumatic part, but he's used his incredible sense of smell to save human lives. He was the first step. He was the dog that would tell me whether a disease had a particular odour that a dogs and other dogs could be trained to find in the future. The work Asher has done is saving and will continue to save thousands or even millions of lives in the future. So there we are, some incredible stories, ladies and gentlemen, of the support that dogs give us in the face of adversity. Now, the winner will be announced here in the main arena on Sunday night, and the voting uh, is open until four o'clock on Sunday. So head online to vote, crufts.org.uk forward slash HDA. Your vote really could make a difference. Of course, they are all very worthy winners, but please do cast your vote the Kennel Club Hero Dog Awards 2023. I could not go for a walk without a dog. It just wouldn't be worth going for a walk, would it? You know, it just, it just wouldn't. Today, and, and tracing its history all the way back to 130 plus years ago, the gamekeepers' classes have always been a feature of Gundog Day at Crufts. And uh, it is so very special because in what, 20 minutes time, we'll have our gamekeepers' classes and Skinners have been supporting those all day. But now we turn our attention to the Gundog Group display. And the Gundog Group, as we all know, contains some of the United Kingdom's most popular breeds, including the Labrador, the Cocker Spaniel, the Hungarian Vizsla. Not only do uh, many of these breeds make excellent family pets, but each of the breeds has also been bred for that most specific of purposes. And showcasing the abilities of these wonderful breeds, we are truly privileged here tonight. We have got some of the best handlers in the world. John Bailey, the chairman of the Kennel Club Field Trial Committee, working his Spaniels and Labrador here with us today. John has been competing in trials for well over 30 years and has made up over 25 field trial champions. He's also won the Springer Spaniel Championship with the Springer Spaniel Reese Moore Fizzy. Joining him with the Spaniels is Roy Ellershaw. Roy has made up six field trial champions, handling his Clumber Spaniel Fen the top winning clumber in field trials this season. A fantastic achievement. Finally, Rory Major, also a member of the field trial committee, working his uh, HPR breeds in the ring here this evening. Rory, a real champion of the HPR dogs, working a variety of breeds, including the Brittany's, the German uh, wired hair pointers. He and his Hungarian wire hair vizslers, uh, Jago, won the prestigious HPR championship held on the spectacular moors of Yorkshire in November 2021. What a treat we've got for us in the next 15 minutes or so. And delighted to welcome our Kennel Club Field Trial Secretary, Kate Brewers, 
to take us through this wonderful display. Thank you very much, Nick. So as you've been seeing, these are very young puppies that we've got in the ring. Roy, he's got Izzy, and they're both six months old, and John over there with Mickey. So what they're doing is just getting these little dogs to hunt into the cover. I don't know if you've seen, they've got little tennis balls snuck in their pockets. So they're encouraging them to hunt the cover. So John's got Mickey in there now, checking, checking, make sure it's in there. And then what they do is, yeah, there is something in there. Has she got it? Oh, good girl. Well done, Izzy. Only six months old. This really is quite an achievement. So they want the dogs to be excited, enthusiastic about the training. You can see how much they love it. Lots of fuss, lots of praise. I think, oh, we've got some retrieves going. Oh, oh, she's a keen, she's keen. So she thinks it's back in there. How's Roy gonna, there she's seen it, good girl. Well done, Izzy. Now Mickey's in a different bit of cover. Is there something in there? Oh, check it again. Always good to encourage them that the handler's quite often right. Don't just rely on himself. Good boy. Checking. What's he got in there? This is how we teach these dogs to hunt the cover. Check for game in the shooting field. Oh, who's going to get it? I think Izzy's on a competition. <laughs> See, lots of praise, good boy. Just giving them the gentle encouragement. And he's found his tennis ball, good job, Vicky. Well done. Very, very young dogs, so they're not trying to force them to do anything they don't want to do. Lots of tail wagging, lots of praise, lots of encouragement. That's, of course, the beginning stages of our training. So just bear with us while we swap dogs. Obviously, they're quite a handful, as many of you know. And out here, while they're not looking, we might be putting in a few distractions. Ooh. So these are our bolting rabbits that we would use to simulate a flushing game in the field. Wonderful members of Field Trial Committee joining us here today, being our wonderful helpers, so thank you very much to them, of course. In a minute, we'll have Ember and B, which will be the intermediate dogs. That will show you how we progress our training. Here they come. So two more Cocker Spaniels, working Cockers. This is a really big environment for them. They're not used to hunting in the arena, of course. All of our field trials usually happen outside. In fact, not usually, always happen outside. And they would be, obviously, with real live game. We're, of course, using dummies in the arena today. So John's got Ember, just sitting her up nicely. Leads off, and Roy has got B. So you can see these dogs are a little bit further along on their training, watching handlers intently. What's he got in his pocket there? Something sneaky. Whistle on and casting them off. So this would be hunting. In a field trial, we would have the Spaniels hunting in pairs under each one of the judges or two judges if we were working that system. Don't forget what we put in there earlier, ladies and gentlemen. So we're just hunting through the cover. Again, lots of enthusiasm, lots of excitement from these little dogs. They don't know whether there's nothing in there, so they're just checking. Roy's just, see, she's even hunting the ground. She trusts her handler so much that she's gonna check anywhere that Roy asks her to do so. Oh, she's come across something in there. Now, remember what we saw. Now, because Roy's got um, B, she's hunting there. What can she find? What she found. Oh, and the rabbit's gone. Did you see that, ladies and gentlemen? And the other one's gone as well. Um, might be having a few technical issues here. This is, it's a bit of a dead rabbit. Come on, rabbit, get along. There we go. And the rabbits are away. But did you watch the dogs there, ladies and gentlemen? They did not move a muscle. This is to teach them to be steady. So that enthusiasm that we wanted in the puppies, we want it here in these, but we want some control now in these older dogs. John's just giving Ember a little bit of a fuss. Good girl, and they're hunting them back on. That rabbit hasn't been shot, despite its appearance, and uh, they're gonna hunt them away. That's gone away, hunt them back down the arena, but they do need a reward for their, retrieve, their hunting skills, so they get a little scene retrieve. Dummies out, steady, and sent the dogs. Wonderful, give them a big round of applause. Good job, dogs, well done. Good job, handlers. 
Lots of incitement, getting the dogs to jump up with the, with the game there, just to encourage them to bring it to hand always. You don't want them spitting it out on the way. And next up, the other member of field trial committee and one of our more experienced handlers as well in the HPR world. So we're moving on from the Spaniels into other hunting breeds. So this is Tonka. She's a five-year-old German wirehead pointer and Monty, two-year-old yellow lap. So Rory's gonna indicate to us what these dogs can do. Again, it is an artificial environment. So, oh, and she is, it is very loud as well. So she's hunting the cover, checking to see. Different hunting style in these bigger breeds, but still the job is the same. They're supposed to sniff out the game. Can she find our rabbits from earlier? Checking. Nice and methodical, that's what you want. You don't want anybody to miss anything. Back at heel, good girl. Monty's walking at heel as well. What's up there, Tonka? She's checking. What can she, what can she see? Again, this is very difficult to get them to, they would normally be pointing game in the field. So getting that artificially done is very difficult. Checking the water bowls. Good girl, what's she seen there? And sit to the flush. And Monty gets sent for the retreat. Oh, Tonka should be sitting there. Hey, very good, Monty. So again, an example of moving on from our steadiness, getting the dogs to hunt, under control, which is what we always want. Now, I think our rabbits might be going sneaked back out again. They've miraculously come alive again. Rabbits back out. And we're working up to our much more experienced dogs now. Rabbits are going back in the cover there. And we've got a whole range of different breeds again. So. Roy is famous for handling his Clumber Spaniels, and this one is Fenn, who was the top winning Clumber Spaniel in this season's field trials, which is an absolutely massive achievement. So he's a really beautiful dog, really fit for function, fit for purpose, which is exactly what we want here at the Kennel Club. Don't forget, if you want to find out more about coming to speak to us about how you can get involved in field trials with your gun dog, do come and talk to us up in Hall 3 at the Dog Activities Stand, and the guys there would be happy to help you. So. Roy's got Fen, the clumber, and little Meg, who's the little gold one, little angel that she is. And John's got Ebby the Lab, Fern the Cocker, and Smudge the Springer. This is an English Springer Spaniel, who actually competed in this year's English Springer Spaniel Champion, oh, any variety Spaniel, excluding Cocker Spaniel Championship, that we held on the uh, Highlands of Scotland in January. So. If you want to get into field trials, do prepare to buy expensive coats. <laughs> so, a few retrieves have just gone out there. That's maybe a few birds down, but the dogs have been told to ignore them. Just leave them there and hunt on. So you'll see that Fen's on the lead, so he's not working, and Roy is just working Meg there. Check, check, check. And Roy's got his, um, John's got his two at heel. Oh! Fern's, Fern's decided to pick something. Well done, Fern. Not sure that was entirely part of the plan, but never mind. Good girl. Another sent out. She just wants to please this little cocker. She's absolutely stunning when you look at her. That adoration is something that I think we could all look for in a gun dog, which is why they are some of the nation's most popular breeds. That trainability, bidability, and of course, love that you get from these dogs. Oh, another rabbit's gone away. Did Meg flush that? I think she did. Good girl, didn't chase though. That is so tempting. And she gets sent for the retrieve, and she's picked it. Well done, Meg. Good girl. Well done. That is exactly what you want in one of these working cockers. Lots of, that is quite a big dummy for that little wee dog. Very good. Good girl. So John's just checking the cover on his side of the line. Sending, using Fern there. She's also a championship comp competitor, again, for this year's Cocker Spaniel Championship. Oh, rabbit's half moved and it's gone out. Has she sat there? Yes, she has. Of course she has. What a good girl. Now, will she get sent for this retrieve? Yes. Oh, little deviation on the whistle. Stopped on the whistle. Absolutely fantastic. Yay, good girl. 
Well done, Fern. Don't forget, this is very artificial for these working dogs. So they don't always use to it, but I think they're doing an absolutely sterling job. Now we've got Rory at the back here with his dogs to heal as well. You might do this if you were perhaps on a rough shooting day. Oh, Meg. Shh, no one's watching, it's fine. Nobody's looking. So you might do this if you're on a walked up shooting day. Have the dogs, the spaniels hunting in front of you, flushing any game towards your shooting guns. They might be paying your wages, so you might want to have them to have a good day. Bird away. Good boy, Fen. Called him back. See, that is very difficult. Sent him out. He's decided not to take the, the hard route over the, uh, over the fence, but taking the... Oh, is he going back over? Oh, good boy. <laughs> Thought about it. <laughs> Sensible lad. Another dummy out. Who's going to send for this one? Jay goes desperate too, the wire head. Good boy, Smudge. Look at that enthusiasm. Straight over. Hup. Yay, good boy. Now Rory's got a bird down. Tonka's being sent. Clever girl. And she picks beautifully. What a wonderful example of these wonderful dogs. Jago's keen, Hungarian wirehead. Jago's actually won the HPR championship back in uh, 2021. Really fantastic working dog. Poor Monty's just getting left behind there with the yellow lab. Good boy, hunting forward. So these dogs are still doing as they're instructed, even though there's no cover here, which is really quite impressive. Oh, no, nope, nearly. <laughs> You're joining the breeders' competition. <laughs> Good lad. Now, remember, we had a few birds down back at the beginning of our drive there, or of our walked up day. See who's going to get to be sent to those. Very good. Jago and Fen. Oh, same one. Let's see what Roy can do. Jago's picked. Getting the instruction to go back. Thing is, he thinks it's been picked. Good boy. Oh, he's clocked it. Good lad. Clever boy. Good boy, Fen. Well done. I brought it to you, Dad. I got it. Is there any more birds still out there? Yep, think so. Checking. Oh, Fen's off again. So we're just walking forward again, keeping the dogs to heel. Again, I'm sure if many of you have got your own dogs, even you must know how hard that is to keep them off lead on heel. Good boy. Come on, Fen. Yay, good lad. <laughs> just showing that these dogs really are fit for function, fit for purpose. The athleticism of these working breeds really is quite impressive, <laughs> mostly. Lovely job, Ebby. Showing them how it's done. The Labrador Retriever, of course, bred for this particular purpose, to retrieve. Who's Rory going to send now? Jago's desperate. Oh, Monty's getting sent, also taking the easy route. Good lad. <laughs> well done, Monty. Jago wants a go. This nine-year-old dog this, still super keen to picky dummies. Always making the game fun. So we're just walking them forward, again, showing the steadiness that we were looking for in those young puppies right at the beginning again. Walking them to heel nicely. Nice long retrieve. So that would be your bird down in the field. And again, right to the back of the arena. And again, I'm gonna get out of the way. Who's going next? Little Meg. Very nice. Smudge has picked his. Good boy, Smudge. Jay goes off. Brilliant. Speed and stamina. We want them to come back for the retrieve just as quickly as they went out. Excellent work, Jago. Meg's gotten a bit confused over here. She's doing her best, though. Oh, she's seen it. Good girl. Well done, little Meg. Well done. Plenty of time left if there's any more skills that you'd like to show us. <laughs> Another cross retrieve. 
So on a shooting day, you know, you might have plenty of retrieves for these dogs. You need them to be fit. It's not just one or two. Good boy, Smudge. Well done. Who's getting sent? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Good boy. Look at that return on the whistle. So Ebby didn't see, did she see that one going out? But she thinks there might be one in there. John just giving her the hunt command there. That's to keep looking, keep looking, stop. Sending her on, using the hand signals to direct the dog, like just like you would in the field. So she hasn't seen it out here. Maybe I'll move. I'll go that way. Yeah. Oh, she's coming back. Do you want it thrown? So because she hasn't seen that one, we're going to give her another opportunity to go out. So this now then becomes a scene. I probably shouldn't have thrown it straight into that bush, but never mind. Yeah, that is exactly why. <laughs> These are professional handlers. You can tell by the dummy throwing. And that's why I'm not one. She's in the cover. Okay, can she find it? Good girl, come on. This is for me and you. Oh, no. Oh, I'm ruining the display. See how John handles her. Checking again. <gasps> she might see it. Yeah, she got wind of it there. There's no wind in here, but that was very impressive. And she finally got it, yay! <laughs> Brilliant, very, very well done. Now, I do believe our arena is clear for the rest of the evening's program of Birds and Rabbits, so please do put your hands together and say thank you very, very much to our wonderful gun dog handlers, John Bailey, Roy Marori Major, and Roy Ellishaw. Thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Could not go for a walk without a dog. It just wouldn't be worth going for a walk, would it? You know, it just, it just wouldn't. What a wonderful display. And honestly, three of the very best in the world. It's a real privilege to have our gun dog display here at Crufts. So much more tonight. Because in a few moments' time, as we said, we have our gamekeepers competition. Thank you so much to Skinners. We also have, because we're celebrating 150 years of the Kennel Club, it is the Kennel Club 150th anniversary stakes. Then a very, very special presentation celebrating last year's champion, the best in show. And then, of course, the very first of our groups with our gun dog group. So uh, lots more here on the first of four amazing days at Crufts 2023. And thank you so much to everybody that braved the weather. I think you all deserve to give yourselves a very big round of applause. Thank you very much for being with us here at Crufts. You're truly amazing. The resilience of our wonderful, wonderful audience. And so now we turn our attention to our gamekeepers classes. Thanks to Skinners. Our judge, well, uh, recently retired as a gamekeeper after a career of almost 40 years. Very keen competitor in the BASC gamekeepers classes and his dogs have won the most prestigious North Esk Memorial Trophy three times. Most recently, the curly-coated retriever Twister in 2020 and two of his flat-coated retrievers in 2007 and 2013. 
Escorted into the ring by Tom Mather, the chairman of the Crofts Committee. Please give a very big welcome to our judge this evening for our gamekeepers, Brian Twigger. And so the first of our six in the gamekeepers being judged down in Hall 5 all morning. It is our Hungarian Vizsla. It is Vizlana Siena, handled tonight by Derek Hardcastle Siena. Then it is our English Springer Spaniel, the best English Springer Spaniel. It is Aaron Pickard and uh, the wonderful Q and Row and Co. Then the uh, flat-coated retriever. The flat-coated retriever, the champion Blackcroft dancing the blues, known as Sienna, with Helen Fox. Then and we have our Welsh Springer Spaniel. The Welsh Springer Spaniel, you can give them a round of applause. It is River, Bodania Moon River. And uh, yes, the Perry Birch Warren, Welsh Warren. Springer Spaniel coming then in. Number five on the list that are qualified, it is uh, any variety of a gun dog owned by a retired gamekeeper. It is Richard uh, Mace. And, and now uh, from the, the retriever, uh, retriever section, the Golden Reeves. Retriever. And then last but by no means least, it is our best Labrador Retriever. It is. And Congratulations. special class for Labradors. It's a black Labrador coming in now. With Ian so, Brian, we'll see all of these out of all five all day in the uh, gamekeeper's race. It's been said right at the start, the Crofts, the world's greatest dog show, gamekeeper's chances were very much part of it. So. So six winners, Frank, from six classes. Yes, and of course, the, our judge will be looking for a dogs which not only fit his idea of the breed standard, but look fit for function for, to do the job. So these have all been judged in their sections today. So the Hungarian Vizsla won the class, four setters and pointers. The Hungarian Vizsla, uh, an HPR hunt point and retrieve, which means it's a versatile, does all the jobs that could be expected of a gun dog. Then the English Springer Spaniel, the special class for the English Springers, hugely popular. Look at that tail wagging. and. Then the, the ring, as well as the flat coated retriever, time. lovely clean outline. This is all, already then also a show champion. So not only is it a good worker, it's a, a beautiful example of the breed. The Welsh Springer Spaniel, beautiful colour, lovely type. And there is the, the gaunt outline, rich colours of the Welsh Springer. So well, should we expect to see, Frank, some differences in these dogs to those that people might be familiar with as their pets? Yes. Oh, <clears throat> obviously, the, the dogs which are bred for working at, in the gun dog group tend to be a little bit lighter, more sure. athletic than those bred in the shoring. They come from a dif different gene pool and have different pedigrees. However, some of them are dual purpose. They've been successful in the show ring and also here working on estates. The judge just look at them now, bringing the Welsh Springer forward. So this is River, the five-year-old female Welsh Springer. And that breed, of course, only comes in red and white. And bringing out the English Springer Spaniel now, the liver and white, the ever wagging tail. The Vizsla comes forward, so two Spaniels and the H HPR, the European gun dog, the Hungarian Vizsla. Now the others are being brought on to the end of the line, so it looks as though he's placing them in some sort of order. Round, ah, oh, the retrievers are going round, there's the very good flat coat. The golden retriever, very happy in here. Uh, Congratulations, oh, well done. Ah, it so there we are. Well, that was our short list of three, and they've now been placed. So the Welsh Springer Spaniel wins this Gamekeepers competition final with the English Springer in second and the Hungarian Vizsla. So there we are.
Obviously, they'd been prejudged outside, so he knew what he wanted. Let's have a listen. This is Perry Birchmore. Onto the green carpet, and now a winner. Yes. Yeah, we're over the moon. Um, she's been in the ring four times in the final. It's the first time that she's won. So brilliant. Ever so well done. Congratulations. So that's Ever Perry so Birchmore. Well has been showing Indeed. dogs for ten years Ever and training so gun dogs well. since and she was River. a child. The five-year-old River. Worthy winners having come through the Any Variety Sporting Spaniel class to make the final of the Gamekeepers competition. And she is a dual-purpose dog. She has won her junior warrant in the show ring, so it shows that she is a good example of the breed, but also fit for function. Congratulations to Perry Birchmore and Robin Barnes. In Grindy presenting the prizes, council member of the British Association for Shooting and Conservation, but we have our winner of the Gamekeepers competition Second and it is River the Welsh well Springer Spaniel the from Ireland from the Ballinor estate Archer and Aaron Pickard two years in the field Aaron so Sosol second place then Sosol. Frank Aaron Pickard the owner Sosol. and handler of and, Archer and coming from Northern Ireland I believe so that's a, a they've had a wonderful trip over haven't they so again the the, the working and English the Springer is lighter Northern and smaller Indeed. than the Very English well, Springer we'll see later in the group. They are bred for speed, instinctive workers. They're amazing to watch working, and the tail never stops. And the Hungarian Vizsla in third place, a really sort of lively, fearless dog, a very lean outline, you see. They're, 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 should, they're only of moderate build. There's an elegance about them and a gaunt quality to the head. Well, they'll be applauded indeed. from the Very arena tonight, then. And River. And, and River in particular. And very nice that it's a, a, young, a young handler winning here. So, young lady handler leading the way. Yep, Perry Birchmore has worked in the shooting field, picking up on the Elton Estate and Church Farm shoot. But still plenty of experience, 10 years showing dogs, and now victorious at Crafts. They are your winners. Gamekeepers competition final, still plenty more to come, including the gun dog group here at Crafts this evening. So just a short break now. It is incredible here at Crafts, I can promise you that. Our dear friends from Channel 4, some, it is an unprecedented, unprecedented, sorry, I'll put my teeth in, unprecedented amount of uh, television, live television coverage here from Crufts. I mean, it's huge. YouTube channel all day, but also live on Channel 4 and More 4. And of course, counting the moment down till we go live on Sunday night for Best in Show at 8.30. Wonderful. Next up is Kamik. Easy. easy. <laughs> well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. Round. First up, the weave. Round. Nice quick turns. It's a perfect start. Round the so spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. And yeah, faultless so Keep far, going. but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kamuk, yes. our compact SUV, Ooh. our best in show. Skoda.
I probably wouldn't be here, to be honest, if it weren't for Ellie. Every day, I put my life in Milo's paws. Chewie never left his side. Without him, I wouldn't have my husband. And she's still here today. Because of the dog. He's everything, not just to me, to my whole family. Day in, day out, dogs change lives. That's why, for 150 years, the Kennel Club and its members have been making a positive difference for dogs and their owners. We guide new owners, helping them to find the right dogs, brought into the world by responsible and caring breeders who want the very best for them. Giving puppies like Barney, a flat-coated retriever, the best possible chance to lead a healthy, happy life. Thanks to DNA testing, we've eradicated diseases such as CLAD, an inherited blood disorder in Irish setters. So Skye, Marta and Pear, as well as all Irish setters, can now lead healthier lives. There's always more to be done, which is why we continue to lead the way in helping breeders eradicate inherited diseases, improving dog health for generations to come. And we do all of this because when you have healthy dogs living with loving owners, the real magic of dog ownership begins. We're helping to build that unique bond between dog and owner through a range of training and activities that bring joy in the best and even the most difficult of times. Hayley lost her sister, but spending time with her dog Ellie, doing the activities they love, agility and heel work to music, got her through her grief. They've even been to Crufts, our most famous event for anybody who loves dogs. And thanks to Petlog's microchipping database, we're making sure that your canine companions have the best chance of being reunited with their loving families, should the worst happen. 
like Jazz, who was reunited with her family after eight long and heartbreaking months. <laughs> So thank you for being on this journey as we work hard to make sure we continue to make a positive difference for dogs and their owners. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a rather special and prestigious event to be held here at Crafts 2023. To celebrate the Kennel Club's 150th anniversary, Crafts is to present to you now a stakes competition consisting of 10 top winning champions. Although unfortunately, there's only nine here with us today, this evening. Uh, one of our qualifying dogs has uh, fallen foul to the weather. So we have nine with us this evening. All these are top winning champions who have each won a prestigious best in show at all breed championship show throughout the United Kingdom during 2022. Yes, this a very special all event for Crufts 2023, celebrating the Kennel Club founded back in 1873. So eight dogs, Frank, have made it through to this very special final. And they've had to win best in show at one of the all breed championship shows, which are the biggest shows in the calendar. So they've won best in show there to qualify to come here. We'd like to introduce you to the judge. So our finalists are about to enter into Lina the arena. We've got three working dogs. We've got Hound Group represented, Gun Dogs, Terrier, and one from the Utility Star Group as well, you'll see, enter the ring. We're just about to meet our judge, which is Zena Thorne Andrews, really well known for the Drake Sleep Kennels, which I always think is wonderful. She has Irish Wolfhounds, and then right at the other end of the scale, well, miniature wire-haired Dachshunds. And she is the top judge in the UK, the only judge who was qualified to judge every breed. And yes, a great judge. Uh, a woman of great integrity and knowledge. She owned a variety, not only the miniature wire dachshunds, she's successful with Irish wolfhounds, with I greyhounds, hugely versatile, and knowledge oh, of all breeds is amazing. So the finalists Vimarama. are about to come Your into champion, the, the ring, Vimarama. and the first is the Weimarama. And, and now we see the Doberman. This is good followed by the Doberman. And then the Great Dane, the Brindle Great Dane. Slightly smaller, but nonetheless impressive. Here we have our border terrier. And the Grand Basset Griffin Vaudien. The Grand Basset Griffin Vaudien. Come all the way from um, Belgium. Next into the ring, we have the deer hound. The light floating movement of the deer hound. And another from Holland, the elegant whippet. And our final competitor, our eighth competitor, we have our standard poodle. And he won best in show on several occasions, not just one best in show, several. So the entrants are in and remind us just what the judge will be looking for as she surveys the finalists. At this level, star quality. Yeah, they, they should be, you know, they're all breed best in show winners. They should be top of the tree. So the Weimarama from the Gun Dog group having a good look. And bred by the famous Gunnall Kennel, breeders of the year many times. They bred lots of champions for other people. Zena now looking along the line, taking in the outline and balance of the dogs, the first indications of breed type, the correct shape for the breed. And the very distinctive clip, the trim of so the, the poodle, of course, the is. duck Weimarama retriever. But Hendrix. let's have a closer look then at the, um, at the Weimarama because that silver gray coat is it's really quite Nailed. striking and known as the gray ghost. But Laura, this dog, dog has done a lot of winning. He has. So this is show champion Gunnell Hendricks, four-year-old dog and actually a top gun dog for 2022. With gun dogs, they become show champions unless they also have a, a working certificate and then they become full champions. So you can see really striding out on the move here. 
as you said, the, the grey ghost, the, the striking coat, and then that really light eye, heavy stamina and full of balance. And the lovely thing about this dog is its colour. It's a beautiful silver grey colour. Many of them are a little bit too dark. This is a lovely colour. Love showing, as we can see there. She has a birthday coming up. Hendrix is three years old, but it's turning four on Sunday. So really the coordination there. So much of the Weimaram is about Hendrix. power, stamina and balance. Now the striking head of the, do the Doberman, Manzart Wise Guy, Archie as he's known at home. And this is from a kennel who's been very successful. A few years ago, they were third in the working group with one of their Dobermans, and this is a particularly good one. They should be clean cut in outline. This is one of black and tan, they also come in a brown tan, a sort of rust color. Wedge-shaped head should hold this firm top line, slightly sloping from the withers to the tail. So Doberman's bred um, by a tax collector who wanted a menacing dog to accompany him to work, but apparently this one, if you shout hugs, will floor you for a cuddle, so possibly not so menacing. <laughs> not so fit for function, then, yes. <laughs> fit for cuddles. Handled and bred here by Mandy Everly. Well, the Great Dane and the striking uh, brindle pattern as well Campbell. on the coat. But despite the name, Laura, the Great Dane, the, the ancestors of this dog don't actually come from Denmark. No, not Danish, actually descended from German hunting dogs. So here we have Salman the Jealous Guy, bred by uh, Adam Chappell and Leslie Chappell, two-year-old dog. And apparently he loves to carry soft toys around, but never tear them or chew them. They're more like pets to him. Now, Adam and his mother have been very successful over the years, but mostly with fawn Great Danes. Has it always been their ambition to have a, a good brindle? And this one has certainly ticked all the boxes. He's been a best in show winner. He's top winner in the breed for last year. So, wise guy. Qualified at Scottish Kennel Club. And Judge really looking for noble, strong dog, but that still has some elegance despite the size. The breed standard asks for a, a look of dash and daring. How do we spot that in, Guy? <laughs> so the Border Terrier, representing the Terrier group here. Frank, this uh, this one has the shortest legs in this particular competition, but he's a very keen walker. This one gets the nickname Boots. Yeah. Well, these boots were made for walking, exactly. <laughs> and this, uh, the Border Terrier is absolutely unexaggerated working terrier. The standard, I don't think, has been changed for well over 100 years. Everything is about working ability. The coat is protective, the thick skin, the wire coat, the otter-shaped head, the strong skull and short, strong muzzle, and really striding out. The movement clause says, capable of following a horse. It's a, a matter of soundness and working ability in the Border Terrier. And it says here, Boots lives in the Lake District and has climbed all 214 Wainwrights in the area over the last two and a half years, so certainly can walk. Hence the nickname Boots. <laughs> Owned and bred by James and Hilary Gilpin. It's James doing the handling here tonight in this special anniversary stakes competition. Now, Zena looking at the hound here. She's a hound expert, really knows all the hounds so well. She'll be looking at this one. It's a, a Grand Basset. It's the, the longest and the, the longest and sturdiest of the Bassett family. But it should be rustic. It's got a, a rough, weatherproof coat, a long, noble head, the tail carried like a scimitar. This shouldn't be overpresented. This comes from a highly successful kennel. Um, so this dog wasn't actually ever intended to be shown. Came into this ownership after um, the owner's yeah. sister moved to Australia, yes. emigrated and yes. left him. When Hoekserhoven, very successful. This is her sister. She inherited this dog when her sister went from Australia, where she's also proving very successful. So that's a, a nice winner here. Should be friendly, intelligent, with a noble bearing there. This is Shadow. Champion, star, dark oh, just such an impressive breed, the deer hound. And this is Shadow, who is two years old, owned and bred by handler Sam Taylor. And Frank, this one, quite a multi-talented dog, if you take note that he's done a spot of modelling and even featured in a film production. Well, uh, <coughs> can turn his talent to everything. It's 
a beautifully elegant hound that should be built on curving lines. This arch over the loin to give them propulsive power and a protective coat, a mixture of soft and harsh coat. And the movement's distinctive, isn't it? They should be active, easy going with a really long stride. They're a, <coughs> they should be light on their feet, a light floating action. Dogs of this type date back over 500 years. And it's rather nice. This is a, a, a relatively small breeder. Hit the heights with a best in show, Mike Gadsby, a very accomplished breeder himself. So the imposing figure of the Deerhound, Shadow, two years old. This is the Whippets, member of the Hound group, three years old, is Jill, female dog. Notable, Laura, that Jill is the only female dog in this celebration. Stage. She is, and just after International Women's Day as well. So I think dogs, obviously, um, they don't have to stop to have litters, and they, they don't have seasons in the same way bitches do. So often, at the higher level of competition, they probably do take more best in shows. Taking nothing away from beautiful Jill here, just two years old. And she actually had eight puppies in October, but still so, managed to win. So she is Top Purpose, yes. She is your and, purpose, and, yeah. And, and, and a, a beautiful bitch. Uh, Jan Wilhelm here handling, very clever breeder. He's been successful in beagles as well, but whi whippets have really been his forte. This bitch has won all over Europe, all over the world. She won best of breed at one of the big world shows, the European show for me and uh, she's a beautiful bitch. And we can see there the distinctive daisy cutting action of the whippet. Everything should be smooth and symmetrical curves in the whippet outline. Standard poodle. This is Jake, champion puppish. Well, the, the outline of Jake is unmistakable. The standard poodle, member of the utility group, and the owner describes Jake here, who's four years old, as being a real showman. And Frank, that is, you mentioned at the start, what just might set. <laughs> Uh, the but dogs are passed in this competition. Exactly, the ring presence. And of course, he's been best in show at a couple of the shows. He was runner up for top dog in the country, uh, beaten by a, 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 a Tavuran, a Belgian shepherd dog. But a very good showman, bred in Scandinavia by a very talented breeder, Charlotte Sandell. Um, and this came over a couple of years ago. He's been top winner for two years now. You can always trust a poodle to put on a show. They love the big ring, love the atmosphere. So the breed standards mentioned that the eyes should be full of fire and intelligence, and I think you, that character really comes out. And, and of course, that is a functional cut. It was a, a duck retriever. The hind quarters were clipped to allow them to propel themselves through the water. The pom poms to guard the joints so they didn't knock the joints and protect them from from the cold as well. The water. So Zena, great talent. I've got the greatest admiration for Zena as a judge and as a person, a woman of integrity. So just taking a final look at our finalists in this special 150th anniversary of the Kennel Club's Champion Stakes. Now, spoilt for choice, but she'll know her mind. She's a very positive judge. So just a first and a runner-up in this class. Well, Jake it's that showman, poodle. it's Jake, the standard poodle. Well, you did mention about it's the champion showman standing out. Champion Huffish, uh, oh, rewrite the stars <laughs> and, with the, Akistar. And, and the Grand Basse is, is runner-up, so Anuka will be very pleased with that. So forget me not, Van Tum Tum's Rendries. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the winner will receive glassware and £150 as well from the Kennel Club, but we most know to be the honour of standing out in this 150th anniversary celebration stakes, a, a, a one-off special occasion. Philip Langdon, the co-owner and handler here, has been in poodles for many years. He has lots of good champions, but this is the dog that's really put him in the headlines in the last couple of years. I think it's wonderful, it says here, that obviously we've got that showman there in that clip, but he loves to walk, he loves to run alongside the bike with the owner. So really an active dog and part of the family. So a very proud moment. So Jake, the four-year-old standard poodle, is the winner of the 150th anniversary celebration stakes. Plenty more for you still to come here on More 4.
Well, there's been plenty, hasn't there, to help celebrate the Kennel Club's 150th anniversary. And this is just part of uh, a number of initiatives that have been uh, launched as a Young Kennel Club Artist of the Year competition as well. See, you see the, <laughs> the intelligent expression of this standard there, uh, taking it all in. Prize presented by Tony Alcock, the chairman of the Kennel Club. Many will remember him as the World Crown Green Bones Champion. Yes, yes. So the talent is in breeding dogs, especially Japanese chins. And there's the winner. Going into top gear now as he sits forward on his lap of honour. And followed by our reserve, get me the Grand Fossip Ripon Bondi. Well, that is the anniversary stakes here at Crofton 2023. Gundog. We have still got the uh, judging of the Gundog Group to come for you this Who evening, so don't go far away. Can possibly forget those amazing pictures of Baxter with the rosette in the mouth. Let's have a look at the highlights of this amazing dog and this amazing and and what a wonderful winner it was for Crofts 2022. Patrick and Baxter. So another moment here at Crufts View, which is a special presentation of a painting to last year's Best in Show winner, Frank. And how beautiful is this? It, well, we see Baxter once again. Well, it's a lovely painting, but an even more Ladies beautiful dog. Yes, yes as we remember his wonderful temperament. Face, doesn't it? It really does. Well, Baxter was the flat-coated retriever well, from Norway, champions. six years old when he won last year. Now, Bred in very Sweden, and co-owner and handler had travelled all the way from Oslo in Norway. The artist is uh, Anne Zutsos, who comes from a family of talented artists and a full-time artist herself, show. having painted professionally. For some 40 years. There you go. Art Foundation and Patrick Can you name Baxter? Baxter get the first well, that would be nice to have in the living room, wouldn't it? Yes, lovely. Nice Over the fireplace. Of the Kennel Club Art Foundation, Tom Mather. And, uh, with it's quite a tradition, and isn't it, for painting to be presented to the winner? Amazing, must be a marvellous memento to have for, for life, eh? But, ladies and gentlemen, to receive it, put your hands together for Patrick O'Hare. Baxter isn't with us here tonight, but Patrick is. I saw Patrick last night and I said to him, is Baxter coming? He said, oh no, he's retired. He oh did, really? He did come back last year and became a full English champion. He wanted one more CC, he won it, and then he's retired, yes. So that's the best thing for a Crufts champion, you know, to, to retire. You can't be beaten again. Well, it was notable, wasn't it, that Baxter was a liver flat coat retriever. And I, yes, it is a rarity. They are the rarer colour in, in the breed, but what a wonderful dog he was. Pretty wonderful temperament. It's amazing. It really is. Can we get a picture of that, of that on the screen? Can we get that on the screen? Look at the detail. Do you remember how, how Patrick cried yet last He's year when he won? He's the best dog in the world. He cried. And <laughs> well, everybody thought so last year. <laughs> And you must be so pleased with that. Anne has done the most amazing job, hasn't she? She really has, she really has. Thank you very much. Well done. Well done, Patrick. Thank you, Anne. Thank you so much. So that goes... To the yep, all the flat coat retriever backs are... It was the third time that a flat coat had won Crufts. It won't be Baxter coming back again, but maybe we will see another in future, Frank. Well. Thank you so much, Anne. Thank you. Well, that was a lovely touch. And so now the stage will start to be set for the judging of the Gundog Group. Coming up for you very shortly here. To Crafts Best in Show of 2023. I'd like to hand over to our colleague Jenny Shora to take us through. As a boy, our judge for the group this evening worked two jobs at evenings and weekends to save money for his first puppy, an Irish setter. Encouraged by a passerby on the street, he decided to start showing it, and the rest, as they say, is history. Together with his partner Marion, 
He has bred and owned 27 champions across the gun dog breeds, mostly in German shorthead pointers, but also Weimaraners and a Welsh Spring Spaniel under the McGregor affix. He judges all the gun dog breeds, starting his career in 1985, and has officiated across Europe, the United States and Australia. And we're delighted to welcome him this evening to the pinnacle of his judging career to date, the Gundog Group at Crufts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your judge, Mr. Gordon Harank. You join us now for the first of our groups at Crufts 2023. We're and going to find out who will follow in the footsteps or poor steps of Baxter, last year's best in show winner. So here is the judge for our Gundog group. Gordon Haran, successful in a lot of gun dog breeds, a wide, wide experience through the group. Based in Scotland. So we're going to see a lack of honour here. Unfortunately, the GSP cannot compete because it was bred by the judge. Bred by the judge, <laughs> so, so cannot compete in the group. So just doing a lap of honour, taking us round. But it must be a moment of great pride that one of his breeding has won exactly. today. Exactly. And in your head, you can think, well, I would have won if I'd been there. And a bit of pomp and circumstance there as well, which you don't normally get. So, go and sit down, relax, and watch the rest of the competitors coming into this gun dog group. Ladies and gentlemen, the first of our gun dog best of breeds is the Bracco Italiano. So, okay. coming into the ring, first of our breeds, the Bracco Italiano. Followed by the best of breed, Brittany. And the Brittany, the compact dog from. Versatile gun dog from now France. We have our best of breed English setter. The English setter, 118 of them here today. A dark blue Belton, very striking. Followed by our German long hair pointer. The tallest of the German pointing breeds, the German long hair. And our German wirehead Followed head by the best of breed. The German wirehead pointer, best of breed. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the Gordon setter, best of breed. Okay, and coming in nicely, the Gordon Setter. Followed by our Hungarian Vizsla. The Hungarian Vizsla. Gaunt, noble. Now we have our Hungarian wirehead Vizsla. Uh, the wirehead version, sturdier and stronger. The Irish Red and the White Setter. second of our Setters, the Irish Red and White Setter. There were 59 of them here today. And now the Irish Setter. And here is the Irish Setter. Something for you, Laurie, your breed. My favourite breed, Followed yeah, lovely bitch. Followed by the Italian Spinoni. The Italian Spinoni, almost Distin human expression there. Distinctive pounding trot of the Spinoni. Romagnolo. The uh, curly coat of the Legotto Romagnolo. There's a lot of history the to this one. Is the next best breed. Another of the German breeds, HPR, versatile, working gun dog, the large Munsterlander. The, the ah. aristocrat of the group here. We have the pointer. Looking round and uh, getting his bearings. Ah, this looks a very nice Chesapeake Bay. Absolutely functional working dog. That that and coat, that we weatherproof coat. Retriever. Followed by the curly coated retriever, the tallest and oldest of our retriever breeds. And a big winning dog over the several years now. Retriever. The uh, Baxter did it last year. Can this year's flat coat do the same? But and the golden retriever. And from a very beginning, second biggest entry at Crufts this year, the Golden Retriever. Now we have our Labrador Closely Retriever. Closely followed by the biggest entry here at Crufts. 537 Labrador Retrievers here today. What an achievement. And our Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever. And this is a breed which is catching on. It's a smaller than the other Retrievers, our very handy for the house and the great American temperaments. The raciest of our Spaniel breeds, the American Cocker. This one of black and tan, and here's the Columbus Spaniel, one of the heavier of the Spaniel breeds, but still fit for function and athletic. Now we have the cocker Shouldn't spaniel. be overdone. There's ah. seven cockers of one best in show at Crufts, so could this be number eight? And this is an orange and white. It's not often we see them getting to this and level. The English Springer Spaniel. 133 English Springers here today. And now we have the Field Spaniel. One of the ancient land spaniels. Should be a long, dignified stride. And the Irish Water Spaniel. The Irish Water Spaniel. This is the clown of the group, isn't it, Frank? And really the enjoying the occasion. 
Here's the lowest of, the lowest stature of the Spaniels, the Sussex Spaniel. It's golden liver coat. Very nice. And the Welsh Springer Spaniel. Followed by the merry Welsh Springer Spaniel. Beautiful contrast between the red and white uh, of the coat. That's the only colour the breed comes in. Now we have the Spanish Water Dog. Versatile breed, the Spanish Water Dog. Should look rustic and... The Vimarana. Noble and powerful is the Vimarana. Ah, right. There's a new one for us. Imported registered breeds, the Slovakian Roughhead Pointer. Right, one of the rarer breeds from the import register, which means they're just developing in this country, but they're very good workers. Slovakian, a rough-haired pointer there, representing the import register breeds. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, so our judge going to take a first look around the ring at the finalists in the Gundog group. 31 breeds here, as the GSP cannot compete because it was bred by the judge. Now, Gordon Harren walking round, taking in the shape and outline of the breeds. That's the first indicator that they are correct for type. They're the right shape. So at this level, these dogs have won through because the breed judge believes that they are a great example of a, the breed standard and meeting that standard. So Gordon's job is to separate them out, and it's not an easy job, is it, Frank? No, no, it's not. By this stage, they should all be wonderful examples of the breed. It's details that make the difference and how they perform on the night. Showmanship, it does come down to it at this level. So the Gundog group broken down into subgroups. So we have our retrievers, our spaniels, our setter pointers, and then our hunt point retrieve, the multi-purpose Gundog breeds. So our judge now going to take a look at the first dog. So here we have the Bracco Italiano. There were 68 of them here today. These are powerful hunting dogs of noble appearance and should have a really distinctive sculpted head. This one is a dog, two and a half years old, called Cooper, and is here from Scotland. There are suggestions that its history can be traced way back to the 5th century BC. Right, the word Bracco is applied to many breeds in Europe. It comes from a combination of breeding hounds with gun dogs to give them stamina. So an Italian breed, a hunt point and retrieve breed, so a multi-purpose gun dog. And this one actually won his first CC today, so looking a little bit overwhelmed by the big ring, but it first show at this level. And um, yes, I said not using his tail, not carrying his tail. That will go against him here, unfortunately. Striding out, they're noted for athletic, clean movement. And he, he is a, certainly a good mover. Now here, something quite different, the co compact and very active, Brittany. Compact, square, used to be called a Brittany Spaniel, but it was discovered that it was much more versatile than just a flushing dog. It can do all the things, it can retrieve and point to a degree. Only moderate angulation, so it's got a brisker stride, not a far-reaching stride. So this, this one a red and white. So this is three-year-old Kion from Cumbria, and you can see there the dogs are, can be born naturally bobtailed. That dog hasn't been docked, it's born like that. So next we have the first of our uh, setter breeds, we have the English setter. This was established as a breed in the 1820s and should have a really clean outline with a very elegant appearance and that head carried high. This one is Guy, a dog who's just 21 months old. A dark blue Belton, very striking in colour. The breed was developed in the 1800s. Two main rival strains, Purcell Llewellyn and Sir Edward Laverack. Sometimes when you go to field trials, and they refer to them as the Laverack setter, yes. So unfortunately, the English setter is on the vulnerable native breeds list, which means there's less than 300 of them registered every year at the moment. It's hard to believe because they're a beautiful natured breed. And that ever slashing tail is really characteristic of the breed. Lashing tail action, a feature of all the setters. Stylish. It's what made them popular as gun dogs, the pointers and the setters. They've got great style in working. That one in beautiful coat and condition. And now something even more rare the German long haired pointer. 
This is the tallest of the German pointers. It's thought it was developed from the crossing German pointing breeds with the large Munsterlander, which we'll see later. It comes in these shades of brown, this one, and sometimes known as trout colour, which is a very sort of natural description. This is a four-year-old dog here from the Netherlands and should have a really aristocratic head. The judge looking for long stride with real reach and drive. Yes. Not as popular as some of the other um, pointer breeds. There was only 33 of them here today. Striding out well, strongly built, good bone. And again, good top line and tail action. Now the GSP, a completely functional gun dog breed. So here we have the bushy eyebrows and full beard of the German wirehead pointer. They would develop that rough coat to be able to work in rough weather, rough cover, and they were developed from several wire coated breeds in the 19th century. This one, a three year old bitch. And they're not just a wire coated version of the German short hair. They're, they're Heavy in bone, they've got this protective coat, giving us a little bit of beard and eyebrows for protection, but it should be strong, striding out well, and a strong muzzle. Judge is looking for a deep chest, plenty of lung room with well-spun ribs, and covering the floor there. The second of our setters now, here we have the Gordon setter. It's the heaviest of the setter breeds and named after the Duke of Gordon who introduced the breed to Scotland in 1820. That distinctive black coal and lustrous tan is a real calling card of the breed. This one looking very well, a three-year-old. Well, I'm very pleased to see her here. I judge the Gordon setters today. This was best of breed from 180. Not only that did she win, but her two puppies won the dog puppy class and the bitch puppy class. So she's dual purpose. So, and she also is a working bitch. She's got working qualifications. So, uh, as you say, it's the heavyweight of the setter breeds. So a whole host of gun dog groups under her belt already. So will she be adding crafts to that? Could well be. Striding out well with a lovely top line. Beautiful, beautiful type. She's feminine yet strong. The Gordon Setter described as a stylish dog built on galloping lines, which I always think is a lovely description. Mrs. Jean Fairley was the Hungarian visa judge today, and she had an entry of 178. Here we have the Hungarian Vizsla, 178 of them here today. This is an elegant, moderately bowed dog. It's a hunt, point and retrieve, which means it's a multi-purpose gun dog, meant to retrieve from both land and water. Lean and noble is what we're looking at in the head there. And it's been a popular gun dog since the 18th century. It comes only in this russet gold coat, which is quite greasy to the touch. Moderate bone, it's not a heavy dog, it should have a gaunt, elegant quality to it. And it looks like it's a first CC for this dog as well, two and a half years old. It brought into Western Europe when there was the, uh, the after the world wars, some people emigrating from Hungary brought it into Europe and they provided the stock to get the breed going again after the world wars. Really beautiful coat there. Contrasts really nicely with the green carpet, doesn't it? <laughs> so next we have the Hungarian wirehaired Vizsla, bred by combining the Vizsla with the German wirehaired. It's a slightly bigger and stronger version of the smooth hair Vizsla that we just saw. And that rough coat provides it with protection from the cover, um, from rough cover and from cold weather. And this looks like a very good coated dog. Looks, you could even see the te feel the texture from here. Now, the name is almost unpronounceable. I think it perhaps is, has come from Hungary. So actually, it's come from... It's come from Scotland, <laughs> but still yes, unpronounceable. Yes. So 20, 10, only 22 months old. But it's already won best of breed twice at Crafts. Of course, many of the, the gun dogs were traditionally docked, but that's not that's not permitted now unless it's, you've got a, a gun license for working them. So many of the breeds now with full tails. It should be animated and ground covering for the movement. Tail carried horizontally. Our judge now going over the Irish red and white setter. 
This was the original Irish setter, then overtaken by the red setter in popularity. This is a rather heavier in build, it's athletic rather than racy. The color describes it, it's pearly white background with islands of rich red. So the red and white setter was once preferred in the field over the red setter because those white patches meant that it stood out and you could see it moving. This one is a two-year-old bitch, Tilda, put through by Pat Butler Holly today, very well-known gun dog. Church. And when the Irish setters got into full flow and were hugely popular as show dogs, the Irish red and white setter fell in decline and were almost, they were threatened with extinction. I remember in the 70s, some being brought to England, a few nucleus of breeders. So racy, balanced and full of quality is how the Irish setter is described. This one is a six-year-old bitch called Gloria, come up from Somerset, the big winner in the breed. Described as handsome, refined, with untiring readiness to range, which we'll see as she starts to move out. That rich chestnut coat really is the calling card of the breed. Blake handling in the ring here, very experienced, very good handler. This racy quality comes from this long, elegant head, flowing neck and shoulder, the top line falling a little from the withers to the tail and it should stride out well. It should be up on the leg to give them this racy quality. Described as an absolute show-off who loves herself, which all the best show dogs are. Now, the distinctive outline of the Italian Spinoni. Dates back to the 15th century. It was kept in the ducal palaces of Italy. You can see old master paintings of the breed dating back to that time. They should have an almost human expression, and that top line is a real calling card of the breed, the way it dips away and then rises over the loin. It's got this thick skin, wiry protective coat, strongly boned, and a, a good forechest. So this is a bitch seven years old, which means she's a veteran, flossy, just over from Wales today. And they should move with a pounding trot and a, a pounding trot and a tail which goes like a metronome, <laughs> wagging like a metronome. <laughs> the skin is thick and leathery, but it should be it is close fitting without exaggeration. There's a sort of walrus like quality in the thick shoulders and neck and substance in the front of the dog. There were 79 Legotto Romagnolos here today. The name translates as curly coated duck retriever and they originate from northern Italy. Should be a squarely built, sturdy and robust dog and that woolly, densely curled coat is a real distinctive feature. This one is a big winner all over Europe and in America and has come back to Crofts. In the past, it was best of breed and was second in the Gundo group the last time she was here. So could she go one more? So it's a bit, she's almost five years old, called Orca, hails from Croatia. She's charismatic, apparently, her tail is always wagging and she loves everybody, which you can see there, can't you? Striding out a great show dog. So that coat is waterproof and a ring-shaped curl. It should, should be tight curls, yes, tight curls for protection. Truffle hunters, originally duck hunters, then they were trained to, when the lakes dried up, they were, their scenting powers used to detect truffles. Here we have the large Munsterlander, named after the town of Munster in Germany. There were 76 of them here today. It's an alert, energetic breed that should have a strong, muscular body. It's multi-purpose, this dog, so it should be able to work on land and in water. And interestingly, it was developed from the German long-haired pointer, which we saw earlier. They come in brown. The German long-haired pointers also produced black puppies, but they didn't want them. They, so they provided the nucleus for breeding the large Munsterlander. So this one is a full champion, which means that it's also won a field trial award as well as its three challenge certificates. Gun dogs have to take that extra level to become a full champion, otherwise they're show champions. And this is the only colour in which they come, this black head, sometimes with a little white blaze, black patches on the body, or almost like blue roan patterning. And we're looking for a long striding and springy gait. 
Now the clean, flowing curves of the pointer, the aristocrat of the gun dogs. From the 18th century, hugely popular because of their style when working, covering a lot of ground. Everything looking like a thoroughbred. A series of flowing, gentle curves. And you can see there with the muscle, they've got this distinctive, slightly concave muzzle, which meant wide nostrils for really good scenting. This one is a two-year-old bitch called Frankie from just down the road in Warwickshire. And Geraldine O'Driscoll has been the judge today. She's, she and her husband breed dual-purpose pointers. They've had field trial champions as well. So it should be looking for type and working ability, fit for function. They should stride out well without picking their feet up and the tail, the beasting tail, relatively short tail, lashing from side to side. Looks to have a beautiful head, lovely chiseling to give it the look of quality. The real thoroughbred of the gun dog group there. A smooth coat, beautiful condition. The breed was judged by Mr. Jack Horsell. He chose this bitch, number 1621, as his best of breed winner and representative in the group this evening. An impressive numerical entry for this breed. And our judge now looking at the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. This is an absolute working machine coming from the Chesapeake Bay in North America, where it was used as a duck hunter. It was built and developed to survive the harsh climate. This wonderful thick coat, oiliness in it, softer undercoat, big barrel ribs for swimming, sturdy bone, and a strong muzzle for retrieving. Sometimes they were taken out in the boats, and when the ducks were shot, the dog launched itself from the boat to retrieve the ducks. They also have webbed feet, don't they, to help them with their swimming? Again, functional. Yes. And when they weren't working, they, were, they looked after, they guarded, the fish, the hunters' sheds, the hunt dogs. Yeah. So next of our retrievers, we have the curly-coated retriever. 67 of them here today. This is the oldest and tallest of our retriever breeds, and that really dense, small, tight curl coat is the hallmark of the breed. It's not just there for show; it's there for function. It's a waterproof when they'd be retrieving ducks. So the head is wedge-shaped in the curly coated retriever and the eyes appear rather small in comparison. This dog has had a wonderful career. He came out as a puppy and won the reserve championship CC at his first show as a six-month puppy and he's gone on to great success, a multi-group winner. He's now the breed record holder, having won 39 challenge certificates. He's six years old and he's called Tarzan, another from Wales. The breed also comes in liver, but the black is the more popular, more frequently seen colour. So last year we had Baxter as our best in show winner. Here we have this year's flat coated retriever. There were 406 of them here today, and they're the braciest of the retriever breeds. They were bred by combining setters, spaniels, and retrievers. And their friendliness is demonstrated in that smiling expression. And when we see in a second, the enthusiastic tail, which just never stops wagging. Well, it's very significant. Here we have the flat coat in the 150th anniversary year of Pups. It was the founder of the Kennel Club. Um, who, who was patron of the breed. So how marvellous he would have been to see them having success here. This one, a four-year-old, over from Italy, has 10 cc's, really enjoys working and hunting. So Judge is looking for that free-flowing movement. We talked about the lashing tail, but the movement should be straight and true. This one is a black. Obviously, Baxter last year was a liver. Black is a more popular colour. Of course, the flat coated retriever was known as the gamekeeper's dog, the connoisseur's gun dog. They love work, they love life. Look at the wagging tail. The second top entry of this gun dog. The second top entry of the Gundog group went to the Golden Retriever. There were 491 of them here today. The breed was founded by the Lord Tweedmouth, who crossed wavy-coated retrievers with tweed water spaniels. They're symmetrical, they're balanced, they're powerful, and they make wonderful pets. I can vouch for that. Uh, my family has one, Heidi. She's a wonderful companion for the children and the family. Loves everything. This one is a two-and-a-half-year-old dog. Over from Ireland, 
The judge is looking for a broad, well-chiseled head with a really kindly expression. And as they move off, should be powerful with good drive and that top-line level. You can hear the crowd, always popular. It was originally known as the wavy coated retriever, or the wavy retriever. It was thought that he's had flat coat in its background with the tweed spaniel, which is now extinct. And they can come in any shade of gold or cream, so you will see paler retrievers and darker ones than this. Now, the Labrador, 537 of them for competition with two judges today. The winner, this young bitch, coming just from the Midlands here, famous kennel, the Sandylands Kennel, founded by Gwen Broadley, who was a legend in the dog game, now taken over by Erica Jays. And this is Ed Casey, the young partner who's joined the kennel, has been very successful with the Labradors and the English Spring. This, a beautiful bitch. The judge today was Guy Spagnolo, a legend in the breed from Australia, coming all the way, and he, he's, he told me how much he loved this bitch. So the Labrador is a fishing, fisherman's dog, originated in Newfoundland in the 16th century. And they have this waterproof coat and this really thick otter-like tail that you can see there, thick at the base, tapering down. It's a really distinctive feature of the breed. So a lab should be able to move all day. The free movement really covering the ground. It should have substance, but also be athletic. They shouldn't be too heavy and cumbersome. This is the Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. And here, another of the retriever the family, the Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. The, to the, the hardest thing about the breed is its name. A toller is a decoy dog. It was used on the sides of the lake. Its activity, retrieving sticks thrown by the hunters, attracted the ducks within gunshot range, and then they were sent in to retrieve it. This is another breed that has webbed feet to make it suited for retrieving from cold water. It should be a compact, medium-sized dog. This rich red colour. It's got white markings permitted on the feet and pastons, on the head, and perhaps a tip on the tail. But it's, that's not obligatory, the tip on the tail, but many of them have it. It should be springy and jaunty on the move. Here we have our best of breed Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever, three year old dog, Quentin. So we, we come up to the table now for the raciest of our spaniels, the American Cocker Spaniel. Same roots as the Cocker Spaniel, but by the 1920s, some in the USA had diverged the breed. It's got more of a domed head, a shorter muzzle, and a more profuse coat than the English Cocker we will see in a moment. They should have an intelligent expression, really soft and appealing. It was developed from a, a, an import of an English cocker into America, Obo II, and the breed was separated in 19... The two breeds were separated in 1948. The American cocker is more luxuriant in coat, more domed in the skull, a sloping top line, which should be held on the move. They make wonderful show dogs because they're very flashy, like a poodle. They love the big, the big ring. And this one, only 18 months old, but she's really taking this in her stride. She's called Felicia. They're here from Lancashire. And this is a black and tan. Apparently cheeky, naughty, and always up to no good. Although she does look like she's behaving at the moment. Mr. Ralph Dunn was our Clumber Spaniel judge. Here we have the powerful and athletic Clumber Spaniel. It takes its name from Clumber Park in Nottinghamshire, and it was a popular breed with nobility in the 18th century. It will be used to flush game from heavy cover. It should be firm and fit with an appearance that denotes strength. The Clumber Spaniel, one of the heavier breeds, but the, the breeders have worked hard to cut down, they didn't want them too cumbersome. So they should be athletic, strongly boned with good substance, but still capable of doing a job of work. We saw one working in the Gamekeeper's exhibition earlier. So they come, come only in this red and white or lemon and white, which is the preferred color, largely white body, a longish dog, long dog, medium length of leg. So you get this slight rolling action on the move. This is a two and a half year old dog called Vili, and apparently he loves the snow, so pick the right day to come to Crufts today. Over from Croatia. The head is strong, the muzzle firm, square, and should be effortless on the move.
Now, very interesting, wonderful entry today from all over Europe for David Todd, and who did the dogs. And here is the winner, this orange and white dog. It's come from Sweden, I, I believe. Cockery, compact, squarely built with big ribs. The Merry Cocker. They've been best of breed at Crufts, I think, seven or eight times. It's certainly in the 40s, the famous of Ware Kennel was several times best in show. Here we have this lovely, lovely Merry Cocker action striding out well. And the name comes from their original function, which was hunting woodcock. A really happy temperament you can see there. And again, this another young one, just 18 months old. This is a dog called Barra, as Frank said, from Sweden. We did have an orange and white winning the group, of, well, quite a few years ago. And it was David Todd who handled it. So he has a soft spot for this colour. But this is a really lovely dog. And that tail, tail action, excellent. There were 133 English Springer Spaniels here today. Once classified as a land spaniel, though that breed was later split out. Its name comes from the practice of springing forward when it tries to flush game. It should be a raciest of those former land spaniels, a nice medium-sized dog. The English Springer is the highest on the leg of the land spaniel, so it has to have a good length of leg, which we see here. It's a rectangular breed and it should go with this wonderful reaching forward, swinging forward action. And I think we've got a very young group here, so this one only one year old, a bitch called Luna, just down the road in Warwickshire again, but really taking this in her stride considering she's so young. From the Trimere Kennel, they live near Nuneaton, so they're quite local to the show and they've had a lot of winners in the last decade or so. You can see there. And here is the field spaniel, one of the ancient land spaniels. This one, a liver. They're a breed which has a nobility about the head, this long, refined head. The judge just going over the shoulders, feeling the shoulders and the clean neck and outline. So the head of the field spaniel should convey an impression of high breeding. This is Esther, she's a three-year-old bitch from Buckinghamshire. She also did well in the, um, the gamekeeper's classes today. So they should have a dignified long stride. They shouldn't be rushed. This is going with some elegance, nice carriage on the move. This one, a liver, which is the most frequently seen colour, but they come in black, liver and tan, black and tan, and roan. Compared they to some of the other gun dogs, they have an unhurried stride, don't they? So not striding out quite so much. They were almost extinct after the World Wars, and they had to use a Springer Spaniel cross to get into the to enlarge the gene pool. Here we have the cloud of the group. We have the Irish Water Spaniel. So classed as a Spaniel, but actually works as a water retriever. It should be a smart, upstanding dog with a wide domed skull there and that really distinctive coat. This one is a five-year-old dog called Finn. It's thought that the Irish Water Spaniel has poodle in its background, so that gives us some of the, the head shape and the coat texture, the curls, the ringlets of coat coming from the poodle in its ancestry. And as he moves off here, you can see that rat tail, so hairless rat tail is a calling card of the breed. But underneath the coat, there has to be big barrel ribs to give it flotation when working in water. It also has webbed feet and this tail, which has hair for the first four inches, and it's rather like a rat's tail. They are clownish, as you say. One of the books on the breed is called A Bundle of Rags in a Cyclone, which <laughs> describes it marvellously. Perfect description. Now the Sussex Spaniel, the lowest to ground of the Spaniel family, and coming in this rich golden liver colour. As its name suggests, developed in Sussex to go into thick undergrowth on the clay soils of Sussex. Rose Hill Park, Mr Fuller was the founder and patron of the breed, and he got the breed going. So I don't know if we'll hear it here, but the, the breed is unique because it barks to help its handler keep track of where it is and has this characteristic rolling gait as it moves. It, it gives tongue when it's working. They used to work in packs and it's thought that they give tongue because there was basset hound in its ancestry. But with 
So this four-year-old bitch called Luna from Northumberland, our Sussex Spaniel best of breed. And you can see the substance in the rib cage there. They are substantial, but also active. There were 148 Welsh Springer Spaniels here today. There have been red and white Welsh hunting dogs as far back as the Middle Ages, but the breed was recognised by the Kennel Club in 1902. They're built for endurance and hard work, and they should be strong, merry and very active. This is the only colour, the rich red and white in which the Welsh Springer comes. It's thought that they played an influential part in the development of the orange and white cocker. They were known as the Welsh cocker in their history. We've seen quite a few rough-coated breeds, but it's very silky, the coat on the Welsh Springer, isn't it? This one, another Swiss dog, four years old. Sorry, Swedish dog, four years old. Slightly smaller stature, shorter legs. I also medium length of leg, medium length of body. They're not as racy as the English Springer. Here we have the Spanish water dog. There were 70 of these here today. A real multi purpose gun dog with this distinctive woolly coat. They were primarily used to retrieve wildfowl, but also as a sheep herder and for pulling in nets onto boats. This coat, really distinctive, it has to be clipped one or two times a year. And they should be rustic. They, they're allowed, they clip twice a year, but there's no shaping of them, no styling like poodle clips. They have to be rustic. They should be absolutely functional. They've got a strong head. Rectangular body with good rib cage underneath. This one, Taco, a two year old dog from Spain. He's a champion in Spain, Hungary, Poland, Czech Republic, Serbia, Slovenia, and Slovakia. So very busy. The judge today was Nigel Eggington, who was one of the great successes in this country in developing the breed. We travel from Spain to Germany now and see the Weimaraner. Dr. Now, the Weimaraner here, coming from 125 of them here today. This one, a bitch winning, and again, the lovely flowing outline and silver gray color, very important. Judge just going along the top line, feeling the rib cage, looking at the shoulders. So the Weimaraner is a hunt, point and retrieve breed, a multi-purpose gun dog. It should be noble and powerful and was created in Germany as a hunting dog for nobility. It should be a picture of power, stamina and balance. And as it moves towards us, you'll see those distinctive eyes, which can be shades of amber or blue-grey. Developed in the Weimar Republic, it's something of a sort of nobility dog. Uh, very popular as a working gun dog. So we're looking for effortless ground covering movement from the Weimaraner. And now we come to the last but by no means least of our breeds here in the gun dog group. Here we have the last but by no means least of our breeds from the import register. This is the Slovakian rough haired pointer, so not one that's instantly recognizable. It should be a distinguished and sturdily built dog, but never cumbersome. We're looking for slightly longer than it is high, and it's a versatile worker in field, forest, and water. It is something of a rarity in this country. It was brought into the country by people who were in the, interested in working it. It wasn't brought in as a show dog, but a few have made the show ring now. They have Weimarana in their background. There's that degree of length and elegance in it, which comes from the Weimarana, but other wire-coated breeds brought in in Slovakia. So the head should be held high on the move, and we're looking for ground covering movement there with reach and drive from the rear. Best of all. Our judge has taken a look at the best of breed winners, but who is going to win the gun dog group? We'll take one last look at the group in its entirety before making a short list. Now, our judge going round, this time he'll be reminding himself of what he found on hands-on examination. He's had his hands on the dog, he's felt their anatomy, their conformation, he's felt their muscular condition, and he'll be reminding himself of the details before he makes his shortlist here.
The handlers will be in a tense. Mood. Hearts are pounding down there, aren't they, as we come around past the Spaniels. As a judge, you don't want to rush this either. This is a probably once in a lifetime opportunity to judge the group. Right, long looks. Where's he going? Probably going to shortlist eight dogs, we think. The front of the line to commence his shortlist. Well, where's he going? Ah. The Gordon Setter, I'm very pleased about that. Judged by Frank earlier today, we have the Gordon, the Gordon Setter. Here comes the Irish Setter and the Legotto. Beautiful Legotto, Roman. Oh, the very good Chesapeake Bay Retriever, I like that very much. Past the Labrador comes in, the young Labrador. The Labrador. The Irish Water Spaniel comes forward. And the... Spanish water dog. Right, oh, there, so Spanish there's our shortlist dog. now. I think that concludes this shortlist. Can I ask you to show your appreciation and congratulate the other best of the A big round of applause there, there for everyone who didn't quite make the shortlist. A shortlist of seven, so he, he could have gone to eight, but he's chosen seven, so seven top dogs. Now I think we'll have them moving up and down. He'll be just checking the movement, the drive from the hocks going away. So Frank, what was it about this bitch that really grabbed you? Well, she's full of breed type. She combines substance with femininity and that dignity of the breed. She's got the ruggedness which the breed needs to go working, showing stamina on rough terrain, but is full of quality. So this is Vega, six-year-old bitch, judged by Frank today, and she's from County Durham. And the next one we're going to see move is the Irish Setter. Here is the Irish Setter. River. So River Brew Gloriana, show champion, shown in the ring by Blake Crocker. Again, the Irish Setter should be racy up on the leg. Look, having that thoroughbred quality, the lovely chiselling in the head. And the colour and the texture of the coat is of utmost importance. It should be as free from curl or wave as possible. So next we have this very oh, smart Legato Romagnolo. Bitch, five years old. This is Orca from Croatia. Now remember, she's previously come second in the gun dog group, so hoping to go one better today. She's been for the last year or so, been campaigned in America, come back to clubs for the occasion. Happy and charismatic is how she's described. You can see that tail there. Next we have the Chesapeake Retriever. Bay Retriever. This was Four one which bitch. this was one which impressed me a lot when it came, and it's got real breed type in the substance, the coat, and the strength, and going very nicely. She's from Hampshire. Judged today by Jeff Forswell. She's another that's multi-purpose, so she has a working gun dog certificate as well as been successful in the show ring. Now here is the Labrador, the yellow Labrador, sent forward from the biggest entry in the show. Guy Spagnolo, a legend worldwide in the breed. Judge the bitches. Five. Only two years old, and Select she's already been joint top puppy all breeds and top Labrador for last year. She's called Ada, and she's from just down the road in Warwickshire. And this is the Irish water spaniel. I think he's called Rockstar. I've, uh, I remember him. I, I think he's won under me in the past. Full of the breed spirit and temperament, lashing the tail, loving the atmosphere here. But underneath those, that coat, there is a big, substantial rib cage. He's fit for function <laughs> and loving it in here. Yes, great carriage. Sounds like a bit of a character. The owner says if they ever get divorced, it will be because of him. <laughs> and finally, the last of our shortlisted breeds, we have the Spanish water dog. This is Taco, a two year old dog over from Spain, a multi-champion in Europe. So he could um, be a herder of the flocks, help fishermen, and also be a gun dog. That's called versatility. Now, 
now. A great shortlist there of, of, of favourites like the Labrador, but also some of the more uh, newer and unique breeds. So with all our shortlisted Glendale breeds having been moved by Gordon Harrow. So Gordon just taking one boards. last look. Another walk along the line before Sir Harrow makes this all important decision. That Legato looks really smart. Judge just thinking deeply now about details. Details make the difference at this level. Who fills the eye for the gun dog group? The boards are in. Oh, fantastic. So the winner of the gun dog group the won it from last year. The Legato Romanolo. This is Cantre's very cheeky cheek. Orca, a five-year-old bitch. Handled by Xavier Gonzalez, a very popular and successful handler of many breeds. And group two goes to the Labrador Retriever, the biggest entry here There's today. There's the Gordon, I'm pleased oh, about that. Well done. Gordon, in you come. Frank's Vegas. And Rockstar, the Irish Water Spaniel. Oh, sorry, Irish Water Spaniel. The 3962. But there we have our first finalist going through to Best in Show on Sunday. It's our Legotto Romagnolo. This is Orca, five year old bitch over from Croatia. Beautiful shape. You see the slight slope from the withers looking to the level top line. The wonderful texture of the coat, tightly curled coat. I mean, when we talk about charisma, you can just see that there, can't you? The tail, the expression, so eager to please. Now the gun dog presentation is going to come now for the Legato. I think we're going to hear a few words from our winner. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to have a quick word with our Gundog Group winner, the first winner of Crafts, Javier. I understand that a Legato has never won a Gundog Group here at Crafts. How do you feel about that? And tell us a little bit about Orca. I don't know. I feel amazing. Orca never give up, wagging their tail, giving me the best. And I'm extremely happy to this great win. And tell us where you're from and just how much work and training goes into this stellar performance that you've shown tonight. I'm from Spain and the beach is breath in Croatia and quite a lot of work. <laughs> tell us about that work though, because a complete superstar in here and showed the socks off. I think she's an easy beach, like she's always happy since early age. Whenever we go to the ring, she's always happy, never stop working her tail, want more and more and more. So she make the work easy. Well, I think you're a real crowd favorite. Don't you agree, ladies and gentlemen? Let's see Orca and Javier finish the group on the first day of crafts on your lap of honor. Lap of honor, great style, but what a lovely lineup. Four top quality gun dogs there. Gordon Harrington can be very proud of his choices there. The Labrador Retriever in second place. That's Ada, two-year-old bitch. And uh, I hope viewers will come in on Sunday to watch the competition for Best in Show. The Legato, the first finals decided tonight. Here on the first day of Grass 2023. Hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow. If not, always tune in to Channel 4 and more 4. Channel 4, 3 to 4 o'clock, you'll get coverage of crafts. So four, really four, strong six, final seven, four seven, there. And again, group 2 last year four, just shows seven, come back, seven, have another go, and you can get group 1. So have a safe journey home. Hopefully, see you again soon. We'll see you again tomorrow morning on YouTube.